build UI. Of um of of what again? Sorry. OBS. From Lubs. Oh, I couldn't tell you. I haven't used it. I yet. use slobs. I see. <laughs> oh ho! Couldn't say that. It's a narrative slash bad. Lib slobs. Oh. Bad comedy. Hello, everybody. Hello. Name. Hi. Hello. How are you? A bloop. What's good? Gay. Hi. Hi. Crystal Gay? Gary. Mm. I don't know. I'm hoping that they <laughs> will show up at the, 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 the wizard thing, you know? They show up when they mean to or whatever. Even though there's no... Gary would be a wizard, but Gary, uh, Shad would never choose a wizard, would he? Like Paladin or something. Yeah, he'd choose something far more martial. Monsters. Or even though, well, wizards have sword well sometimes. They can, yeah. What's the protocol for when the paladin is supposed to show up? Because, you know, uh, the wizard arrives precisely when he means to. Paladin. Paladin decides whenever the when God tells him to or something. Whenever it's... <laughs> Maybe he says, like, I he... decide what, what time is. I, I, That's a like strong whenever... statement. <laughs> That's a strong statement. Like, when I'm done with my Bible study, I'll show up. That is, yeah. Like, I'll show up when it's time to crusade. When I am finished with my Bible study, that is, that is the end of the day. When nighttime this like, occurs. This is 5th edition Paladin, where they're not religious for some reason. I don't even know what that means. Dude. <laughs> not religious? No, I don't know what not religious fifth means. Edition, they, they, fifth don't, edition. they don't do the religion. They just, they just get their power from devotion to some set of oaths that are non-religious. What about Satan? That's... Can they be devoted to Satan? Very true. I don't know if there is a Satan Ooh. class. There, there are evil ones, but I don't think any of them are Satan. Well, there in a... I think there are like dedicated dark paladin. Um, in Pathfinder Second ones. Edition, they're not called paladins or champions, and they could be for good and evil. They could be a champion of any sort of alignment or or deity. So you could have evil champions and good champions. You know, I guess Warhammer style in a way. There's loads of Satan names. My keyboard's yeah. working now, it seems like. So Pl unplug and replug, and it's oh, nice. It. That's I'm good. simultaneously happy and sad how many problems are solved by unplug and plug back in. Like, I guess there's a reason why every time you call up tech support, the Indian guy yeah. tells you to unplug it and replug it back well, that in. That was the meme in um, IT crowd. It's like, did you turn it off and turn it on again? They had that on uh, like an auto answer machine that solved most of their problems. It's kind of bullshit how often it works, isn't it? Yeah, it's annoying. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, with modems, with everything, it's just yeah. Just, just try to replug it back in because uh, it's quick and easy to do. Anyone could do it, you so know, you might as well try that one. On my PC, the previous PC had its big flume when I was yeah. you know back up with metal, and everything was work in working order except one of the monitors was no longer working. Everything I tried in terms of settings and drives and stuff, just nothing was happening. A Mel legit was just like, have you turned it off and turned it on? And I was like, why the fuck would that work? It's like, just do it. I was like, okay, turned it off, turned it on. Very rarely, whenever uh, I, I said, you know, my computer goes to sleep after a certain amount of time, and when you wake it up, every once in a while, one of the monitors wouldn't, it was on the other, the old PC, it would, it would not turn on. Like, it would, it, it would turn on, but then it wouldn't get a signal, and so it would turn off again. And so pretty much every time that happened, I knew I could just turn it off with a little button and then turn it back on and then it would just be fine. So who knows? Um, it was appropriate for someone in chat to ask what was good, though. What was good? What, what, is, what was good or what is good? That's what, they, that's what they say now. They're like, hey, what's good? That's oh. like their hello. So they don't want to know about the bad stuff. They only want to know about the good stuff. Yeah, at least they're straightforward things. about it. I think life should be taken for what it is. You shouldn't just like filter out anything bad. That's, that's so really, how's it going? Is still like the king in terms of how yeah, is it going? Because you it it leaves the it leaves the answer up to you, good or bad. Even though how it's... does it go? How good yeah, maybe is it's it? not maybe it's not what a question about got... how you're doing. Maybe they are just wondering how on earth it's going. How is how is it? Going? How does this work? How, is, how, how, how are we yeah. still doing how this? Are still what's running, yeah. The, yeah. How, what's <laughs> powering the spin and the? Yeah. Do you guys know how magnets right? work? How's it going? We have to turn them off and turn them on again. <laughs> so the magnets? sun, that's like that, that, that fusion thing is crazy, huh? Oh, you believe in the sun? Wow. 
Everyone knows that the sun is a hologram. I think these are much better ways to start conversations than how's it going or, you know. Yeah. That's good. Like, just, for, yeah, like you know, do you the believe sun? in the sun? Yeah. Whoa. You just walk up to someone and tell them you think the moon is the back of the sun because you never see them in the same place at the same time. True. You just say, wow, they sure did turn up that sun high today. And then, what? and then so, the other person laughs. <laughs> you never see yeah. them in the same place at the same time, except for a solar eclipse, I guess. In which case, your mind is just like melting. It's pretty convenient, isn't it? That there's we need day and night, and there happens to be a big old sphere for each one. What are the odds? Well, except the same you... size. <laughs> it's just <laughs> yeah, they're pretty much makes exactly you think. The same size. Makes you think. Yeah, it does. One of them is like you got really bright and just so happens to come up at day, and then one of them is a lot less bright and he comes out at dark. Okay. And they they think we we're gonna accept this as a coincidence. Exactly. It's uh, he, kind, kind apparently of I'm very right loud. Yeah, light. they kinda need to try a bit harder. Well, very the moon loud. comes out at night apparently white because there was a guy and he's like, Oh, it's so dark, I can't see. And the moon's like, I got you, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'll put on a little light, just a little bit. You can still go to a sleep, bit of but, light. you know, you can... Except for those days when it's, uh, or nights when I'm, I'm a new moon. Oh, dude, that's I that's how I knew. You. Sorry. Sometimes, have you ever gone outside and there's no moon? They forget to put it up. Like, they do it every once in a while. <laughs> so lazy. <laughs> the guy would slack it off, and it, imagine he's just like, oh, shit, I meant to put the moon I, I watched a YouTube video about this. They apparently missed it a couple times in a row, and so then they said, oh, no, 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 that's that's normal. That's that's, that's how, how it works. works. Yeah, 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 that's how the it works. Okay. 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 Yeah. Inexplicably, the light goes away. Yeah, okay, it's obviously, sure, bro. It's way harder to forget the sun because it's so bright, but they even forget the sun sometimes. And like, but I mean, really, that's a that's like a plot hole, right? The sun is they always they call it an eclipse. I was like, yeah, okay, you just made up a word for that. That's I mean, pretty sometimes stupid. they just forget to load anything into the sky, and it's all just gray. All of the know. assets, yeah, and that's all the assets. That was the most embarrassing. Good. Like, they do that yeah. one a lot, especially over here in England. You'd think that they would spend all night like making sure to get that preloaded. I don't so know how you how have you paid time. someone to do this? Why is it that it keeps fucking up? So Why isn't it even like a routine at this point? Why is it like are they still on like Windows ninety five or something? Do they have like outdated That's like, how it software? Feels. Um yeah. I don't know, maybe the engine can't handle it. Then you get glitches. Maybe, yeah, One of maybe it's on the slip space engine. Oh wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> Remember they called it a blood moon when everything went red? It was like that was obviously just spaghetti code. They tried to install something and it fucked up. <laughs> they tried to sell it as like some event. Yeah. It's a feature, not a bug. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Apparently they knew this one was coming ahead of time, the glitch. So they were like, oh, this is expected. This is expected. Okay. <laughs> Muller and Fringy seem a bit quiet. My god. Oh my goodness. Yeah, let me see here. That was testing uh, moment of the I have to make sure everybody good absolutely yeah. I'm boost my that microphone was, to 52 wow and boost uh, mr fringles up to 155 oh, percent that's wow. that's a lot glidus is down to 65 percent oh sell sell see now he's glidus really quiet down. everyone's gonna be like oh you, you're so quiet me buy high set low um, just perfect now? Oh my god. And all breakdown That's in future? Good. Guys, do you understand? The hot D1 has <laughs> been, we've been, we've been attacked. We have been hurt over and over again about, we're gonna cover hot D, you little fleems. And I was just like, oh my god. We finally do it, at the cost of not doing Ragnarok faster. Now we've already got, like, two Ragnarok EFABs planned, because it's gonna take ages to oh talk about goodness. the whole game. And then it's like, what about Andor? And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm trying, I'm sorry. We're probably gonna like, me, Fringy, and, and, uh, and Rags, and maybe if anyone else wants to join us, watch all of Andor and do like a, maybe an offline breakdown and then pop that out around Christmas time or something, because we're gonna be playing with families at that point, I think. But that's like the earliest I could imagine us even being able to do it. You've got to do better. It's like all the people who've been waiting for Hot D are like, "Fuck Andor, <laughs> get in the get in the queue." <laughs> I just want to re-express my joy at the fact that the name Hot D caught on. I, I mean, do I you think, think I they think knew? George has something to do with that. I think they knew. I oh, they, they knew. knew. They were like, "This is gonna be knew. great. People are gonna call it Hot D." <laughs> hot D. Y'all ready for some of that Hot D?
just impossible not to call it that, because who's calling it hotted? Hotted. Oh. Some people call it got. I've heard you call it got. But, uh, G-O-T. G-O-T. G-O-T doesn't really happen, does it? Or No one's no. saying... Uh, I've never heard people refer to this as Game of Thrones. It's always House of the Dragon. It's always Hot D. As if they want well, to distinguish uh, it from the other show. <laughs> I don't know why they want to do that. Do that. Mm. Yeah. I can only speculate. Yeah, if no, I, if whenever I, remember... I mention the show, I have to talk about, I have to say the whole name. It's Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. It's Game of Thrones presents Lord of House the Rings, of the, the Rings of Power. <laughs> yeah. The, As opposed the to Game of Dragon Thrones, show Game of Thrones. Hour. Game of the Thrones, Throne Game. Did you see it? Well, what was the subtitle of the first series? Was it just called Game of Thrones? Or. Well. You see, that was taken from the first book of A Song of Ice and Fire when other books have different names, like Storm of Swords, Clash of Kings. These are cool names, and they didn't use any of them. What's that about? Hmm? Yeah. The Feast for Crows. Yeah, A see? Song of Wumbo and Flame. Ah, that was my one. How did, did you read that one? I thought it was really good, because I wrote it. Yeah, it's good. good fake. Yeah. Um, finally ended the story. I said everyone died. Because the sun turned off, and they forgot to put it back on. It's a really good ending. Yeah, I thought that so. That sounds like the beginning of... Uh, the Rings of Power when the Sun Tree turns off. Oh, did you did you watch the Rings of Power theater? Did you like it? I did not watch it. Why? I don't what basically the fuck? But there was a character in there. He was just like you. Well, Theo. His name's oh, Theo. I'm in it. Yeah. yeah. He was spit an image. We wondered about legal issues with that. That's but concerning. I, I mean, Am I being insulted? Uh, <laughs> they are insulting you, not me. Okay. Um, Andal's great. I've heard a lot of people praising that finale. Uh, it's out now, yeah. isn't it? It's all done. Uh, yeah, we still, we still, all, uh, we've only seen the first three episodes. Still, yeah, we haven't watched any new stuff. There's too much. There's too many things. This has got. Yeah, guys, watch more than one show. Holy crap! You guys will there see. There was a point we were watching four. That's incredible. Yes. It was funny. Uh, I was talking to Metal about how we were doing this today and how, like, I I've been preparing for the hot D breakdown. Plenty of notes. All kinds of. Uh, rewatchings be happening. He was like, he should have. He, he's, he's saying like the time where I was watching House of the Dragon. Uh, sorry, not House of the Dragon. Rings of Power, She Hulk, and uh, Andor. He's like, I really should have watched House of the Dragon. It's like, yeah, out of the four that were coming out at the time, that was the one to see. Out of those four, I would say the one you would have wanted to hit, especially at the cost of you know She Hulk or Rings of Power. <laughs> those are not ones that you need to see. But uh, what a fun time that was. And yeah, right. um, next week. I, I've already got a shit ton of uh, things to do to get Ragnarok in. Uh, this is the thing, we couldn't even cover Ragnarok this week if I wanted to. I'm not ready. I've got to get loads of shit in place. Gonna, I'm going to record another playthrough, but offline of the story stuff so I can get all the quotes I need. Instead of it being tarnished by a certain... So, yeah, for those who don't know, Rags has uh, watched a long play of it so he can have absorbed the I story. Have. And my this God. is the second time I've watched a long play. Well, I guess the, the first one wasn't a long play. It was watching you. The Let's Play. But it was a Let's Play. So this is my first long play where I just watch some boring asshole. I mean, some dedicated gamer play through an entire game without any commentary. <laughs> it was so um, weird, though, because like I don't watch long plays basically ever. So I'm not oh, entirely... me neither. This is my first. Yeah, so so like there's a lot for us to learn about the nature of a long play. It was so funny. He would He would be like running through and eventually like... As the time went on, he was less and less patient about anything happening to the point where a character is just like, hey, over here, and you just sprint past them to the next goal, wherever it is. And you just be like, no. That's and then, how I act in real life. Dude, like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like, it's like hey, 50 man. years old and you're just running everywhere past everyone. <laughs> yeah, but, Fuck you. He was doing some things. IRL dialogue. He was doing some things so fast that, like, after a big event in the story, the characters are legit, like, talking to each other about. What it all means. And he's just running around pressing circle on any wall he can find, and then it just start, like <laughs> dialogue just cuts in, and it's just like, wow, you just fucking do you even know what's happening? Are you listening? And to to be fair, I guess he sees his job as like, I gotta complete this game for the people. You know, I gotta get it out there as soon as possible. I'm a man of the people. I'm not doing this for it me does, or the story it does or the sound characters. Like there's like a <laughs> clash of intentions there. Yes. It did feel kind of strange. Well, the wonder. thing that kind of threw me was he actually got the um the hard credits ending in the long play. I didn't even realize he would have known that that's where it was. And where go. But um, interestingly, I looked at the comments and so many people were like thanking him for the video. I don't know how to feel about all of it. Long plays, you know? Uh, it's a complicated yeah. subject. 
It is you remember back in the day when video game devs were all about like copyright claims because of cutscenes and shit. That that's that kind I of don't video remember is that. like when, yeah. When, oh, which era was... are you talking about? Because yeah, I actually oh, don't like remember. Ages that. ago, like I remember when Nintendo ago. were dicks about yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nintendo seems to be an odd one out as far as I know. It's Nintendo and Sega, I think. Sega. Were those? The, it was Nintendo and I think it was Sega. Wait, you but mean those... I'm not allowed to air uncut cutscenes of Sonic the Hedgehog on my YouTube channel? <laughs> AKA the only reason to play him so I can keep up with the Sonic the Hedgehog lore. Yeah, that's been expanded once again recently. We will be wanting to keep an eye on the Sonic lore for when Kratos goes there. Oh god, we should get that clipped. That conversation was hilarious. <laughs> Bringy, I will kill you if you don't save your playthrough in the form of YouTube. <laughs> Do it. It shouldn't be lost to time. Your your playthrough. Of, to be honest, your playthrough mm -hmm. of 2018 and Ragnarok. Save yeah, them. Which I'm, I'm finished, guys. I've, I finally got there. Last it, night. Oh yeah, that's probably worth saying. As a, as, a pre, as, as a foreshadowing of next week. Uh, what did you think, Frank? Ragnarok. I really, really, really like it. <laughs> I you, really you able to like use the it. love word or no? Uh, I think I'd need to sit on it for a little bit longer, but I Ew. can see myself in there. That is how love that works. love works, <laughs> yeah. That's why, just, yeah, I'm that's why birds love their on that chicks. Game, that's all. I gotta, I gotta stew on it and think about it a bit more, but I really <laughs> like it and appreciate it. Sit it's, on uh, it, turn it into a stew. Yeah, are you exactly. sitting on it or are you making stew on it? I, I want to talk about how the game has wonderful like themes and characters and you're yeah, all talking yeah. about shit on stew. Hey, you're the one that said sit on, sit on it. We are just we are just bouncing off of the things that you specifically said. I was gonna say, this is your fault really. I don't know. Yeah, we didn't yeah, well, we didn't you're the one who's talking like the fonts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Alright. So uh yeah it, it, there you go. So we'll be talking about Ragnarok next week. It's gonna be long boy probably um plenty of fun ahead. With that one but today we finally did the thing everyone was wondering if we would ever do which is uh talk about house of the dragon a tv show house of the dragon a game of thrones story i know i mean that's the thing that's george rr R. R. martin's house of the dragon it's a, a good game by place george to... production <laughs> by george rr R. martin it's a good place to start because that was like if you go back to me talking about this before it came out that's all i had to say it was like game of thrones should be be shelved, it's done. I don't care if they make more, go away. And I saw the trailer and I was like, whatever, it's got some actors I recognize and dragons in it. In fact, I think I was cynical about the fact that there's dragons in it at all. I was like, you're just trying to get me to watch it by having dragons in it. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a little bit unfair. It would be like, strange if House of the Dragon had maybe it was maybe it was like metaphorical, like they're like they're dragons in the sense that you know, like like Richard was the lion hearted, you know, you could have we're like the dragons. We're we're so great, aren't we great and magical? But no, like literal actual dragons. Yeah. Uh, you got them. They fly, fly around, around on the little wings. They make noises. Yeah. That's they right. They have like kind of different noises too. That's one thing I noticed about um, this the sound effects. But mostly cool. they go meh, like yeah. you said. I almost jumped. I was scared when you made that noise. Mm -hmm. I thought there was a dragon. Yeah. I'm very good as an impressionist, but very good. Yeah. Uh. So there was there was that, and then I watched episode one. And I was like, eh. And then two, and I was like, yeah. And then three, I was like, ooh. It's that video of Ben Shapiro's like reactions to the Batman, where he was making all those noises. Yeah. 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 Eh. <laughs> ah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, once... after the first two episodes, I I was I was like, you know, okay, you know, I'm I'm all right. Let's let's keep going, see what happens, and then you know, you get to three, and you're like, oh, all right, it's all coming all right. together. I'm starting to stand yeah. it. Ooh. And by the time you hit episode eight, you're like, was that was that one of the best episodes of TV ever? What the fuck? Ooh, it was. Yeah, it. it ooh. Ooh, indeed. And then you it hit nine, right you're like, oh fields. no. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh. What did they do? <laughs> and then ten, Why you're like, okay. That? Yeah, that was fine. Okay. That was, yeah, a, that yeah. was a way to end it, yeah. Um So, uh I guess we'll do a, a brief summarization of the plot line for those who have no idea, and then we're gonna talk about specific parts of it and what they did with the writing. You see. This this is a show that, funnily enough, shares a lot of similarities with, I would say, season one of Game of Thrones. 
but that is irrelevant because it's before it and it stands on its own some. But it was hard not to spot like similar scenes and events and character interactions. But you got all your expected people: mm. the the slimy, <clears throat> conniving people in the shadows, the the honorable, overt people who end up getting punished for being nice, the people who are just there to exist, they don't want to hurt anybody, the people who are nice, but they will go as far as to do some evil things if it means protecting people, all that all that stuff, got all that dynamics. Um, so, like, history lesson, you know what, Glidus, you're going to have to work as my historian when I get this shit wrong, okay? Because you're more obsessed. I'll be your safety net, no worries. Got like big old Westeros is a big place, and then other places exist, and then dragon people is people who have a bunch of dragons. They were like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna go over to Westeros and just take it all." And you're like, "Oh okay," and they do, and they're pretty successful at it. Um, motive for which is at a certain point you're just like, "Oh, because they just they just could, right?" But there's there's other things to it. But then you know, a hundred years passes on, and and the descendants of said conquerors are like. Struggling with succession because it's supposed to just be as simple as firstborn male. But then, what if you don't have a firstborn male? You know, and you have females and then uh, males that are more distant, like cousins and stuff. And so, the uh, the big old uh, old man gets. Uh, I think is it the maesters decide or the council? I think they say no. The lords of Westeros vote. Everyone votes. All right. Yeah. Well, and so. Okay. His, uh, his, his, the, the, the most, what do they refer to it as? Like the, the highest born male, which would be the cousin at that point, I think. So in this scene, Rhaenys, the princess on the right there, is introduced as Jaehaerys, is the king, King Jaehaerys, um, is introduced as his eldest descendant, and Viserys is introduced as his eldest male descendant. Right, so it's yeah. like quite, quite quickly, um, framing the whole thing as like a, you know, she's the oldest, but he's the oldest dude. He's got an older penis than other penises in the family. <laughs> That's true, yeah. And so may, assuming, may, assuming he, maybe he should be king because of that. But he, she has the oldest junk of them all. Yeah. She's got kind of old titties. There you go. That's how it works. And uh, But he gets given the crown. And so basically kicks the can down the road, or at least it it wouldn't have if a series had uh, a more straightforward rule, but he doesn't. Um, but yeah, Jaehaerys is like, I'm out, and dies. And then the series takes over, and we nice. fast forward nine years, and uh, we just get a nice understanding of the, 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 the situation in the kingdom, which is that Viserys doesn't have any male heirs, and his, his wife is uh, having trouble producing... A, a new one, even to the point of uh, it kind of it kind of kills it, and it, and uh, he doesn't get another son, and so it's like oh shit, so who's inheriting what? And it's like it makes the most sense to go to his brother, and I think that's the way it was gonna work, except Damon, kind of an asshole. In the in the first episode, uh, they make that pretty clear, and several of them don't trust his sort of judgment, but he oversteps the line when he's like making fun of the fact that the uh, he's newborn died in childbirth as well as the uh, um the wife and so uh, he gets disinherited and it's going to his daughter that's like the importance of the first episode because it basically just runs through into the rest of the entire show that decision uh, yep. we can come back to it but yeah uh the idea then is that the rest of the show is about the repercussions of that decision almost and how everything starts to change with everyone's dynamic involved it's, it's very much about succession this whole season and as far as i'm aware this is adapting from mainly from a, a chapter of how's the dragon that's called like a question of succession oh, right i should yeah, yeah yeah um i should ask before we get too deep into it um first of all um have we read book have we read oh no you're the the only person here who's read book i think okay cool and um are we doing spoiler nothing for, beyond like, nothing beyond the season now awesome good to know you wanted to spoil it for everybody, didn't you? I really did. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as the season progresses, uh, Rhaenyra, who is now the, the daughter in line, uh, fucks around a little bit, and uh, as a result, gets a, in a position where, where the, the king is like, you've got to be marrying for political reasoning, and you've got to strengthen your line because you're going to inherit shit. 
Unfortunately, she's not too interested in the husband she's set with, and neither is that husband interested in her. He has the big homo. And so, they end up doing whatever they want to do, and that causes even more problems because her children are not his, so to speak. And that uh, plays a big role in getting understood by more and more people, and then it only takes like a, a bit of a, a tumbling by different people to start an avalanche of who really should be the king. And okay. Viserys eventually dies, which causes a huge vacuum, and then the two sides of should it be his eldest heir, or should it be the eldest male heir? And uh, the two sides put forth their decisions, and it causes a big old war that ends with an accident. Uh, this season ends with one of them getting killed, a first blood of sorts, and so it's just setting up a huge war that's going to happen between this whole family. Kind of neat. Very curious if they're going to start again after a time skip or yes. carrying right on after. Because they've, they've done <clears throat> a, a decent amount of time skips during these episodes. So you kind of feel like everything's on the table in that regard. So it's, it's, it's interesting. You never know if in the next episode it'll be next week or years and years down the road. To help understand that or potentially to make it way worse. Who knows? We'll find yeah. out. I made this handy guide. <laughs> I'm so this. glad that you did that. As I was watching it. So this is... What it, font is this? Oh my goodness. Is this Game of Thrones font? Is uh, this font of the dragon? Yes. Font of the dragon. Ooh. This got, is, that's really cool. In white on the left is the episode numbers. The black is, is how much time in years has passed. Um, uh -huh. And then you got your characters. And uh, the crosses just mean they weren't in the episode. I think. And the, the funny thing is I think I missed out on some of them. But, you know, I got the important stuff, all right? This is to keep track, because it gets confusing, especially when you... From episode one to the end, I think we passed like 20 years. Something like that. Um, is her name really yeah, crazy? Yeah, it is 20 years. Which is insane. Um, oh, it's 29 <laughs> years from the like prologue of episode yeah, one. Yeah, I guess if you go from the prologue, <laughs> oh, it's like, like 30. 30. Yeah. yeah, I see a name you forgot, I think. <laughs> Who is crazy? I forgot her name. <laughs> Helena! <laughs> mo mostly... I'm sorry. That's, that's why you're here, because you can help us out. You can say her name is. She's, what you my, say? she's my daughter, and I love her. Aww. But she how is come, crazy. How come Lionel in episode six reminds me of Rich Evans? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that was actually something that struck me straight away. It was just kind of cool to comment on, right? The most obvious in terms of change over episodes is the series, they degrade him like, quite well throughout all of it. And uh, something yes. I just want to praise is, you know, for someone who doesn't have the context, he's basically got, I think, leprosy? Uh, that's the he's best got thing some kind of... like a leprosy-related disease. Yeah, some kind of flesh-eating disease that just slowly kind of takes you away. You start to eat away. Um, it um, kind of um, eats um, you um. away. Very delicious king flesh. Yes. Very tasty. Gourmet. He's a very um, tasty man. If he was, if he was less delicious than... His his disease would have taken much much longer, arguably never. But he's he's like a a, a yummy dessert, a savory rich chocolate pie. They uh yum do an excellent job of doing that nice and slow. You show a wound on his back and a wound on his finger in like the first episode. In the first episode, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Just a little thing on the back that they're checking out. A little finger. And like there's a throwaway like line in the second episode where Melos, the Grand Maester, is like, um, yeah, just we'll shove your finger in these maggots and they'll eat the rot away. And then the next episode is missing a finger, and then the next episode is missing an arm. You know, I don't know. That's a throwaway line because he does. They had, they do have the maggot jar and everything. I was gonna yeah, say it's quite yeah, a focus, yeah, like because yeah. the and that's the thing, right? You're on, you're kind of on board with it. You're like that probably will work, right? Dead flesh, good stuff. But yeah, as you said, the following as as episode, know, he's yeah, lost that was the thing. Yeah, the two fingers, his hair. Um, as you can, I think, uh, by episode three, you can start to see his hair's thinning as well. They they do that. He starts to his like gait and balance are much worse. He just. Uh, isn't isn't as uh, sort of confident as he walks, and you got um lots of just just like you see is that he's in a, like a bath at one point in episode four and it's like sores everywhere, so you know it's just like body wide, um, and yeah like when they do the ten year jump and he's just lost the whole arm it's like oh man yeah he's it, everything's so much more labored at that point he wants to rest more and sit down more he just doesn't have that energy he used to yeah he still you, wants to do things but he just can't really do it the same way when you go back to episode one he's downright you know 
spring in his step sort of thing. He's just relatively full health, and it's just like, oh man, you get you get ruined because yeah, as you can see yeah. by the or the final. Um, it's not just all of the symptoms being like he's he's lost an eye, can't really walk without severe assistance. He's uh he's like gaunt, in covered in sores. He, um, they've got like a sound effect whenever he breathes, where it sounds like it's um. It almost sounds like an old fan in a PC that's like really struggling to spin. Where it's just, uh, it's, it's like his lungs are fucked as well. Um, and his nails yeah. are like bleeding. He's just he's falling uh, apart. Yeah. And, and he's, uh, he's just falling apart. It's part of a plot point, right? That you assume that uh, the high towers are like feeding him milk of the poppy to make it so that they can just control everything. But uh, Allison even says, like, you have no idea what he's like without it. And we do see that at one point. He's just in agony, basically. Yeah, I mean, it, it yeah. looks like Otto is, like, legitimately kind of worried when uh, Viserys tells him, uh, no, I don't want it. Don't give it to me. I need to, well, I need to have my mind he might have been worried. He might have been worried because that means that Viserys is, like, mentally cognizant and he can step yeah. in and not let Otto rule around him. But, well, yeah, some... it's concerning for his health as well. Because This is kind of what I was hoping we would do, just sort of jump around. But, like, do you... You know, like, I don't think in the in this world, neither Game of Thrones, that anybody except, like, a couple of exceptions are just a pure one-dimensional sort of approach in terms of, like, oh, they're just evil or they're just good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the mountain is, like, pure evil, right? Or Ramsay. Yeah, and that's basically it. Yeah. You're on from the books. You're on the show like, is pure good. But... Yeah, well, Close. yeah. Close. Um, but yeah, with Otto... I think they did a pretty good job in the opening few episodes to make you think he is just conniving and wants to, you know, assert his own power and stuff. And there's a couple of lines that really support it, but uh, I always thought it was it was a really good choice by, I think, at episode four, he's booted out. and um, I think it was episode four or yeah. five. He has a yeah. scene with um, with Allison where he's That's desperate to tell five. her, like, he uh, knows how yeah, this works. That yeah. scene is so fucking good. That's such a good example of, <laughs> like, how a really small scene can like totally recontextualize a character and their motivations. Yeah, because like uh, that everyone, including wild. her, is so sure that he did everything he did because he was selfish. And like, right. you know, he leaves with his head high and just explains to her, like, you need to be so careful because they can kill you whenever they want, pretty much, and they have the motive to. Uh, yeah, and then like hugging her and giving her a kiss and stuff, and it's just like, it's his daughter, yeah, ultimately. You're... Otto needs that scene. It it really it really just it explains so much. It doesn't take up too much time. We've never really we've never seen him like this up to this point when he's essentially having a heart to heart or as, as close as he can get to heart to heart with his daughter. You know, explaining he's so focused on you know he he's not he's emotional, but he's really that that side of him just doesn't come out. So seeing him out. like that with his daughter was it, it's good to know that that's there. That is well, a part of him. The the small things that make the characters more three dimensional. Yeah, he's, I think it ends with him saying, "Either you prepare Aegon to rule, or you cleave to Rhaenyra and pray for her mercy." Which uh, I think is enough to tell you it's what turns Alicent like he he's the reason she goes from being hyper innocent and following the rules to what she ends up as. I mean, yeah. around the same time, she's also provided with proof about how Rhaenyra lied to her in front yes. of the godswood, so... That's also an interesting, that specific line, because something that comes across to me as uh, a, a sort of thematic element present throughout the series is um, essentially, like, people's motivations in terms of personal relationships and, like, what they feel is good and right to do to other people clashing against the expectations of the world and the way that things just work. And that feels to me like a strong example of that. They're meant to be friends, but it's like, well, yeah, but the system will make her, uh, like, it, it's a system where one of you has to win and the stakes are incredibly high, so you need to play the game as though that's going to happen rather than uh, the friendship that you two have, you know, essentially allowing allowing some level of coexistence. That's like it's one a bit... of many examples throughout the show of, like, the personal relationships between characters clashing against the way that the world works and that most of the time the way that the world works wins out in terms of uh, changing how people act yeah they are molded by a world that was almost molded by the people who came before it's like a result of um 
a lot of these systems being in place because of the fact that just endpoints of how human nature often goes. A lot of the decisions in this show are made preemptively to prevent someone else from doing something that they expect they could or might do. Yeah, to protect themselves yeah, and true. the consequences that it often leads to really bad outcomes. Um, I mean, I'd say pretty clearly, like, right at the end of the show, it's like, yeah, the, the system kind of caused this, and then, like, look at what the consequences are going to be. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, it, it, especially when you when you present that kind of a message to a modern audience, when we live in such mm -hmm. a, a a very progressive, very, particularly all of us, we live in you know, these you know, very nice places with, you know, good justice systems and all this stuff around us and it's just a different world for them so it gets really it, it kind of it strains your modern sort of way of thinking with how they act and it, it's it's really tough to be too critical of a lot of the things they do once you get into the mindset of they just live in a different world than we do yeah and that's the thing it's, if, a, it's um... like a much less optimistic fox and the hound I, I find it cringe when people like outright condemn any of these characters for one decision that's either dubious or just something that's kind of harsh when it's just like, do you have any idea of the world they live in? Like what, what they have to deal with is a little bit more complicated than just... Like for example, uh, everyone feeling like Alicent loses all stock when she says bring me uh, uh, Lucerus's eye. Or just Ceres, I can't remember which one she wants. But it's just like, I don't know, she just had her own son's eye torn out and that nobody's going to do anything about it pretty angry like stuff like that there's decisions throughout that are just like people will, um the one i really want to talk about is Kristen cole i find him to be uh fascinating in terms of some of the choices they made and then how people reacted to him um, oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah he, he's probably yeah, a really he, interesting example in that regard he's got the uh he is certainly our dark lancelot type um yeah so we'll, we'll have to see what becomes of him what we'll have to do I think is probably go character by character. Um, okay. I'll delay the series because I know that there are some people on the way to this podcast who are really going to want to talk about him. So, since we kind of talked a little bit about Otto, should we just start with him? Sure. We kind sure. of went over him a little bit, right? Uh, he's he was the hand of the king for the prior king, and uh, he comes in on. What's the hand of the king, Mahler? I guess that's fair. A lot of people won't know. It's essentially, it's a kind of a cool role because um, it feels like it would be there. It feels like a real one, but I don't know if it's based on necessarily anything in history that's as close. I, I assume advisors exist, but the hand of the king in the Game of Thrones universe is a super important role, but it's completely made up. From like, he's like the he's like the Secretary of State in a way. Um, he's a command, he's, he's, like, he's a royal sort vizier. Of. Kind of, yeah. He's the guy. If if the king. He he's like he's essentially yeah number two as you said in in the in the royal, not yeah, not president. like line of ascension but he is yeah like a vice president if uh, there, I don't know anyone who's got a more authority than the hand of the king apart from the king uh, himself. yeah to the point where if the king is otherwise indisposed the hand sits on the throne like that's uh, yes that's the kind of power they can have and that's used yeah. effectively by a lot of hands uh, he is often compared with Tywin. I uh, I can understand that, but they are quite different. Otto, I find to be a lot more um, deepish when it comes to overstating. Like, Tywin will command a room every time. Nobody can beat him, but Otto will submit, depending it's on more who he's subtle. talking to. Well, yeah. I think that's because Tywin is actually the head of House Lannister, right? He's the Lord of Castle Rock, whereas Otto's brother is the Lord of Old Town. I don't know that if he so, was the Lord of Old Town that he would necessarily because I think it's more Tywin's character than necessarily that he's the head yeah. of Lannisters. Um, because uh, you you see this uh, one of the best examples I find in the show that I really love was you have Viserys is just angry in episode three. He's chilling out. He's doing different things. He's trying to get things to work with Rhaenyra and getting her married. Um, I think it's one of the Lannisters that tries, fails, and then talks to him and uh and he's just like he's angry and drunk and so like starts picking apart everything he's saying and he's kind of got that attitude with everybody Otto tries something he's like what if what if you marry Rhaenyra to my grandson and your grandson you know that that could work and like um Viserys is like outraged by the suggestion it's like so dumb and, and Otto immediately is like we'll talk about it later no problem no problem Okay. Yeah, Tywin wouldn't do that. No, Tywin would push it. But also, I consider that just, uh, it's an important difference and an interesting one. That Otto, it's like, like, ooh, I'm, I'm sinking here. Better abandon. There's no point in uh, 
doing this. This isn't working. My strategy's all wrong. And you see that a couple of times, like when he finds out the uh, what Rhaenyra has been doing in episode, I want to say four, and you get that scene yep. where he's just thinking about whether or not he's even going to tell the series because he knows that it could cost him his yeah. job or his life. Because uh, that that, that he was... might even be thinking about like what the implications are for the realm. Yeah, that, there's there's a lot going on for him because this is the thing. I I don't quite believe that he's only self interested. I think there's more going on, especially for characters that are older because they've seen or are aware of this happening before and what people will do. Uh, yeah, and certainly aware of the effects of if you know the state of the the palace, the state of you know the the city in the realm. It, it will affect me and my daughter and our ability to continue carrying on. He's not he he's he's not disconnected from the reality of the world outside the castle and in it. I'm going to be saying this a lot because it's true, but the performance is fantastic. The He's so good. And it was an excellent choice of actor. He's incredibly He's subtle brilliant. with a lot of expressions. My favorites being when uh, uh, Amond sort of gets everybody to calm down by saying, you know, don't mourn me, mother. I, uh, I may have lost an eye, but I got a dragon. And one of the quick shots they show is that Otto is like, holy shit. That kid knows what he's doing. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm impressed. Um, Another good example um, would be as well when he got uh, dismissed as a uh, hand, like when uh, when Viserys basically just told him, like, yeah, you, you're done. That scene is fantastic yeah. for the dialogue. There's a lot I have to praise about it. I don't know if we'll, we'll probably tackle it when we get to the series, but you're right. The auto yeah. side of it, he, uh, I'd say he's really struggling to figure out how he should take his next step I, in that scene. Yes. I think that's uh, that was the impression I got because just always, like in every scene that he's in, the impression that you get with him, it's not even really an impression, it's exactly what's happening, is that he is like carefully considering the consequences of like every single word that he chooses, like what it means in terms of how he can direct, uh, you know, events and get the outcomes yeah. that he wants. He's just a very observant and deliberate character. Very uh, chess player because even in one yep. episode, and this is the thing, I wasn't fond of episode one when I first saw it. I was like, eh. But on rewatches, I was like, no, episode one is pretty much as strong as the strongest episode. I think episode like, one's, like, it's tied for best with me. That's the thing with me, though, is that I just, I had bad faith for the show. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> I, I watched the guy who came I, before I was you. like, I was coming in expecting it to be, like, bleh, off the heels of season eight, you know. Yeah. But, it's really good. Um, I think another defining difference between Tywin and Otto is that um, <clears throat> both of their daughters are married to the king, right? As his like second choice of wife, because yeah. Viserys is um, Viserys' wife dies, and um, Robert's betrothed Lyanna gets killed before he can marry her. And um, but the difference is that Otto like gets Alicent to marry Viserys by like subterfuge. He like implants her in his chambers and just like kind of slowly has her seduce him and then when the idea of remarriage comes up he's like oh yeah cool i'll marry her whereas tywin's like you're gonna marry my daughter yeah and robert's like <laughs> okay fine okay then because <laughs> yeah what, what you highlight as well is that i love that when he announces he's marrying allison he's happy allison is like worried that everyone else is upset because politically speaking it's a really yeah. bizarre choice it's a trash but move you can see otto's face where he's just like yes <laughs> like, i, I yeah, can't believe very, that fucking worked yeah very subtle sort of yeah yeah how good is that for him and his house excellent and yeah well and, and that plays in because like his brother is fully cool. aware of all of this and all the plans and stuff and when we see them in the next episode where uh Aegon is like two years old he's like uh you know, his brother's talking to him about how, like, it's like, well, it's your job now to convince the king that the correct decision here is to choose a particular heir. Like, they are openly... That's is Tywin had no one pulling his strings, right? No. Yeah, but Hobart Hightower seems to have power over Otto Hightower. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, just openly talking about treason in the middle of, like, this party. Because that's... These characters, they all know the realities of the situation. They all know they can push and pull uh, where they want to. And, you know... It, uh, again, about Otto's sort of in just episode one, you have uh, Damon doing like horrors with the the city watch, and you're like, you might question as a viewer, like, why why was he someone who's like chaotic put in charge of uh, the city watch? And Viserys basically points that out to uh, Otto when Otto is complaining about it. He's like, you're the one that that decided to put him with the city watch, and that was after 
you made him like uh, uh, master of coin, and that was after was he master of ships at one point as well? Like you, you put him on several roles, and he was failing all of them. And it should become clear yeah. that Otto did that on purpose. He uh, he tried to give him roles so that he could show how bad he is at all of the roles, and then argue that that's a reason why he should be disinherited. That was like his whole goal. And he was relatively successful. It was uh, something else that pushed it over the edge. The, uh, the the comments about the kid. The it was the it was the old give him enough rope to hang himself exactly. with kind of thing. Like uh, you can tell in the scenes, the series is like pissed at him because he's like you're the one that suggested he should be commander of City Watch, and he's just like, yeah, <laughs> I know. Like it, it, it's it's not an uncalculated move. But then um, he said like uh, he. he there's an implication that he would, uh, Damon would kill the series to take the throne by being uh, next in line, and um, uh, Viserys said Damon doesn't have the patience to be king. And there's this line from Otto where he says, uh, "The gods have yet to make a man who lacks the patience for absolute power," and it's so cool because you just feel like he's talking about himself. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. In in my video on the episode, I make videos sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. I'm I'm like. Viserys is like, did you just? What did you fucking say? You, you said that? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, and that, by the way, we'll get into it with Viserys because uh, he's so much more aware than any of the characters give Viserys credit for. Like they all think yeah, he's like yeah. a bumbling idiot who can be pulled left, right, and center. But with a lot of what Viserys said, he's he's more than aware of what everyone's up to. Uh, yeah. And yeah, obviously, to Otto's chagrin, when he gets fucking fired and. Yeah, in that scene, he's just like, when he, when he dresses him down fully, he's just like, you're crazy. Like, because he's just got nothing. Literally, I just realized who's missing from your chart. There's, a, there's a couple of people missing, actually, but who are you thinking about? <laughs> but but Rainies isn't there. I deliberately that's didn't have I... She didn't earn her right to be on this chart. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, oh, is that... that spoilers! Uh, main spoilers, everybody! Revoked. Spoilers, everybody! That is a form of spoiler. We'll get there. Friends with Princess we'll get Rainies. there. We'll I thought of that because, you know, in episode two, I think it is, Rhaenys is like, um, to Rhaenyra, you know, your dad's not an idiot. Like, she is willing to say it out loud. Like, people plan around him and shit, but he's yeah. not an idiot. Um, yeah, um, a lot of, every line that Otto comes out with in a lot of these episodes, they're always to just uh, push everything in the directions he wants, and oftentimes to assert power as well. Um... I think the first thing he's, we see him say is Corliss is like complaining about the stepstones and they've responded to him already, but he keeps complaining. And then uh, Otto's just like, uh, the crown has heard your We've report. We've taken your complaint under advice. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like he's concluding the conversation, even though the king is right there. Like, and, and you could say, like, well, that's part of the hand's job, but it's just like he doesn't lose opportunities to assert the fact that he's in charge of a lot of stuff. And um, then later on, um, he says being at the king's council does not make you the king's equal, and it's like, yes. who, who are you? Who are you? Yeah, <laughs> like of course he considers himself uh, equal, if not superior, at that point. Uh, yeah, and then the, then there's of course the uh, the king wants to go to Dragonstone to talk to Damon directly, and uh, Otto is like, that's way too dangerous. Can't do that. He could, you know, anything could happen. He could kill you. And then when he gets there, and Damon's like, why isn't the king here? And he's like, he would never lower himself to be here. <laughs> like Otto, you slimy bitch. Um, and yeah, that's again. I think Otto goes in his place because Otto has no intention of smoothing things out. He yeah. wants that to yeah. begin a, a a civil. Well, I was about to say a civil war, a partial war that he can just like you know win. Damon on his own should be pretty simple. And if we can even kill Damon, that might be better for the realm overall, as well as just getting him out of the way. Because Damon and uh, Otto fucking hate each other in this show. Um. And it's pretty clear because it's a I, lot of fun. I would go as far as saying Otto is a big fan of order, and uh, Damon is probably the most chaotic character in the whole season. Yep. Uh, a lot of fun in that direction, yeah. But yeah, Rhaenyra actually is the one that fucks all that up because she actually sorts it out. Uh, yeah, Otto like kind of underestimates, or just doesn't expect that she's going to do something like that. No. I think you could say that overall Otto underestimates Rhaenyra until that that conversation in episode five when she's like, "Oh no, Rhaenyra's gonna fucking kill you all." Oh, and and uh, on top of his hatred for Damon, right when Damon is clearly in need of help for the stepstones, um, he's told that the king, and then Otto's like, uh, "Damon and the Sea Snakes started their war without his grace's leave. It would make the crown appear weak to assist them now." Like he will always be pushing to hope that Damon fucking dies in that war, if anything. 
because the the like this is the thing that the motivations always cross over and you can understand more reason for why different things are pushed in different directions mm -hmm. i love the uh when rainier and damon arrive in episode nine no eight um no one greets them except like some dude who eventually comes out and then when we go into the uh the small council chamber the there's like uh you know damon and rainier have arrived and otto says uh I presume they were greeted as befits their station. And you they, they have this shot of like Alicent being confused. She doesn't even know what's going on because she wouldn't have had yeah. that happen, but Otto made sure that happened. It's like you know, appearances are everything, as with uh Aegon being made king. They need it to be seen, they need it to have all of the straightforward normal ceremonial things, so then they can just be like, This is just official and true. Everyone accepts it. Sato is one of the best characters at getting across that everyone knows what's coming with the succession crisis because succession crises are extremely scary and that's what informs his conversation with Allison in episode 5, right? Uh, the, this is the grim reality that a lot of people would never ever ever want to deal with but Otto does which is when he says uh, the Lord Commander take your knights go to Dragonstone and basically just get the job done quick and it's like that's horrible that's betrayal it's disgusting that's something the series would never want it's like yeah I wonder if you'll say that but it's how we hit the end of season three <laughs> where everyone is dead mm -hmm. like also hi Shad hello what we're, we're, our, our plan is to talk about the whole show character by character we've started with Otto Oh, awesome, awesome. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be out of stage for too long, but I definitely want to make an appearance because House of the Dragons, I love it. It's very good. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nerd. Pretty good. I know. It's kind of interesting because you dropped off Game of Thrones, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I purposely, like, ducked out after season five or six. I forget which one exactly. Oh, based. <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah, it's a good time to drop out, if ever. Uh, I still go earlier if it would be, but that, you know it's fine. It's fine. Nah, man. <laughs> season six is the best season. Just ask Reddit; they know. They, they, I remember the black. What even happens in season six? Battle of Bastards. Ugh. Oh, uh, a big dumb battle. Hell yeah! It, it was a good spectacle. Terrain formations. Yeah. yeah, it was a good spectacle. Then people were like, "Wow, none of that made any sense." <laughs> it was like, hey, shut up, shut up, shut up. That's why I watch Game of Thrones. Hmm. Well, that's the interesting but thing. But there was is a the... big green explosion in the next episode, so the season was really good. People do like Ramsey's green explosions. That's evil. True. That's why he friendly fires his. Uh, whatever. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Then John but beat him. What, well, what helped out is that I guess I, I had very little baggage, or I guess uh, you know annoyance over Game of Thrones uh, going into House of the Dragon. And don't get me wrong, like like I reviewed you know the Long Night and sort you know it's, no oh, it's yes. all dumb and everything, but uh, I was certainly able to watch House of the Dragon kind of as its own con self contained thing. Uh, and as a result, I was like, oh wow, it's actually not too bad. I'm enjoying this, and and. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. You were one of many people who were surprised, including myself. I was like, oh God, this was this was not as shit as I thought. And then downright, it's like, this is good. Good. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Which I recommend and everyone check out. And it's like, wait, what the fuck's going on here? This is, this is like, better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, what happened? And it's just like, well, it is like a different team, and it's been some time, and they probably know. Are there should... any, any shared Ryan creators? Kindle. Um, high ups? No. What about no, low ups? Hey. Low downs. Um, I'm not too sure about the entire crew of the show. Well, why not? I'd imagine they probably would have had some people, because even Sapotnik, right? He was uh, like a yeah. veteran, but he's um, out now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he wasn't a showrunner. He was just a director. A director who can't Game shoot night scenes to save his fucking that life. Was... <laughs> and yeah. blames people's TVs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was That's oh was, the, was he that he was at that night battle that you showed me? Yes, that was the yeah. first that was the first episode of any Game of Thrones I'd ever seen. Was when I became your emotional support animal hmm. after <laughs> eight, season eight was like three episodes in, and you showed me that episode and you had to explain in detail why everything was terrible and everything's awful. That really upset me. So that like, episode oh, okay. it absolutely annihilated it upset me. Anni I didn't it know was... who any of these people were, and I hated it. Three and five stole from me my passionate investment in Game of Thrones as an IP. Uh, House of the Dragon is desperately trying to rebuild it slowly. Like, you care about this, right? I was like, I did. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> even even as a non Game of Thrones person, right? I just didn't didn't real. I only knew what I had absorbed through Mahler showing me his favorite Tywin clips and things like that. But I I I know virtually nothing about it. No interest in it. And even I had this. I could sense that that trepidation before this new show comes out. This mm -hmm. sort of nervousness about oh god. We know how season eight ended. Now they're making another show. Oh boy, uh, there was that unease. So with the constant allusions to Game of Thrones throughout this show. Oh it's god, like, stop it! Stop yeah. it! The show <laughs> opens with like a really on the nose title card saying "172 <laughs> years before Daenerys Targaryen." Just making like, sure that Grandma me? knows <laughs> she won't be showing up. It's I don't so... even want to see that name anymore, and I don't, like I said, I have, like, no investment at all in, in this universe, and I'm like, I don't even want to see that crazy bitch's name. <laughs> Look at it's like, I don't want to be able to find it. Arya did a trick with to, yeah. know, kill the spike. If we don't, can. Theo, listen, I've been meaning to, we've all been meaning to talk to you about this, and I guess we have to do it now, but, look, you, if you're gonna make a fantasy show, you have to have a cool knife, all right? Galadriel okay. has a cool knife. She's mandated to take it out of her sheath and do dumb shit with it every episode to remind you that it exists. And then we have to have the knife here. It's the rules of fantasy. That's what it is. This there is our modern world. There has to be a cool knife. There has That's to be a cool knife. Didn't work. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Name one fantasy show that didn't have a cool knife. Hmm. There are none. Yeah. Well, none. Uh... Zero. There are none. Man, and if you think was, there is, you're I, lying. I, I, I was gonna say Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves is not fantasy, but then it has a cool knife. He kills the sheriff with it. Damn it! Damn. That's right. And considering on your point of view, a spoon is a cool knife. Well, that, that's also very true. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know the reference. I still think the the dearest one is cringe, but I guess it's to give you a sense of the timeline. Like you could have related to anything, but I. Uh, but then all the references to A Song of Ice and Fire and Aegon's Dream, at first I was just like, are you pandering just to be like, remember Game of Thrones? We're going there. But it became quite plot relevant, especially relevant to Viserys' yeah. character. It's a really important part of him. Um, Sort of justifies a lot of the decisions like, he makes. It's fairly underpinning to who he is as a character. And I really love the payoff for uh, Rhaenyra letting Daemon know about that. Mm. And his reaction to it. Uh... Yeah, that probably sums up Otto, right? Yeah, he uh, he he's a he's a conniving. I I person. suspect <laughs> as we go through this list of characters, we'll uh, be they him. well written or otherwise, yeah, there is going to be a lot of probably crossover in the way that they interact with other people, like how we did with Damon here while we're talking about Otto. So do don't feel bad if you don't feel like we've fully explored each character. Plus, I do want to go to sleep today mm. at, eventually. That's true. So there, there's also that Weak. element. So. so one down. Do we move to his daughter? That seems like a smart place to go. But sure, either his daughter or to um, uh, Goodman. Uh, Goodman. I forget the names. Uh, da, 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 Lionel. Oh, Lionel's actually a good sort of person to check next, I guess, against all the stuff we just said about the Hand of the King. Lionel is like the best possible li Hand of the King you could ever ask for. Um, Lionel is the appropriately named... Uh, he's 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 good. Lionel is a good He's man. a Chad, kind of. Um, he's a Chad. He's a character that... So, go ahead. Sorry, just before we go move on from Otto... Mm -hmm. uh, I know the format because this isn't uh, the regular kind of EFAP format. Are we all spoilers are on the table? Yep, and are we yep, talking yep. about? I did a plot summary sort of thing, so you can okay, okay. say whatever you want. Because have you mentioned we'll like, to talk about? Oh well, not the books, but only also Shadows this is a character though. list, and some characters are just skulls in this image. So there, <laughs> there's sort of I think we're we're past that point. Uh, because uh, I'm not sure. Uh, unfortunately, I missed it. But basically, all the bad stuff that happens, I kind of think is Otto's fault. Did Interesting. You talk about that? Um, well, he does instigate a lot of what becomes the conflict. It, even he, the core conflict. Not entirely like, like, out of selfishness, right? I, I yeah, think it's inarguable that he does foment a succession crisis where... Yeah, the, yeah. I would happily agree exist. with it. I just want it as, you know, accented that it's like... I don't think it was entirely unreasonable, some of the choices he makes. Uh, oh, if, I agree. 
Because if we started with his, his choice to fuck around with Damon, which ends up being kind of interesting, because by the time we get to the point where Damon would have taken over had Viserys died, he seems like he could have been a decent king. Not mm -hmm. the... But, like, episode really one like Damon him. seems like a nightmare to have as a king. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably well, I don't know, like... Hit. But um, I, in episode eight, when Damon like helps Viserys to the throne and hands him his crown, that really feels like the show is telling us if they had worked together the whole time, if Viserys had allowed Damon to be his hand, like yeah. maybe not episode one, Damon, like he's definitely tempered over time. Um, but that could have been a very strong and glorious rule. Yeah. If well, yeah, if he could have more properly harnessed Damon's personality to more productive-ish, I guess, are controlled ends. Um, yeah. And very, very like The whole message is that um, the House of the Dragon is strong when it's united, and when it's divided, it, you know, explodes. A lot of houses every family, like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, was gonna say. I don't... I don't know. Some yeah. houses they need to, some houses have those weirdos that you just have to. You know, the, the yeah, some houses they are like for, was it stronger divided. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Crackhead Carl who shows up every couple of years and needs money. Yeah, he he needs to. Yeah, he's, Uncle he's Euron fine. shows up at the family reunion and we just have to deal with it. But uh, I guess you're more so picking on Chad uh, the fact that Allison is like you know he said he one day got on the throne and and Otto is like right then time to kill everyone let's do it. That's an excuse. Well, it's good there's enough. that, but the the initial thing that sparks everything off was disinheriting Damon for yeah. Rhaenyra, and that was purely from Otto's insistence. Uh, and everyone was blaming Viserys for causing all these problems because he's a weak king, but he was following the counsel of people that he was trusting, and it was Otto who was actually pushing for the core inciting incident that's going to set off everything. Uh and so, and I'm not saying it's out of character or anything, but if if anyone really wanted to point who's the... Uh, yeah, no, I don't think you're or... wrong. Um, Otto is the sort of originator of a lot of suffering. In the same way, I think, um, is, isn't like the way it kind of works in Game of Thrones, and I, I'll try and avoid referencing it too much for the people here who've not seen any of it, but uh, Robert's rule, right? He mostly leads it to the small council, like all important decisions, and then everyone sort yeah, of concludes, yeah. like, we should probably killing him might be good for the realm because we can get a better king, which is kind of the attitude a lot of people have about Viserys, but in reality, of course, the ensuing power struggle leads to basically the entire realm bleeding, like, significantly. And that you yeah, look back... Yeah, but that won't happen this time. That can't happen this time. Surely. No, 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 no. It'll be fine this no, time. No, no, Game no, of Thrones no, is an no, no. exception. But yeah, just the reality, you look back, you're like, man, probably would have been fine if they had just carried on. <laughs> that was in, in terms oh, well. of like instigating the conflict in general, I think Otto is more comparable to Littlefinger. I think I've seen people can like say that Otto is basically halfway between Tywin and Littlefinger, and I think that's I've seen that in the chat. In the yeah, I've seen that in the chat. Yeah, because uh, Tywin does. You know the whole like when 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 Otto says like take your knights and kill the people who are going to be in opposition to the throne. That just reminds me of Tywin actually doing that with uh, um. I forget her name, the Martell, the, the uh, Rhaegar's wife and her kids. Hell yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he had that done. And this is the thing, it, it yeah, secures it's shit. Yeah. And it's absolutely, yeah, and, and that's the thing. I think that anyone could be like, wow, what a fucking demon of a person. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, but the only reason they're doing it is to prevent everyone else from dying in the future, which is now going to happen more than likely. Yeah. <laughs> it happens in my book. <laughs> that's the thing, that's the it's... Thing with, with... George is that like all of the brutality it well, most of the brutality like it's not justified but you can understand the cause yeah the, um... the other way the other thing that they would try and do is if they didn't want to go full-blown slaughter historically they would take all the children and the innocents and put them as wards in uh, other noble houses which interestingly mm -hmm. enough we see that in Game of Thrones as an example as well yeah uh, to be raised like by Theon. Exactly, exactly. Uh, to hopefully be raised on their side and be attached to, you know, the people who... Yeah, oh, yeah, like family. um, Theon, right? That would be an example of that. Yes, yes. Yeah, like Theon. Uh, like the, just like just like Theon. Did anyone mention Theon? Just like Theon. Theon. He's, yeah. he's the guy with the defective breastplate, yeah. Didn't they kind yeah. of do that with Theon? <laughs> I, I think you're right. Wait, wait, yeah, are you afraid... You're talking about Theon 
Greyjoy? Greyjoy, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the oh, second oh, you yeah. The, yeah, the I'm squeam, not Theon. 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 Yeah, Theon. Yeah, um, he you doesn't know, have Theon. a dick. I still, though, whenever got... a character from Game of Thrones is mentioned, I immediately go to the end of this story, and it's like, Theon's end of story, where oh. Bran could have saved his oh. life. He said, hang back for a sec, dude. That's all he had to do, but he's slow to die. You know, that's what... four seconds, Theon. <laughs> that's, that, that's what makes a good king, though. Uh-huh. Yeah. Allowing people who want to defend you with their lives, yeah, just, just having them die for the lols, I guess. Willing to make the unpopular decisions. He, he's, he does the, the far quad. <laughs> yeah. For a sacrifice. Make, it, <laughs> make unilaterally <laughs> bad decisions and spin it as I'm willing to make the unpopular decisions. <laughs> Your death is a sacrifice that I am, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just, I, I guess I'm willing to make it, yeah. So I don't enjoy our talks. Yeah, I actually think that's fair. Do you do you do you think he's like the the Satan of the entire show at that point? Then Chad, who Theon Greyjoy? No, Otto. Otto. <laughs> Is he the Satan? Kinda. I mean, um, it depends on what sense you mean. It's interesting. I think he's actually very self-serving, but he tries to justify his own interests by saying it's the good, it's I'm actually doing it for the good of the realm. So he thinks I he's doing it for the I think good. The, if, I think that if he puts the realm in a particular place, then it also serves as being what's best for him and his family. This is the thing. I wouldn't want to underplay how much he's hand. doing this for the Hightower family. He's absolutely desperate to get his power. Everyone is desperate to get their house more power. Like It, it, it can be genuine and honest and wholesome-y sort of people where we're like, oh, I want to be a knight and then prove with my skill that I, I'm honor and bring honor to my family. But then there are plenty of people who are just like, well, if I just move my daughter over here, put her in this dress, have her talk to this guy for a while, I might just make the high towers sit on the throne. I can imagine Otto Hightower giving his daughter a butt slap every time she walks out of the room. Like, Go get him, tiger. Um. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Seems doubtful. That was one of the. That, that was one of the sense. deleted scenes, but it's totally in character. This is very hypothetical, so it's hard to make much of an assessment. But with Otto, I'm wondering if he doesn't like engineer Viserys' marriage to Alicent, do we still end up with a succession crisis if, let's say, uh, Viserys goes to the Valarians and still gets a male heir? Do we get a bunch of smaller houses still championing that male heir over Rhaenyra? Or uh, is or is it more of a result of Otto engineering a succession crisis because he believes it's inevitable? What an interesting like alternative timeline where he has two sons with Lena instead and then Corlys is like desperate to you know push out Rhaenyra because mm -hmm. as we saw Corlys was he was he wasn't sure who he was siding with for the whole season until right at the end so you know it could it could have been anybody really um I don't know it felt to me like he was basically siding with Damon at every opportunity that's so actually one in this that's something I noticed on and a rewatch then, is that uh, he supports Damon's yeah. crazy city watch shit. Um, yeah, it, it, from the very beginning, uh, Corlys is actually in Damon's camp, um, <clears throat> and then Damon marries Rhaenyra. So, do you think that that was because he knew that Damon was next in line? Um, because I doubt. Because this is the thing: what causes trouble for him at the end is that when he finds out Damon killed his brother, and he's gonna have to just swallow that. Even though, because you could tell that he thought that the brother had earned his own death. He was like that idiot, you know, sort of thing. And you get a, a yeah. taste of that in episode, I think, three, where he's like, if you stoke mutiny, blood or no, like, I'll fucking, I'll fuck you up, sort of thing. Um, I'm sure he sees it as his own fault, but at the same time, it's pretty difficult to just be like, oh, you killed my brother. That's neat. But uh, they don't get to interact before the season's over, unfortunately. He is not the same character as Freya. No. True. Uh, I think though that yeah, like it would have it would have been a cool difference, but um, that there would have been possible succession issues. It's just that Otto would have been less passionate, I suppose, about pushing uh the Valaria. He wouldn't care to push the Valarian side, I assume, compared to the. In fact, I don't even know which side he would side with uh, Otto at that point. That's that's sort of what I'm trying to get at, because I'm wondering if maybe he sees a crisis over this because you know, Rhaenyra as being named successor kind of violate precedent. So he thinks that some sort of crisis is inevitable, but simultaneously sees an opportunity for his own family to advance their station. So he thinks, if anyone, why not us? Yeah, it's difficult for me to climb the ladder. If I was to put a percentage on how much Otto is motivated by the good of the realm versus the good of his family, how, how are we all feeling? Is it, are you going 90-10 there, Shad? I 
Oh, it's hard to say. Um, Because initially, I think he's more motivated by hatred of Damon over his own kind of, oh, if I get your name. Um, uh, that might to... actually just be concern for the realm. Because he so. sees Damon is. as a potential yeah. ruler being really cringe. I think <laughs> anyone would be concerned about Damon sitting on the throne early on, especially. But that does manifest as just hatred just... for him, yeah. yeah Sorry, Shad. That's just personal grudge. It could also be self-serving in the sense that he feels that as soon as Damon gets the throne, he knows he is out. That's true. Um, and yeah, so true. it could be self-preservation instinct, even. Um, Which is interesting, Damon because a different stuff. character might see that scenario and try to cozy up with the next person so that they mm. don't seem like a threat or so that they seem very useful and like, like an ally, a long-time ally. You mean like um, what um, Laris Strong does with Alicent? Yes. <laughs> let me look just a second let me go back to my chart Laris oh, sorry. Laris didn't make it onto Laris this Laris isn't on there sorry he was... Larry didn't make it he was close no, I nearly put him on Larry. but I was like I don't want to have because if I put him on I feel like there's like several people I should be putting on this is more to help you understand the dynamics Laris looks the same and has the same role in the few episodes he's in okay I, I, I gotcha he's he's uh he's Lionel's he's... son Yes. He's yeah, the, the foot, foot guy. guy. Okay, I got uh, you. He's the brains of the sons. Oh, okay. He's foot guy. Quentin. All right. He is foot guy. Yeah. Why? Foot guy was in that that, hey, well, that. It was it was it was the it was just the cherry on the top of that magnificent episode. We can we can move to him right after Lionel if you want. We, I think we're done with Otto, right? Otto, thumbs up. Good yeah, characters. good discussion on that. Yeah, yeah thanks, Chad. So hey, that was, it was. I thought it was interesting to bring up actually because I didn't even thought of the. I think it was a okay. Was. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm I'm we're here for um, it. We, we want to get the we want to get our money's worth out of your chart. So Lionel, uh, the first time we see him, the first interaction we get is uh, Damon asking. He's, Damon says to him, "The Watch was enforcing the Crown's laws. Wouldn't you agree, Lord Strong, about what he did with with the City Watch?" And his response is, uh, "My Prince." And it's clear he's going to disagree. He's going to say that the, the City Watch shouldn't be so overzealous, right? And so he's like, "Oh, so he's where does that place him loyalty wise? Like anti Damon pro." Uh, Otto, presumably in that in that sort of format, it's like okay. And then, um, in terms of who should inherit the throne, he says the heir is already set by law and precedent, uh, being Damon. Damon. So it's yeah. like oh, so that's pro Damon, and that's anti Otto, and that's a very uh, safe answer. And then uh, when they're all ripping into how Damon will destroy the realm through like, uh, like like breaching protocol, blah blah blah, he says. Uh, if order and stability is so concerning to this council, then perhaps we shouldn't break a hundred years of it by naming a girl. And it's like, oh, so he's, you know, basically when you when you hear people say shit in this in this these this universe, you're like, whose side are you on? Who are you fighting for? And at this point, it's like I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. You have to listen to more of what he's got to say. Um, uh, when he's asked for advice about who should marry who, uh, Viserys is like, let me guess, you want my daughter to marry your son, uh, Harwin. He's like, no, you should marry uh, Lainor. Uh, and he said, for the same reason you should have married Lena is to bind the Valarian and Targaryen houses, because that's going to be the smartest decision in terms of strength and stuff. It's like, wow. Right, and that so comes you... off as, like, pro-Valarian move. Again, yeah, you're just like, where are you? What's your, what's your deal? And it's just, uh, you discover, as time goes on, he's just... He doesn't, trying, he doesn't like, have a deal. He doesn't, yeah. yeah. He's, that's, that's, he's the he one man in Westeros who's not running a game on you. Yeah. He doesn't want things to go to shit. He doesn't push his own house forward. He just gives what he thinks is the best advice for the sake of, I guess you'd say the realm, right? He's kind of like... Uh, well, here's the thing. How he strong... Like, they are only great lords because of a Targaryen investiture. Like, um, they were made powerful by, I think it was Jaehaerys. Um... So they like sink or swim with House Targaryen. So Lionel is it is kind of self interested. It's just kind of ab abstracted a little bit and comes off as a lot more um, pragmatic because like he is solely invested in how well the realm's doing as a result of that. Like the, he he can't stand on his own. Um, That's how I see it, at least. No, yeah, I think that that makes sense and uh, becomes a lot clearer with the uh, again. We'll talk about it when we get there. The wait, 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 wait. Are you are you saying that Aquaman was wrong when he said the strongest men stand alone? Yes. Oh, huh? it's reasonable to say that's wrong. Madness. Ooh. Are you saying I can't believe you're saying Aquaman is wrong? 
Aquaman lied to me. <laughs> he lied to me. When uh, Viserys is figuring out, he, uh, I think it's when he's trying to figure out who he should marry, he comes to um, the Lionel and says, I've come looking for an unencumbered opinion. And he says, That's all I would ever give, Your Grace. Like, even Viserys has noticed that Lionel is just trustworthy in terms of straightforward mechanical advice as opposed to, maybe you should do this. You're like, why? He's like, oh, no reason. No reason at all. I um, certainly don't know. Be to be in court in King Viserys' court, find the one guy who doesn't have an angle he's playing. Well, and that's... what's that? Marry my son? I don't even know who that is. And then it's accentuated by one of his last scenes, where he's basically like, "I have to resign because my son is been sleeping with your daughter, the set queen, and to the point where they have three kids together, which is just going to fuck up absolutely everything, and I can no longer yeah. act uh, unbiased." In terms of my it's advice, like, this is a conflict of this is a clear conflict of interest here. Compare that with Otto, who's like conflict of interest. This is a clear go. con. <laughs> was, There's I, not enough conflict of interest. Yeah, I need more. I need to make. Or... I need more conflicts of interest. But um, or... this is what I have to respect about Lytle. He's like, I should be fired for this, but I can't tell you what it is because I have. I can't let you. Like, <laughs> if I would... say it out loud, you'll kill us all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'll not only kill my son and me, but everyone. Everyone will die. And, like, Viserys like... knows that he's a really good hand, so he's like, "Go on, say it." And he's not gonna say it. Alice, so he fucking so background. just say as my hand. Don't worry. Yeah, I love he kind of debate bros if he's like, give me a reason. He's like, no. And he's like, well, I won't fire you then. So, you know, yeah. there you go. <laughs> well, that, yeah. Get wrecked. Based. Liberal Lionel. Yeah, what do you story. think about that, chat? <laughs> and he looks out the window. Yeah. Got his little, little phone. Got his chat up. He's streaming on Twitch. Yeah, chat's loving that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I really like the interaction Lionel has with the Arwen when he says... Don't play the fool with me. Your interest in the princess is gonna like give you exile and death. And he says it's just rumor. And he says people have eyes. The king won't accept it, but this flimsy shield alone stands between you and the headsman, and the willful blindness of a father towards his child. Where he was referring to Viserys, and then Harwin is like, I wish my father would afford a similar blindness. He's just like, you know, what have I been doing this whole time? Do you think? Just trying to let out because it's that scene. Really fucking good scene where they're uh, where Kristen Cole is training the the princes, oh, and you yeah. have Harwin and uh, and sorry not Harwin uh, you have you have uh, Lionel and the series just watching them and they're quite happy the the way they film it is is just to show like hey everything's working out and it's I think safe to assume that uh, Lionel knows what's going on but at the same time is like well everything is you know pleasant and smooth nobody knows and we're just getting on with it so whatever it's fine but obviously that attitude changes as soon as Harwin fucks it up um but yeah and then and then he gets and, burned uh, to death yeah I mean, <laughs> Thanks, I think it was it I'm not sure about the writing making such a really good character have the last thing they do do blackface I'm really <laughs> not all that keen on it but I guess Double it's a face. dark world out it was there. a bold really, choice it was it was certainly a bold choice it's what I expect from Game of Thrones I mean, really not a... I know it looks black but it's technically ash face well, and to be fair, that you know isn't what? actually his you, skull in this so image. Here's that the thing, Shad. You go skull. into Twitter in the court of public opinion, and you tell everyone that, <laughs> and the, the clear distinction, right. and let me know how that works out for you. I'll, I'll do my best. It wasn't blackface I was doing. I was, it was ash face. Ash face. face. It, was, it, was, it was a dark, oh, dark, from dark blue. <laughs> it's the way that the light catches it. Um, yeah, I approve of Lionel. Thumbs up. Sad end. What a cool dude, and doesn't even. What have a much great guy! Like yeah. he really doesn't him because he's just. Do you think the guy you want? Here's hypothetical: <laughs> If Lionel was still alive, and still hand of the king, what would have happened when Viserys died? Ooh, good question. Assuming okay. everything else goes as it did. Yeah, sure. Well, Although he would have tried to have. follow through with yeah. the regular yeah. succession. Yeah, the, he, like... the big deal about. How everything falls apart is that Otto has already put everything in place. It's actually yeah. we'll get to episode nine, I guess, in a grander conversation. But uh, I really don't like episode nine. I have big issues with it, and some of it is just outright shitty dialogue, like when uh, 
uh, Alicent starts to realize as the council just openly talk about literal fucking treason that they've been planning for years or whatever. She's like, wait, you guys have been making plans without me? And then one of the guys says, uh, my queen, there's no need to sully you with darkling schemes. It's like, why would you say it like that? Just that you're all just planning evil things. Yeah. The, like, You wouldn't say it like that because you would think, unless, I don't know, you're, that you're a psychopath, right. yeah. you're in the right. You are we, on the right side of the success. Yeah, either crisis. you're correct or you're doing something underhanded and you need to remain underhanded. There's people in the I hate that scene because there's people in the room who aren't actually on I your side hate yet. That scene. The only A person I like in that scene Wesley. is the Lord Commander and uh fucking yeah. based Breezebri, whatever the hell his name is. He was awesome in that scene. He was just like, You're all fucking nuts. What the hell are you doing? And then they kill him. He's probably got done dirty, man. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> he really did. Yeah. Episode nine. We'll we'll Get there. He got sat but down a little God too damn. hard. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll probably delve yeah. into that when we get to Kristen I want to talk about particular. Kristen fucking Cole. Of that That's what I mean. There's so, there's so much to say <laughs> about does Cole. Some, oh, Nine does I, some things, some characters dirty. I mean, be they listed I hope they or otherwise. That, I hope they put that on Breesby's uh, headstone. Death by sitting down for <laughs> <laughs> Sat down too hard. <laughs> <laughs> murdered and unavenged. I feel like if you get the mind wondering, like what happened? Hard, what does that look like? Sitting down too hard. Yeah, exactly. Well, we like, saw it. Down so hard that your legs shoot up into your brain or something. Or well, I mean, we saw it. Yeah, we did see what happened. What is why? Why? Like what? it was. It was a really That's weirdly a really filmed question. kill. Like it, there was no need yeah. to do it so yeah. like awkwardly. Kristen went goblin mode. It indeed. He does um, that a lot. Well, do you want to? Should we talk about Kristen Cole? It seems like we're ready to. Yeah, yeah we can really. talk. We can talk about Kristen Cole. Absolutely, I mm -hmm. quite like him. I think up until episode nine, he loses me completely at that point. Uh, yeah, but he was always kind of shaky, and then and then I was yeah. like, it depends on where you're going with this. I can kind of say, oh, never mind. Exactly. I was <laughs> telling like... you that through pretty much all of our watch throughs where I'm like, what are they doing? I know this archetype. I know this, you know, Lancelot kind of character. I, what are they going to do with him, though? What's going to what are they going to do? And so you're always kind of waiting to see what happens. You think he's then... a really interesting character who gets to get away with too much because the writers seem to think that the Queen's protection affords a whole yeah. lot more than it does. Well, and and you know what? That's that's a little too much for us to have to infer, right? Like, if if so, to give yes. a, a brief history, it's like he's just guy. He's he's from a family that's got nothing to their name, pretty much. Um, but he's a really good fighter, and he earns his way into being a king's guard, particularly the princess Rhaenyra's personal guard. And then um, she does a sleep-ins with him that he does indeed uh, essentially go along with. You know, it's not it's, he's not faultless in that in terms of it's something they definitely can't do in this world in the positions they hold. Very bad. Um, but he feels like distraught over it because as far as he knew it was because they were in love but she was kind of doing it for fun and then uh, and so he was like so I broke my vows for like nothing and he's close to getting panicky as fuck and to the point where he, he he's so concerned about the resulting uh, torture and gelding that's expected uh, as a result of doing something like that as a king's guard that he would rather beg to be executed cleanly <laughs> Just in case anyone doesn't know what gelding means, uh -oh. <laughs> and that's his 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 testicles you being chopped, your balls chopped off. off. Yep. And, yeah. Um, there is precedent yeah. for that. Jaharis did do that to a few kings guard who fuckled around a bit too much. Yeah. Um. And so he's terrified <laughs> of that, and it it sort of motivates him to actually get ahead of the truth coming out that he thinks is inevitable. If he thinks he sort of admits to it, it'll be a an avenue for him to be given a quick death. Um, but it's leverage for Alison. She just decides to keep it as information. And he becomes sort of her personal guard that is entrusted with a lot of stuff. And so at this point in the story, I was like, okay, I'm following all that. Because, yeah, he, he owes her a lot. Um, and then you get the scene that I really liked in terms of the uh, his manipulation and uh, attempted destruction of Rhaenyra and Harwin and, and the... Sort of, if it, he's got like a twisted sense now of what is honorable and what should be stuck to, to the point where he's going to try and sabotage anyone else who's fucking around with stuff. And he also kind of hates Rhaenyra because he sees her, I guess, as the object of what destroyed his um, honor. The, the you vow. see it a lot because he uses 
I don't want to say use it too much, but the idea of honor and whatnot as almost a smokescreen for just how much he fucking hates Renera because of yes. what she did. Well, you have that you have that line where he, he's like, he, at first he just almost describes her, dare I say, metaphorically. She's like a spider who sucks out everything of her prey or something, and then it just there's like a pause. And he just goes, spoiled cunt. <laughs> it's just like, oh, and then he's like, oh, oh from your own experiences, that. perhaps. Is yeah, he shouldn't have said that. I should have just described her as a spider who sucks the life force out of everything <laughs> yeah, around her. That's the way it. you do it. Cunt was a bit too have said far. This you can't word. say that on YouTube. You get demonetized. It's um, calling people knows. in, yeah, arachnid, just arthropods in general is definitely frowned upon. We're not doing it here. We're just referencing the show, Susan. So and so, yeah. You know, to clarify, the, right? Uh, I would, I saw him as a guy who was going down a really dark path, but I understood how he got there, and that these these were clever, more clever, underhanded ways of uh, sabotaging opponents, which I find interesting and engaging. Then you get to episode nine, and he's just an idiot, kind of. Um, and he's doing weird things, and then you're like, oh, well, there was also that time he did something weird and idiotic in episode five, I want to say, when he, he beat someone yeah, to yeah. death at a wedding. He and... beat a noble to death in the middle of a wedding, and also and he... mildly assaulted the prince. You have conversations where yeah. you're like, well, what if it was argued by the queen that uh, he put his hand on the princess, and thus Christian Cole had to save her, like, uh, the guy had a knife, you know, you could... and it's just like, how come none of this was in the show, though? Okay. Yeah, like and it is very to easy so to hard. write an excuse for yeah, what in the happened. chaos. But, but of they the scheme. didn't write it. They didn't put the excuse in the show. I don't even. It just think seems like he gets away with it. An excuse with how things go. You need that I, scene where he's like on a trial of some I know. sort. I'm on or, two. I'm, I'm of two minds like, because I feel or death. What you did? Well, I feel like they per obviously that I like they left it ambiguous on purpose and. Uh, then the questions are why is it because of bad writing or because they wanted to achieve a certain result and i i get the sense that they wanted to achieve this type of speculation they wanted the audience to be asking how the hell did he survive that uh, but at the same side so i'm oh, sorry on the other side of the coin i do feel just a little bit more clarification would help guide you know us away from the potential plot hole of what it can look like whereas like he you know it looks like he just murdered someone in front of everyone and no been, one's doing anything. It would have been good for building up um, his relationship with Alison, that you can see a scene where she's the one that puts out a lot of her own sort of reputation in defense yeah, of him. Yeah, maybe like a scene between Alice and Viserys and uh, the Lord Commander Harold Westling yeah. where Alison tries to excuse Kristen's behavior, that as soon as he gets well, rejected by a woman for the first time, he murders a gay man. Okay, How spe insanely of, based. Speaking of Harold, by the way, uh, God, I was with him in that scene in episode nine where he's just watching oh, them all be. so cool. He's watching them all be clowns. He watches one of his king's guard just <laughs> arbitrarily kill a person. Then he's like, okay, put down your sword, get off your cloak. And then it's just like, nah. And he's like, all right, you guys just. You suck. Fuck that scene. <laughs> like, oh, man, this fucking sucks. I'm leaving. Yeah. I'm going to my farm and I'm just going to be... Oh, I hope yeah. he comes you know, if back. I'm the only one who gives a shit around here, I'm just going to go, I don't know. Just I'm, do I'm, I'm hoping he else. ends up with, uh, with the, the blacks. Because like, that's going to be a... It, 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 he seems like a Barristan type. Um, but hopefully it's not shit. Yeah, big Barristan vibes. Um, so yeah, hopefully we get sort of a payoff with that. But uh, yeah, super unsatisfying. And then Cole just... He seems to be devolving into he's just kind of a crazy dude. He's going to be doing crazy things. And then to make yeah. everything worse, the last thing we know about him is Alicent saying he's about to be sworn in as the Lord Commander of the King's Guard. And it's like, oh my god, really? Uh, I don't, yeah, just nepotism goes hard. That's so lame. <laughs> It's, it's, it's and like, even, and you might and be like, "Well, no, it, 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 it makes some sense, or whatever." Alice, it's like, it's just not, it's not that. It's just really unsatisfying. Some, I find. Yeah. yeah, like it makes some level of sense, but how they did it is because yeah, just, from Allison's you know, yeah. perspective, is insanely loyal. Also yeah. a simp, but that just makes him even yeah. more controllable. That's right. the kind of that's the kind of John Lennon psycho that I I just you like, gotta be careful. It, well, you gotta be careful with that kind of chaos around you when, that's um, obsessed with you. When Westerling said like you know drop the sword, uh, Cole was like, I will not uh, you know uh, deal with like insults to the queen. And it's like. To the point where you'll kill the guy, like, and then instantly she, kill the guy in front of everyone. And she well, says, "Well, it depends um, on the severity of insult. There are in certain insults that are worthy of death in this, you know, context and world. Uh, not sure that uh, 
Beesbury was worthy of it, but uh, you know, the, the, like the whore cheese. accusation was uh, an executable offense. So. That's, that's a broad thing I kind of want to touch on. Is a, a lot of what we see in this show is the world being far too tolerant of death and spe yes. uh, specifically of noble death. That was one of my big problems with the first episode at the tournament. Yes, uh, yes. I had I kind of had like a big issue with you. You send your noble people out to do jousting and then all of a sudden they're like they're just horrifically killing one another. I'm like, guys, you can't you can't just do this. Okay. This is this is not something you, you you're just allowed to do. This wasn't the, an accident uh, from, you, from a joust. This, this is I don't know. I, I have less of an issue in it because there's like an, a, a, an agreement on both parties going into the tournament that death is a very viable. Oh, and also it depends on what type of tournament because you have different points of reference in history. Like you have the Pope speaking out against it because too many people were dying in the past, which points out a couple of things. Yes, there were people who were objecting to it, but also it meant that there was a lot of people dying in tournaments at the same time. Um, and so... Like there was times when a tournament was basically sharp blades and it was a full bow blown, uh, battle simulation, like a real full on and lots of people died. Uh, and this is in a time of peace where a lot of the knights, they haven't gone to war. They want to prove themselves. They kind of even contextualize that in the, in the scene. And so I wasn't as, uh, you know, um, uh, thrown out. It didn't out seem by like that. it was a part of the tournament though. It seemed like they just got angry and then decided to do their own thing and started fighting. Even well, way, well I... it, the the jousting can often um uh, be determined by uh, melee combat afterwards, and so it seems like that just degenerated into the melee thing. And like I said, I didn't. I was surprisingly, I didn't have too much of an issue. I had I had issues with other things in the um in the tawny scene, like tripping the horse with the lance. I thought that was a bit, mm, but the actual death, not so much for that one specifically. Even with the melee and with uh, foot combat and whatnot, there was almost in the later years of the tournament as the kind of tournament we see in the show, because, you know, with the jousting after the joust evolved, there was like limits on the number of times you could strike your opponent. Yeah, like more rules came in, but the but the thing is we don't actually have a set, like, um, uh, agreed upon list. The rules of tournaments in the medieval period actually change between region and area mm -hmm. with some general like guides and standards but not 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 very strict and the other side i guess is that i try like it because this is a fantasy world we would determine what type of tournaments they're doing in this fantasy world even though it's inspired by the medieval period but it would be by context of the scene and i just kind of took like oh so they went with the more bloodthirsty kind of tournaments that were more indicative of the earlier medieval period but they kind of put it in a more late medieval period setting and i was like okay i'm okay with that i think that can fit hmm I have the, to defer on this one. That, that, the only thing that makes that a persistent point of concern for me is that it harms my uh, impression of the world building because it makes it harder to see anyone sending any uh, their. Uh, I wouldn't like allow my son to go in the or, fucking tournament. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's one thing if it's like a, a joust you're expected to get beat up but not survive well, like instead a, of like, oh yeah, the other person might just walk up and pull you after, know, off your horse thing. afterwards and start fighting Remember, you. We did have bloodthirsty tournaments in the past, and people still went to them. I mean, we have war, and people go to war with high well, chances. Yeah, of I want to say like oh, I wouldn't. Uh, I wanna to be fair, like, I wouldn't want my son to do it. But if I could see a son being like, I want to fight in that tournament, I want to prove myself, that sort of thing. Exactly I can understand for, that. Yeah. For the glory like, by this point, by match. this time, by the time you get to this kind of tournament, there's all sorts of technological advances to make people stop dying. Like you have your coronel lances, armors have been, you know much improved since the earlier tournaments where it was basically just combat simulation the masculine urge to die for dying. no reason <laughs> pretty much the one that said uh, remember game of thrones season one someone dying in attorney is a big deal that would be uh the mountain he kills he, his name Hugh of the veil vale. who is played by the guy who plays the lannister twins uh, yeah jefferson hole plays me. both um, lannisters yeah, he, uh, and, and there's a theory that uh, the mountain... Was it the mountain that killed him? Or was yeah. it someone else? Because it was like, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was on purpose it was the to some Greg. degree, right? Because he, uh, he knew something that night. I can't remember, I'd have to rewatch season one, but I remember Ned wanted um, to speak to the him. The conspiracy was that the lists were rigged so that he would go up against the mountain, yeah. and the mountain is just like more likely to kill him than anyone else. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was a shock. But to be fair, I'm pretty sure people are shocked in this uh, episode, in episode one, when people start dying, like the audience, like <gasps> they show a guy like thrown up and stuff. I just don't know shot, about like, the legal side of it. That, 
I think we get a shot of like Rainies and that, and their reaction appears to be sort of, oh, this is business as usual. I believe there's some commentary I thought, on using bloodshed. I thought to, with her, like, celebrate that it way. was that she is annoyed. At, like she was talking about how all of these knights have no idea what it's like to like live in a. It's kind of because now I'm thinking about it. I think she says like the balls full of seed and this summer night sort of thing, but then they literally die in front of her. So <laughs> I don't mm. know. Like it seems like uh, even if they're not experienced in war, they're still suffering. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. It's it's weird they would say that if, job. if that was going to be the nature of the. Yeah, but, the uh, tournament. I wouldn't be saying that. I'd need to. Uh, this is the thing. I, I, my opinions are dependent on what experts say is a possibility in those scenarios because I just don't know. I don't know if it's possible to just see someone die in a tournament of that day and age and be like, "Oh, there he goes, rip." That's I think unfortunate. It's, it's, For this it's like the nature that they tournament. start engaging with it. Uh, then I just, uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't world. have had it be that way. In the real world, for this kind of tournament, uh, we're at the point where people. You don't want them dying, or like it, that shouldn't be a common occurrence anymore. As least of all, people actively going outside the conventions of the tournament to just especially you know, highborns, right? One another. Yeah, well, it's a tournament, so it's pretty much always going to be all highborn. Uh, but... Well, uh, to to clarify what I'm thinking about, you know, like Cole when he goes in, no one cares about him. They even yeah. point out like I don't even know this guy, whatever. But um, Otto Hightower, for example, has this this back and forth with Damon going. Damon chooses. Uh, uh, his son to fight first and Otto's like shown to be annoyed while well, I would be like fucking tense I'd be like Damon hates me this is a chance for him to actually deal real damage to Kill my own my son yeah. but you know like yeah I don't think it I think I think the this problem in the scene that people aren't quite reflecting the nature of the event as much as you probably want them to yeah if you want it to have it be is a that... fucking murderous event <laughs> that's the... is that the biggest problem with episode one though maybe I don't know I, I, I like I, it. I, I, I think it is. <laughs> and I think if that's your biggest problem, that's, you know, that's a good you could have a lot be. bigger problems. Yeah, it's not, it's it's not terrible. It's just, it's definitely an eye roll for me. It's a little. Uh, there is a big problem in this season, and it doesn't damage the season as a whole to like the point of making it bad or anything. There was the bit when Rhaenyra was on tour to like cho choose her suitors, right? And then two of them just start killing each other again. <laughs> I think that was them, you know, like, I, I, trying to make the tournament... I, it just made it more contextual. Like, I, yeah, this kind of I, thing just again, happens. Ex well, that was, like, an accepted duel b based on insult, and everyone kind of knows the general rules as that goes on, and they can always end in death. Uh, and so, uh, again, I don't have an issue with yeah, that. Like, that both combatants enter into it, you know, knowingly. Um, also... You put a blackwood and a bracken in the same room and expect neither of them to die, you are wrong. I, he doesn't know. I think <laughs> you need that I mean, in the show in the, if you want that to be a thing. They and in the first episode, yet. I think it was a matter of it was probably the reason for it is to make sure that right off the bat everyone understands that this show has the potential to be very, very violent. Yeah, people can die at a moment's notice. Yeah, it's, what Game it's of just to set for. up that. Yeah, it's like that. This is a new show. But, you know, this is what we're willing to, you know, do. We, we start out with some pretty strong violence in, the, in our first episode. Um, but yeah, I guess to round out Kristen Cole, uh, he's like, I, th I think he's a bit of a mistake. I think they needed to iron him out a bit more in terms of what they were going for, because he feels like a bit of a jumble. Yeah, he mm -hmm. does feel like they're kind of juggling what he's supposed to do, just sort of taking him down the road from episode to episode, and uh, yeah. I, as After, it goes. I when, think um, it, it's like a matter of, as you go on, it's like, okay, all right, you're going somewhere, it seems like, oh, you're not really, uh, you're just kind of getting lost, you're just sort of walking around, you know, like... Yeah, it, 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 that sort of, we kind of know what we want to do with him, but well, you know, like, we're not just, really, like, you know, well, meandering really strong like in this world that this guy who considers himself to be noble like it just it all goes off the rails and then he goes all punished and then uh but but like it doesn't but really he was crazy go. yeah, yeah he, he that's goes just not really fun like, you know because what was really interesting was him being more uh manipulative and uh i was honor code changes well and and to the point where i could believe he still believes himself to be a very good man like uh... which would be to have that he's deluded himself at this point into thinking that he still has like some level of honor when it's, yeah like you he's know, perverted he, the sense of honor and that's something i was interested in like, he lost the social based on the you know the social constructs that he lived in 
he thought he lost his honor, but it was through his choices that he actually lost his honor, became a bad person. And that it, would be yeah, his, his honor turns from a more principled it. form of honor to a more pragmatic kind of honor. Um, well, well, it's, I, well, this conversation I, I really interested in yeah, because the interpretations of honor we see this reflected again in the real world like, like some people believe like honor is always treating your opponent fairly where another interpretation of honor which is what i see kind of cold leaning towards is loyalty above all else and that means if i need to stab this guy in the back to prove my loyalty and to protect who i've sworn my fealty towards i'll do it uh which is interestingly enough the type of law like honor culture we see in japan in the samurai it's like they will do like like the most underhanded slaughter peasants everything like that for pure loyalty and who they're sworn to oh, i just and, do it for uh, fun mm -hmm. <laughs> oh really <laughs> but uh and so yeah like it seems like cole's version of like view of honor is absolute 100 percent loyalty even if it means murdering you know um an old guy much by more tribalistic kind sit. of honor yeah like if they're not, not if they're not in you know, combat, I... yeah, um, yeah, it, uh, and I don't know whether they're going to take him in season two or three, but like I was, I was more interested in him, and now I'm kind of just like, I hope he just doesn't become a like a mad dog that gets set on people. A mad that... clown person. Mad yeah. clown is actually better. Yeah, yeah, I'll go with that. Well, yeah, because uh, he essentially exists as like a prop for other characters to like throw at problems. That's going to be, it just feels like a waste, right? What's more interesting in this show is when everybody's got their own perspectives and agendas mm -hmm. and uh, principles that are in the yeah. mix. It's where, cool. you know, you have multiple characters who have the same end goal, but the methods that they would want to go about achieving that goal are different because there's a mm -hmm. lot of friction in that dynamic. So the mad dog character though is a useful character they're gonna use it to i feel i think he know, was more than that things. though and then he got reduced to that yeah exactly but but that could Rabbit, be an arc that man. someone goes along though yeah like, he, like there are uh, ways it to justify it i just That's think fair. that uh i, I thought Good, they would take but... it would be more interesting than where he seems to be which is that he's just kind of nuts the two instances yeah of the him... idea that you have losing it the first one being when he's like screaming and punching uh the knight of kisses or whatever and then when he does what he does to Beesbury. Those feel like anomalies. Like he doesn't I never gained yeah. from him as like, oh, he's he's just like potentially unhinged. I never really got that sense mm. in all the time we spent with him. Well yeah, when you think about him, those those two like stand out in your memories as like, oh shit. That oh, okay. And then like those are, Yeah, if that earns your way into being like, well now we can just tell him to do a thing and say, do it for me. I'm Allison, you like me, and it's honorable to do the thing. And it's like you'll just do it no matter what. Like, I don't know, I hope we don't go that direction. It'll be lame, I think. I yeah, the Knight of Kisses I can justify because of his mental state at the time, even though yeah, I, I think right, I think it's nonsense. But the stuff with Beesbury by that point, I'm just confused as to why why exactly they made him kill Beesbury like that. Uh, I have no it idea needed to why be why like accidental. Well, maybe he needed to lose himself for a moment. It accidental almost. Oh, like, because I thought that would... and then he sit down too hard. <laughs> yeah, I thought they were trying to make it look like an accident. I thought it would have looked better yeah, if he just kept, killed but him then outright. He, like, just doesn't react. Like if you killed someone by accident, you'd be like, "Oh fuck! I, I oh shit! Oh, <laughs> like, oh, you sat I, down too I, hard." Dude, I, I think I think most of them don't. Kill someone by accident, you'll be stunned. I think a lot of people just be stunned. Yeah. The only person a lot of the times when something happens, people reacting. Like correctly that seat as far as I'm concerned is the fucking Lord Commander. He's the only one who's he immediately is like, so you are no longer in the King's God. It's like, so yep, this correct. is why I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Um, but but then everyone I've else, seen... it doesn't even get mentioned past that scene. Beesbury's just fucked it's, off. It's bizarre. He's been here this whole time as a member of this little, you know, court shebang thing, and he's just got killed by this guy in front of everyone else, and it's fine. Don't worry about it. What did you tell people happened? Like, he well, tripped I mean... on the stairs and fell. I suppose Greater they, they context. Can... They, they, oh, they do. They that, did. Um... They did execute a lot of nobles uh, during yeah. that kind well, of. They, they do have the control of the dissemination of information. That's true as well. That's yeah, true. there's there's efforts made yeah. to make that work. It's just that oh god, what a what a lame way to kill the character. And I was actually going to say that's a pretty easy way to just move into. We'll do Beesbury quickly. He's uh, there's not much to say about him. But I just think it's worth pointing out that he's been here since well before the beginning, even. Um, and like uh, that, they show a gradual sort of. He's got a vague interest. He mainly seems to be in favor of the series and tradition. Um, but uh, th there's that one reference to when like he's struggling to even keep up with conversations and stuff. He's getting on, but then he like comes out of nowhere, sort of, to a lot of characters to absolutely defend 
the situation and like his little angry speech in episode nine was pretty good and then he gets killed and it was like oh oh well we're not getting any more of those he sat down too hard and died yeah and, that, and that's his story and it's just i guess that's part of it it's just like what a lame way to do all of that that, that death is so yeah, weird yeah there's there's something to say about that kind of sudden unexpected death that's done either by accident or a moment of passion by a character and this one it just doesn't hit it this one doesn't hit yeah, because I think it's too forced. It's, it feels so awkward. It he is. grabs him by his shoulders and says, Sit down! That he's just dead. You're like, what? what? It almost Sit like, down. It's, like, it's, like, it's almost like the kind of thing that you have happen in the background of another scene, where he, he's, he puts him down, accidentally hits his head on something, and like it takes a moment for everyone to even notice it. Like, oh shit, that just happened. And everyone's just kind of like stunned for a moment. But you need to do something that makes it... You know, you can have that Game of Thrones, like, oh shit, someone just died. Yeah. I, I like it as part of another show of the sort of mad struggle for the uh, instant time after Viserys' death in terms of the power vacuum that immediately forms because everyone needs to act really, really fast. So this sort of serves into being part of that chaos, but the way it ends up playing out is uh, esoteric, is how I would describe it. Like, I think Beesbury should probably die in the immediate aftermath, and that would be a good thing. Yeah, you know when he when he starts aggressively pointing out that he's like not going to go along with all of this. I like the idea of just building the tension to the point where the doors lock, and then Otto just starts asking him a few more questions about like how sure is he about this position that he has, and that we can all start to pick up like, oh, he's going to kill him, he's going to die, he's got to be careful I can, here. I can feed you as well. The and then further reinforce uh, the idea that you know uh, the small council has been stacked. Yeah. What were you going to say, Ladoons? I was going to say, like, you know, then Otto does a subtle nod to Kristen, and uh, and then, you know, he, he intentionally kills Lord Beesbury with maybe a, 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 a knife or a sword or a or, I'm or trying a to think chair. of it. It would, even be, have it would him be a... Take him away, quote-unquote, and then as they're walking away, you know, Breesby struggles a little bit, and then Cole tries to make it look like through that struggle that something goes wrong and he, you know, basically try and frame it so that it was Beesbury that actually got himself killed by trying to attack me or something like that. But, uh, there but, any, yeah, make it... You, I don't know, like... Use they, an they element of Kristen's, like, he's he's kind of changed in the way that he, you know, executes his, I, you know, his, his, his job and have him, you know, maybe a, a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, make it look like an accident sort of thing that he goes through with when he wouldn't have done that before, but this changed version of him will do that. They seem to be happy to display the other nobles that they execute, you know, hanging them in the court and in the courtyard. And I feel that if they could just do that and and say he was executed for treason, for high treason. I suppose um, it could, yeah. But well, I guess what I'm saying is that like there's no um, there's no plausible Kasma deniability for anybody in that room. I guess, and I'm just saying he could have made yeah. it so that it was a bit more for people in that room. But everyone saw that, and everyone concluded immediately, like, why did you just kill that old man? <laughs> it wasn't even. There was no like, oh, you struggled and something happened, which is what happens in episode uh, five, right? Like a lot of people are unclear on what the fuck happened, and so there's plausible deniability as to exactly how it all started and whether or not the princess was in trouble. But with Breezebury, it's just like, man, that was just you just killed him, okay? You simply must have it be a mess. You could have the doddering old man Breezebury make a run for it or something as he sees someone going to lock the doors. <laughs> I really expected yeah. him to trip on one of the small council balls that they have, <laughs> because there's a story <laughs> in the book where where um there are three different accounts of how Beesbury dies. One of them says that they put him in the black cells and he like froze to death, and the other one, another one's like um Kristen slit his throat with a dagger, and the third one, the mushroom one, which is always the best one, is that um he was pushed out a window. That would be tower. fucking hilarious if Krista just pushed him out of window. <laughs> no, no, he trips. Oh on, no, he, he trips fell. on a bowl and he falls out the window. That's, oh, that's, that's... slipped on a banana peel. Oh, energy. Dude, that... That's like the thing in the <laughs> Simpsons when the Tom Spider <laughs> slips on something and then falls into all of the mouse traps right below the courthouse. I'm on board with that. He's pretty falls into as a, a root gold machine as, you know. as a story that's told, but <laughs> probably worth not. He, f Dude, he this... fell out a window and landed on several swords. But this was their compromise. Yeah. Yeah. Kristen does push him out of the window onto the spikes below the building. Um, and yeah. I really hate to see it. I don't know because if the spikes would have really, you know. Like a level in Sonic the Hedgehog or something. There's <laughs> just spikes um, everywhere.
Beesbury the Hedgehog. <laughs> the Beesbury does sound wins. like a hedgehog name, though. It, it, it does is sound a like a pretty name. coin. It's a hedgehog. <laughs> Master of Rings. <laughs> Master of Rings. <laughs> the, the, ring, the, the Ring of the King. <laughs> hey, hey, gentlemen, unfortunately, I have to duck out. I was uh, very short on time for this one. And oh, so right. uh, I'll have to love you and leave you. I hope you have fun. Wish I could yeah. stay longer. But, uh, have a good one. Used. Thanks for popping All in. Right. Right. See you later. We'll no worries, guys. Catch us. We're still expecting uh, cameos from Nudrotic and Drinker. No idea when exactly, all right, folks? But excitement abound. Okay. Uh, who's next? Who do we go to from Beesbury? Such a well. Heavy let's look hitter. at our let's look at our handy dandy well, character mean, list here. Is now the time to actually talk about Allison? I guess we could. Yeah, because we we, we went on sort council. of a what could round out the small council with. Oh callers. yeah, that's a good idea. Actually. Oh yeah, that's we could move point. to Callis. Sure. Okay, well, I approve of this decision. Callis is uh, the head of the Valarian House mm -hmm. and. The Lord of Driftmark and the Lord of the S the Tides or whatever, a lot of lot of titles. Basically, the house that's like you know, we're pretty cool too, Targaryens. We even have dragons too. You guys think you're really cool, but we're really cool too. And uh, he's struggling to get things in place to maintain power, but also spends a lot of the season being frustrated that he's not given more help against the Triarchy that are fucking up his uh, his trade routes uh, over at Driftmark. So. What 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 is to be done of that? And uh, your know, war happens, and and uh, and it gets cleaned up with Damon. But then he's he loses uh, his daughter and his son through one of them just wanting to leave this the uh, all the political bullshit, and the other one actually just dying during childbirth. Or well, actually, we'll talk about that in a second. Lena's decision. <laughs> um, and so yeah, uh, he's like lost everything. He goes to. Just fight more for the for the uh, stepstones until he's wounded, and by the time he comes back, his brother's been killed trying to assert that uh, the viability of particular trueborns or not, and then he he um, declares for the blacks because I mean he didn't have much of a choice exactly. Uh, in terms of a smart didn't decision, even much of a choice. True. We'll talk about Rainice. Anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, I guess you know overall. I found the actor was pretty damn solid, and I'm quite interested in the character of Corlys Velaryon. The the uh, the line that I think particularly sums him up that we we quite enjoyed when we first saw it was the uh, history doesn't remember blood, it remembers names. Yeah, um, uh, yes. Yeah, I also like how um in the second episode he talks about how second sons have to earn their legacies. Yeah, that's a pretty good line that sums him up as well. He, uh, yeah, he he's very uh, passionate in terms of trying to get the what he believes to be the right shit to happen, and I don't even know. Like, it, it's funny because a lot of the things he says is in line with Damon, and it ends up working because he uh, he teams up with him for the Stepstone stuff. But uh, I think it's also just the fact that he, like, why why was he so put forward with with Damon in in episode one? It's like it's probably because he does believe in the uh, the rights of succession and stuff, and it's only once. He realizes, like, the people in line for his family to continue are bastards and not actually trueborns, that he's just like, you know what? It doesn't really matter as long as, as, long as the They're name endures. And I think one of his lines is, uh, what is this brief mortal life if not the pursuit of legacy? But, um, mm -hmm. That basically sums him up. Well, I mean, we can see that that's a huge driving force for so many of the decisions he makes and the, the, the other yeah. statements he makes as well. Especially and you know what? The, that's the a lot like Tywin as well. Yes. I mean, I mean, very very it. Makes it easy to see why he might have an affinity for Damon, because who's going to have a fucking legacy, good or bad, if not Damon? Or you mean just because he's going to make his mark no matter what? Because Damon, yeah, he's he's a, a very high profile figure. He's uh, yeah, he's a go getter. He's going to do things that are going to cause him to be remembered for better or for worse. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else to say about him. I liked him quite a bit, and I'm curious to see where he ends up in season two. Uh, I am too. Um, he is, uh, yeah, he's, uh, I, I like him quite a bit. I was about to say, there's not enough, there's not much clashing of him, even though he's, he clashes significantly throughout the season. None of it is, um, like, it doesn't cause any major events for me to dig into significantly, right? Like, he, uh, he clashes yeah, with Viserys a whole bunch, events... but they're more subtle and, and they move yeah. on from quite quickly. 
And um, the major event concerning him towards the end of the season is about him not being around. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah he's wounded and he might die, and everyone's like preparing like yo he might be dead. We need that to... was really yeah. an excellent choice on behalf of the writer to make it so because putting him in his death in question, then you have uh, Rainice basically through the love of her daughter who's died now, being like it should be her daughters that you know it passes to, not the illegitimate sons of some guy and Ra uh, Rhaenyra. And so, but the thing and is, it, if you do that, if you conclude that about Driftmark, and the if the crown was to actually, you know, conclude that as well, and what does it say about Rhaenyra's claim to the throne and her son's well, claim? You, you yeah. have that claim element, and you have that reinforcement of the reality of how this world works, where someone's about to die. They might not, but you got to be ready for him to die. So everyone's already starting to essentially make plans ready for him to die as it's just just the reality of, yeah exactly oh, but when yeah. viserys this dies is... and the small council has been plotting about it for years you're all up in arms <laughs> you've I think got to that's... be ready when this stuff happens because things yeah, exactly. move fast i think that's genuinely one of the bigger plot points of this show that's sort of like a subversion is as far as episode four otto has already decided like the series is dead and we've got a plan for it and it's like he won't die yep. for another 16 years it is a, it's that it's the reinforcement of how the world works. Yeah, like, uh, kind of been, I, I think that's part of it is the series not dying is what uh, stretches everything out and complicates everything, even though for as long as he was alive, uh, peace reigned pretty much. Like, the second he dies, everything falls apart. And, uh, yeah, similar for Corliss. Well, that was one of his, picture, well, tides. I mean, we talked about Lionel. You you just mentioned you know the the reigning with peace and you know that line that he shares with Lionel about you know how when Viserys is you know older and he's in his room with Lionel and he's he kind of lamenting in a way that he never had any grand battles or epic victories or anything like that and Lionel's like well you know it's not that bad really you were a king of peace and that's that's really kind of great you know I think he even did. says eventually Man, I'm excited to get to Viserys yeah Lionel's <laughs> all of Lionel's responses in that scene are all just perfect logical things to say and i think at one point the series is like you're right as usual <laughs> you have this like errant he, he's thought like about kind how of annoyed that lionel's not indulging him in his yes. emotions yeah. yeah because he's just having thoughts and like lionel's just like yeah but you know this thing would be worse Those he's thoughts like, yeah, are i wrong. know i know yeah. but well, you know, I know, i'm just saying yeah we we don't want to delve too deep like into the it because the last therapist yeah to validate my emotions <laughs> being logical he, yeah, he really just, he, Lionel was really great. He really cared. He's a good person. He didn't want to see his uh, king, who's pr his, his friend, most likely. He just didn't want to see him, uh, you know, down in the dust. How unfortunate. One of his sons is causing the biggest strife and destruction of the entire realm, but the other one killed him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> How many God headaches damn. over... You don't pick Arwen. your family, do you? Well, actually, that's... Uh, since we're, I think we're good with Corliss, if we can't even Well, in the Game of this... Thrones, sometimes, yeah, you do pick your family. Yeah. Because he's not on this list, but I want to talk about him now, because it makes sense what we just said. But Laris Strong makes a big impression in his first episode. Um, wasn't sure about their choice a little bit later on in terms of just... <laughs> Um, why? Uh, it's, so why? like yeah let's start with the with how he's introduced right he's just this guy who's just like hey i'm around my foot's all fucked so i don't really do much fighting so i'll just have a little chat with everybody and you're like okay that's chill all right and then of course there's a lot about a lot he meets up with um with allison and he's talking about a flower and he says an outsider among the natives by all rights it shouldn't be thriving here such mystery while looking at her like, what are you, what it was, what? And it's just like, that's more of a declaration, I think, at that point of his intentions. He sees her as a great opportunity to get behind and help in the forms of helping himself. He's, uh, he's like, she's like a resource to be plundered in terms of, uh, she's got a lot more power than she realizes and he can help her, sort of thing. Um, they have a conversation that is one of the many examples of how strong the dialogue is in this show. Uh, I would have talked about it in the different streams I've done on Gary's channel, but hey, we didn't do it here, so I'm going to re-repeat myself a little bit. But um, he talks with her a whole bunch. We find out that he's been basically feeding her information as a master of whisperers sort of thing. And um, he says, the king had an audience with my father, and uh, she says he attempted to resign his post. As I thought as much, his honor's always been a milestone around his esteemed neck. Interesting you said attempted. And she says, uh, yeah, my lord husband refused to accept. And he says, ah, so he fell short of confessing my brother's transgressions. Basically, like, 
it's like two conversations happening and once he's picking up a lot more information than is actually being provided necessarily or in an explicit way yeah. because he's a really smart guy that's the impression i got straight away you're saying For my shrewd, yeah. my husband refused to accept the resignation uh laris put together immediately is like oh so he didn't tell him the truth then because if he had like yeah, it would be yeah. chaos and then she's like yeah no and um yeah and then he points out to her that like Oh, well, she points out that if it were Otto, he would have told the king the truth. Uh, because, it, like, she implies he's not, he's not biased like Lionel is. And then he was like, well, yeah, he would be, he would be partial. And then she was like, yes, but he'd be partial to me. Which is a, uh, a fun moment for Alison, I think, <laughs> at that point in the show. She's, she's, yeah, when she's finally admitting that she's When she's saying it out, yeah, when she says it out loud into yeah. someone else, yeah. And then she says, is there no one in King's Landing to take my side? Like, hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and so, and then he has his big old speech that's one of my favorite parts in the whole season about what it means to have children. Oh, yeah. Legacy, uh, you know. About how family is bullshit. Basically, yeah. yeah. A um, good like, like, version of the usual things people say about family and legacy and lineage. It hurts I, uh, doubly to hear him talk that way about family when his dad's Lionel, who's just absolutely. This this is the thing. Bear. It's what a great guy. It's a speech well, I, I think love. So from, I don't... from Laris's point of view, how strong can be like the biggest chads in the world, but Lionel is so diplomatic and reserved, and he's just such a nice guy that he's kind of held back from experiencing the power they could be, you know, uh, granting themselves. This... This is like a this is the good version of the speeches that antagonists and villains give in poorly written media where they're like, oh, yeah, being evil is great. I love being evil. Being evil means you can, you know, you just be strong and everything. Yeah, evil is great. I sure do love being evil. You should be evil, too, because there's no such thing as good and evil. It's this is like kind of the, the good version of that. This speech is like hardcore ties into one of the major themes of the series, like they, in um, terms of the perspective on legacy and how like a lot of the characters pursue legacy through their children and then they'll go on to be it's great leaders the... or... and and all of the ways that they sort of get led awry by those uh feelings one of the times to compliment the not only his speech in terms of his writing but also all the visuals they choose right so um mm -hmm. so he he talks basically about how children are just a disaster waiting to happen they're a complete almost paradox he's like they're they're a weakness um a futility through them you imagine you cheat the great darkness of its victory you'll persist forever in some form or another which is already just like god it's so true some for a lot of people children is a way that they see themselves like they haven't they can't be defeated by death now because they have they, they've got an investment of themselves moving on sort of thing yeah like um, an immortality like project tyrant. yeah and uh god, that's yeah and he says uh as if they would keep you from the dust, but for them you surrender what you should not. You may know what is right, um, but love stays the hand. Love is a downfall. Best to make your own way through life unencumbered, if you ask me. Like, and while he's saying all of that, you see Lena's corpse, which is a result of the childbirth going all wrong. And she, so it's just like, yeah, her kid killed her, in a sense, right? You, you know, if you want to get nice and broad. Lionel's corpse, along with Harwin, it's just like, yep, yeah, the kid killed them. Um, Viserys just staring at his ring, or his, his wife's ring, which he mm. said in episode 3 he believes his pursuit of getting more heirs is what killed Emma. And he's like, and this is the thing I think he's gradually realizing as well is, is, is um, especially after episode 4, or 5, no it is 4, where he realizes Alison was set up to be with him, it wasn't, it wasn't like as genuine as he thought. And uh, that's another thing man, we'll get to Viserys soon enough, but when he calls uh, Alison Emma in episode, I think, eight or oh, no, seven, yeah, sorry, he's, go he's going to bed seven, and he says, yeah, I'm going to bed, general. Emma. I was just like, oh, man. He never stopped absolutely loving Emma. And um, then his final word being, my love. Yeah, you know who he's talking about. Um, oh. Especially, yeah, well, again, I'm bleeding into him, but I can't resist pointing out now. When, uh, when Rhaenyra comes to talk to him in episode eight and he says, my only child, do we? Oh, God. Like that's the that's the kid he had with uh with Emma. He's he, yep. he barely even connects with uh Aegon Aemond. Uh, uh crazy. Do we even <laughs> see him ever interact with Helena? I don't I don't think that's the thing. Uh those kid Aegon makes that pretty clear. I think it's part of the result of Aegon's personality is that Viserys wasn't yeah. um, a good enough dad to him, but obviously he was falling apart, so 
uh, it's literally difficult. yeah but Aegon was like you know Viserys never liked me like oh damn um but yeah so you know uh Laris is like a super villain after one episode and really strong in terms of understanding him and then later on he's still doing conniving things that are that are clever and he's still serving the high towers for the most part but then they have the feet scene and it's kind of like okay all right because he you, has a you club wonder foot. is that it, that's i don't i'm not ready to draw that link maybe i don't know if that was what they were going for it might be i i think it's just i i i don't know what to think that was just so it's kind of the thing I brought that up before about how necessary. if you saw like Palpatine just pissing all over the floor, it's like you can do that. <laughs> like, oh shit! But it's like force lightning; you can't stop once you stop. <laughs> it's uh, it, it, what I'm getting at is like it's something. It's like it doesn't not make sense. Yeah, you can have someone who has a fetish and and he wants to have something in return for the information he provides. It's like, but you didn't have to do that. You chose to do that. You wanted to make yeah. him a bit weird. It it could have been yeah, the universe question. It's like you're directing the question at the writers. It's a question for Doyle, not for Watson. It's like, why did you do this, Mr. Writers? Yeah. What, what did you feel this accomplished? Uh... Yeah, so I'm working on all my videos for the episodes I haven't talked about yet. And when it comes to that scene, it's like I feel the need to analyze it in some way to provide some insight. And it's like, it's just a dude jacking a defeat. <laughs> Like, what, what am I really supposed to add uh, to the conversation? Yeah, is this supposed to give me some insight into <laughs> his character or power thing? I don't know. Like, so there's a gross kind of idea that he might be like, like they're giving him a fetish that's connected to his disability. And it's like, oh, cool. That's so great that you wrote that. It's really, because you know how probably... crippled people really think crippled people are hot. Yeah, that's, that's so it, clever. It, it you know, it's, with... it's a very well understood phenomenon. Probably worth a voice. Avoiding. You could have given him any other fetish because that would just—it makes people wonder. It's like, is that why you did that? That's weird. Like, and maybe... he could have just wanted to fuck her, and she could have showed him a tit or something or something. You could right? have done that. She yeah. was using that tit. Well, because some people boom, have said please. that um, people have said like it, it's it's good because it shows <laughs> Allison's like gradual sort of appreciation of her own sort of values. And it's like, yeah, but it didn't have to be feet. Yeah, it didn't <laughs> yeah. have to be <laughs> done in this so way. Over. We have to show that even evil bastards have needs. Like we don't gotta sh see him doing the deed on the screen. Like, why? It's uh, I, you makes you wonder. Well, with the rest of that episode, you do wonder if the writer was just like, is this just like this is the weird Game of Thrones thing? We have the bombastic thing at the end that we'll get to, and we have the the foot thing with the jerk in it inside of it. First off, don't do that. It's gonna get really. I mean that, mm, but. I mean, that's going to be, when you stand, it's going to be rubbing all over you, and it's going to get cold. It's just terrible. Don't do that. But Your man. Your going to get all crusty? Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. That. It's just Nobody like, wants. you know, he's going to be like, this feels great. And then a minute later, he's going to stand up. You're like, oh, it's like, it's all sticky and cold now. And it's all, over. uh, no. Why did I do that? Uh. So, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's, that's essentially, you don't see much more of him after that. And I was just like, man. I thought he was really awesome, but then I was just like, "That's just strange." But okay. Now he now uh, uh, now he's like the foot guy character, you know, where he's offering people bargains that are almost it's... not exactly what they want. But then then he's the feet guy. That's what. Yeah, that's it. It's it's like in my oh, own God. head, he's pursuing power, influence, and just a general safety for his own self. But maybe eventually he's gonna have like he has that view on children. So you wonder, it's like, so what is it about for you? What is your ultimate thing? Is it just you? Do you believe that once is you're gone, he... you are gone? But then it's like, well, it's all for feet. <laughs> it all comes. I mean, it all comes down Most to feet. Really. Goals. <laughs> Most it's noble all of goals. Most noble of goals. When I said that I wanted to understand this man's soul, that's not what I meant. You know what? Well, listen, people, scene, this like, man, why did you do this, Laris? Listen, this people guy, he did not toe the line. Oh. Oh, God. Boo. 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 People spend a lot of time trying to figure out what Littlefinger's motivations are in the books. Sorry if I'm being boring and talking about irrelevant that's right. crap, but, um... No, I think it's a good argument here that no, he also is motivated by feet. <laughs> <laughs> Little feet. Little yeah. feet. It's yeah. It's and if so, like, what? Like, oh, you're being too harsh. You're like, well, no, it's that is clearly an end point. He, what is he gaining from Allison? Is like, well, I get to wag to her feet. It's like, 
Okay. Like, again, is it just like a power thing? Is that what they want? That's what I hope it is. I really, well, yeah. He's he's a, like, he's he, clearly he an. Go ahead. Loves that he can do that to the queen of the seven kingdoms. I'm it's sure. A, yeah. It's an interesting display of power to know that you could wank in front of her to the feet, and she is, is she acquiesces to, to it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, he seems like a character who. I mean, honestly, he's very damaged, and you don't know why he thinks the way he is. He seems very broken on the inside. I think, honestly, he just needs time to heal. I get it. I don't know if anyone else. I don't get it. No, I, I, heal. I, I, heal. I got it. I Thank got you. It. Moving on. All right. Next character. Next character. We, oh, Allison. Oh, Let's talk about Allison? her feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Allison, she's got yeah, great feet. feet. To be fair... <laughs> You, you gotta say they were pretty good feet. This is fine, you know. Want to say that? I mean, I they were. Don't have... the, do you think they got <laughs> the actual actress's feet, or do you no, think they used a feet. foot double? Like, they feet. Got no, a foot, it, was a, it was a foot no. double. Yeah. Foot Listen, li set me free. <laughs> look, the 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 foot, the actress that they got for the feet. It's they're like the she was like the dinosaurs in the Flintstones when they always in the scene looking at the camera and saying, "It's a living." I get it. You're a foot model. Take the pay, take take the paycheck for your beautiful feet. As far as feet go, I don't know. Done feet. Uh, Do you think? Mm, no, carry on. So she's uh, just a good old archetype of she's a super nice, friendly, trying trying to do the right thing, get along in the world person until she gets like sort of broken down into basically just being a cog in the machine of the evil that is the Game of Thrones world. Mm. Um, yeah, think... compared to the last character, she's definitely a step up. Best, nice, best ex uh, exemplified, I would say, by the scene with uh, the girl that Aegon, like, raped, and she approaches at first with what's more familiar, like, you know, what's your name, it's like, you okay, she hugs her, she's like, I'm so sorry this happened, blah, 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 but then, like, she starts to turn in that conversation gradually into just being like, you know, if you were to say anything, a lot of people wouldn't even believe you, they'd think that you're just trying to destroy his reputation. You know what happens to girls who do that? It's just like, oh... Oh yeah. no. Um and I think there was supposed to be I a really parallel. Love that scene. Oh, I think it's a great scene. I think a parallel is supposed to be drawn between how much she hated um Rhaenyra for sort of fucking around and uh you know, drinking the, the moon tea to cover up for it and stuff when she is facilitating all of that to cover up for her son. Yep. Like, uh, it's, yeah. It's she's... also there's so much going on there because like Alicent is basically presented with herself in that scene. You know, a, a woman who has been doomed to this life just because a man wanted to fuck her. Yeah. Um... Right. A Alison's story is how she is changed by being entered into this system. Yeah, she's chewed up by like everyone else. Yeah. She yeah. And suddenly she is now her. propagating that system that yes. so thoroughly changed her life. Absolutely, a product of her upbringing and that kind of yeah. Uh, and it's um, it's interesting too because she really was fine with Rhaenyra getting the throne for a long time in this show, uh, even up to I think literally like up to the last, uh, well the last two episodes. She's like, uh, she says you'll make a great queen in the when she toasts it. At that point, you might be wondering if it's a lie or not. But like, if you go back to earlier episodes, she says, I don't think um, it is. yeah, yeah. She, I she's think there's definitely. Yeah, there's a part of that legitimately wishes things could be kind of like the way they were in terms of the relationship. But, you know, when you start having more and more skin in the game, things... Well, there's, that, there's that great moment where um, Rhaenyra talks about how she hates going on the tour to find a husband when it just means that she's going to be locked up in some uh, tower or castle producing ears for yeah. some lord. While talking <laughs> to like, Alison, oh, whose whole life is whoops. just that especially in that episode where you see her in bed with Viserys just looking like a zombie she's just staring and I think by the way he notices that and that's where he starts to put, put it together pleased yeah he like reaches for her hand to and like pushes her face towards him to manufacture some sense of affection yeah because it's all it's just dead at that point she's she's not able to put up the lies anymore and that's the thing he I want to thinking, clarify I wish you I, I wish you liked my feet I think um she is <laughs> like she does care about him but not like that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely. Also, it's, it is a cool dude, and but also he's a gross old man. Well, yeah. If it's, yeah. If a there's an element of gross old man. Yes, it's like. Yeah. yeah, you get that sense that their relationship is what kind of sort of naturally will develop when you have a really nice guy like Viserys, 
who is very physically frail and unsightly, but he's a good person and you've been with him a long time. Yeah, and uh, if you remember that that scene, she's called in by a handmaiden because she sleeps in a different room to Viserys, and it's like, yeah. you know, got to do the thing. She's like, it's late. Like, yeah, but yep. got to be got to be producing <laughs> is that's your job, essentially. Like, it's uh, just a sad reality. But then, yeah, she goes from being that sort of captured captured person in the tower producing is to uh, actually exerting her power. And uh, eventually controlling shit with her dad. That's that's what happens. Yeah, I really love. That's like the probably my favorite facet of episode nine is the like competition between Otto and Allison to secure the heir. Yeah. Um. I really like the scene where she, uh, Damon and Rhaenyra first come back in episode eight, and uh, Allison in the room. You got um. It starts out, I think, with uh, just a line where Rhaenyra wants uh, Viserys to see a maester she trusts, not the King's Landing one. And I think that's funny, because that happens all the time in Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, I think, where characters are like, our maester would, would solve the problem, your maester sucks, that sort of thing. Like, everyone always <laughs> assumes that. We've the best maester, your maester fucking sucks. Um, yeah, and she says, like, it's been so long since we were gr uh, granted the joy of your presence, and they're like... Uh, though not long enough to merit a greeting. It's like, yeah. This is just this awkward tension between them. The last time they fucking talked to each other, she slashed her arm open. And that they even show that she's got a scar from it that she tries to hide yeah. when she comes in the room. Uh, yeah, and then, and, and oh god, the, the again, the dialogue where she's like, um, I'm sure the queen had pressing business. Uh, what can either of us know about ruling a kingdom? Which is like an insult, because it's obviously mm -hmm. the series is ruling, not her. Why would you imply otherwise? Um, and she says, like, I'm a mere steward of his will and wisdom. And then Damon says, and how is that wisdom expressed? Blinks, wheezes, surprised he could remember his own name, or if you could. Like, oh. such a great little bob, just being That's, like, uh, yeah. you even remember the name of your husband, sort of thing. And that's the thing, uh, it's their perception of Alison and her interaction with Viserys, when we know, because we've seen her whole story, She's trying, all right? She's, it's a little she's, bit more complicated than that. Yeah, she's yeah. forced into this position. She's done pretty much the best she can in a lot of circumstances, and she still cares about him. She's st like, she shows a genuine sorrow and agony when she, when he's just suffering. Um, and I really appreciate in episode 9 where she sees him, he's been, like, wrapped, ready for a burial, I guess, and she's just crying. Like, yeah, because he was a good man. That's what everyone seems to agree on in this well, show. Well, and it, um, I think that Allison's embodies it's it's basically the embodiment of, of one of those core themes about the clashing of uh personal you know like emotions personal investment in other people and the rules and nature of the world and the obligations imposed on people and the expectations like that's her constant battle is essentially that uh that battle between herself and like the role that she's expected to fill and then gradually sort of figuring out how she's going to occupy that role um that seems to me like a clear example of that, right? That there's all of these objectives in her mind that she has to achieve in terms of securing the lineage for her kids and for the high towers and whatnot. But at the same time, it's like, well, she still she still has compassion for uh for um Viserys. Well, a general how... compassion too, right? She's the one that holds Otto back with a lot of the decisions That's she true. wants to make. That's mm. exactly. That's right. She's uh yeah, pretty much. In how vigorously she expresses like her opinions relating to the upcoming crisis and stuff, like her her talk with Aegon, you are the challenge and that sort of thing, I think gives her a lot of insight into how resentful she is of the position she's been put in. Yeah. Well, and I think um, like throughout the season, she seems to go back and forth between gaining and losing agency. Like she that gains it and then sort of loses it, gains it and loses it, never really fully gaining a level of agency and total control over her life. So in that sense, that's uh, pretty unfortunate for her. Like, her circumstances are seeming... I, I think that I'm pretty sure there's, like, a line explicitly, right? Where it's like, well, she's the queen, but what does that even matter, right? She's totally trapped. You have a really like, great um, power all. struggle example with uh, when Viserys is still king and Rhaenyra is still on the council. You have... They're talking about the Brackens and Blackwoods fighting over. They make the most insignificant issue ever. It's like they've moved their uh, their boundary for their like <laughs> garden one inch or some shit. It's, it's one of the smallest things you can imagine. 
and uh, Alison says, like, isn't this something that should be hang handled by the local, like, lords or whatever? And then they're like, oh, well, there's a, there's a the lord isn't really handling it as his son now. And she's like, yeah, well, he's still a Tully, Grove so he should be handling tully. it. Yeah. And so it's like, the okay, settled. Tully. And then Rhaenyra's like, well, Brackens and Blackwoods, you know, they'll kill each other over anything. So uh, actually, we no, should we, should, we should look into this and we should find out from the locals where the line actually rests and then figure it out from there. They Basically, might just take gardening very seriously. It just comes across as like Allison prescribes X and then she's like, no, Y. And it's just like, just to see which one's power overdoes the other because one is the queen, but the other one is the next in line to the throne. So, and uh, yeah, Allison and her have that battle until Rhaenyra realizes her stock is so low and that everybody uh, knows that her kids aren't legitimate that she leaves for Dragonstone instead. But doing that means that Otto and... Allison, as much as you can go cynical, right? Like they dig their claws into the the crown to the point where they control everything. But at the same time, they're just trying to keep Viserys alive and not in pain and do have to make decisions for him. Well, it's kind of a really terrible move from Rhaenyra, right? Kind Leaving of. the capital in the hands of people who may not have her best interests at heart. Yeah, well, she... she knows she really don't have her best interests at heart. Yeah, yeah, it's but at the same time, you don't blame her for not wanting to be in that environment. No. Yeah, she's and, and 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 I think that there's actually something to compliment about it that she ends up raising her family at Dragonstone, and her sons are really up upright, sort of honorable dudes who are trying yeah, their best like, to prepare yeah. for their roles. Meanwhile, Alicent's sort of corruption from Otto, right? The speech she gives to Aegon is very similarly echoed by the speech Otto gave to her. Yeah. And uh, what has it done? Like, she has two psychopathic sons, basically. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, she she's failed in that. So as a, to as galvanize a, them. I mean, Viserys failed them as well, but as you said, it, he was falling apart. He had, an, he had a, yeah, a very, very <laughs> Pretty good excuse. obvious excuse, yeah. <laughs> um, he, he wasn't as good at spanking him as she but was. It's because um, she was so focused on the broader objectives like the and and you know that specifically right the objectives here of we've got to get Aegon to be the next in line like that's the objective and we have to work towards that that there was like a total lack of consideration for the fact that her kids are people and that she, and that she needs to raise yeah, them into good people yep. and, and she needs to be present in their lives and actually sort of consider the fact that they're people and not pawns to be moved around on a chest well not um, not just specifically so people but like people kids, being bargaining you know? chips yeah exactly she but gave, how do you motivate a kid right. to, who already lives in luxury and gets everything that they want, essentially? How do you motivate them further into well, starting to work on responsibilities and things? It's not a necessarily easy thing to do because kids are, you know, kids are kids. Well, it's, 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 it's interesting to con yeah, contrast them, as was mentioned earlier, to our Rhaenyra's kids, who I get the impression that they feel that they need to be prepared and ready and, like, because it's not really a guaranteed thing because of the fact that, that like, because yeah. of... Uh, they know. The because they know, the yes. They know that, and they know um, that they have to work harder. It's not a guarantee. They have to yeah. become, like, really good people. They need to become... In, uh, yeah. In episode eight, we see how dedicated Jaceres is to learning how to speak High Valyrian, right? And he's doing that because he's aware of the challenges he faces due to his parentage. Like he needs to work harder to feel to make people feel, feel like he's earned his position. Whereas yeah. Aegon is like he doesn't work for anything. And he's got Completely. all the best. Yeah, if you you know, he's he's yeah. called Aegon. He looks like I think getting him that crown, the 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 sword, the and sworn in by the blah blah, blah. like like he's got and he's a firstborn son. He has it's all like, the signs well, of legitimacy, yeah. all the like portents of a decent king, whereas Deceris is like he, he's put the work in. You pair the you pair his appearance and his upbringing with just how he's he's always he's essentially a hedonist and at a young age you just you're not responsible enough to temper that or moderate that and he's just you see where that leads he's essentially super duper spoiled and given so much and he he's not well you could go you know, limited and much further and say he's a he's a horrible disgusting piece of shit right the, oh yeah yeah absolutely yeah he did do some rapes yeah oh, i'm not even talking about that i'm talking about the almost encouragement and enjoyment of watching children kill each other yeah yes. that too yeah that he's clearly not he needed a yeah he's ruined he, uh, i think that's what they wanted yeah. 
he'll have us know at that point he's like he's a fucking lost cause he needs um, serious he clearly so has that... no self-respect either i think a lot of that came from alicent's demeanor towards him because yeah, like... alice very much her impression of children is that they play their part because that was her thing yeah she just, and she did she had to do her thing he she didn't know part, so she's passing yeah. that on to aegon and it's really really unhealthy she didn't know how to take that message and tailor it to aegon yeah exactly yeah and uh, yeah as you, as it was mentioned like jaceris seems to be ready to to take responsibility even to the point where war starts to break out he wants to get involved immediately and help make sure his mum's will is sort of taken care of while Aegon, on the day of being coronated as king, he's like, "Leave me alone! I don't want. I don't want to get it. Just go away. I hate all of this. It's all horrible." I don't want. I don't want. It feels like vaguely broken by the all the pressures of the responsibilities and stuff. You yeah, and they that. that's work. Yeah, responsibilities are are, are work, and they're you know, it, it's a task you have to be dutiful at, and you know it's a job, and he's not had one of those it seems it he's a think total he's been, hedonist he's been getting badgered with this sort of thing from Allison since he was young as can be and it's led him to like rebel hard against it to a point where he's, he just wants to blow it all off to do something else just hedonism it up um which kind of is well is there anything else anyone wants to say about, about Allison? Well, I, I kind of wanted to talk about um her relationship with her other kids mainly Helena so Allison like didn't sign up for any of this like it, it, she was just kind of forced into it by her dad um and then suddenly you know 15 years later you see her um in a scene with her crazy daughter um who is like signposted very heavily to be autistic and it's like she has no fucking clue how to interact with her daughter and like you can see she's yeah. kind of putting in the effort but like she it almost really comes across as like, dance. yeah, this is just how she is. I'll just go through the motions and, you know. The, She's not it's... actually listening to her, I think. Yeah. She's, um, oh God, I feel, I do feel bad for Allison in terms of just like, God, it's, how much of this is her fault versus just her life and everyone around crafting it? Because like, she desperately wants them all to be prepared for all the horrors that she's been told are on the way. But simultaneously, like, they need a mum, but she's so busy trying to protect them that she's not mothering them properly. And, uh, oh, um, yeah. Even, like, Helena miss... is weird with it, right? Yeah, you, you, yeah. You gonna say something else, or? Um, <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't talk about how, um, like, she certainly feels resentment towards Rhaenyra, because Rhaenyra can, like, fuck around. She gets to fuck Harwin for the three bastards. Alicent's been a slave to the system where, like, Viserys owned her, and, like, she had to raise his children. She didn't really care. Um, oh, maybe she did care, but she, it's not what she wanted out of life. We hear in episode four, she talks about, you know, she admires the romance. She I, she idealizes, you know, all that, that shit. She doesn't want to be married to an old, disgusting dude with a body that's falling apart. Um, but Rhaenyra gets to basically do whatever she wants. And so... Um, Alison becomes very resentful towards Rhaenyra because of that, when really, like, it's not Rhaenyra's fault that she's doing what she can in the system as well. Like, it's just how they're both reacting to it. Um, yeah, that's a good way to describe yeah. it. They react to their situations in a different way because they're different people. Yeah, and as a result, Alison, like, places her anger towards Rhaenyra instead of, you know, the system that she's now a part of. She gets so uh, spicy as well as time goes on. The, um... You keep trying, Seleno. Sooner or later, you may get one that looks like you. Like, Ooh. damn, dude. Um, well, I, I... <laughs> that ten-year gap does uh, significant changes for Allison. Like, she goes from being a puppet to being a puppeteer to a degree. Uh, it's, it's it's a really nice Even just transition our, for that. Our introduction back to her is uh, Rhaenyra immediately after childbirth being like summoned to uh, because Allison wants to check the hair. child. Yeah. Check the hair immediately. Yeah, she says to have one child like that is a mistake. Three is an insult to honor, decency, and the arrangement you sought for her. Sort of, it's like she's at a wit's fucking end that this is all happening. It's absolutely insane. And the series has that thing about um, that like the a stallion and a black bear. And I I just like her response to his his hypothetical is so obviously abstract. And then she's just like, "Did you see it happen? 
Did you see? Did you see the act? And he's just like, "Fuck sake. Hates it. He's like, "Stop." <laughs> yeah. Uh. Well, we're almost at the series, I suppose. We're still not there yet. We're building. All right. He's pay off. We'll have he's to save boy. the last half of this episode to talk about yeah. Viserys. Uh. Yeah. She's. Uh. I think she's a really strong and interesting character, and I'm curious how far she's going to go as the story. Yes. Ends up same for Rhaenyra. Yeah. Course. There's. Likewise. Because you see in her face when we have Footman, and he, you know, the, he does some very unsavory things, and she's like, "Oh shit!" Like, ugh. yeah, she. Like, that's I mean, this did help me, but ugh. interesting comparison. She's like terrified when she realizes that Laris killed Harwin and Lionel. However, like the next episode, she's like awkward with him, and then the next episode where he walks up to her and he's like, "I, you know, you want an eye? I, I understand. It's like I can make that happen." Then she's like, "No, no, that's not necessary." Yeah, can you but... fucking chill? <laughs> that's, not, that's, not, that's not even it in, in that scene that she's gone to the point where she's like, I don't want that, but I'm going to call on you at some point. Like it's uh, basically coming around to the idea is like at first she's like, oh, shocking, horrifying. I would never want you. Oh, gosh, you're just too, all the way over to. All right. Yeah, actually, oh, yeah. let's keep you in my pocket. You're going to be useful. I get shit done. She says uh, your devotion has not gone and gone unnoticed. So. Uh, which, yeah, you know, the feet thing. I guess that's a small price to pay to have someone who can just kill anybody for you at any point. That's insane. Like, if you to have that power over people just because just because you have feet. I mean, everyone has feet. You could, but still, wow. Some feet kind are uglier than others, right? That's how it works. Absolutely. I can't Some imagine if a series has great feet. You know. What if his feet were the the like the perfect? Yeah, there was just the one part of it, it was really awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we kind of almost fully covered Aegon there, so I don't know if there's anything else you guys yeah, want to say true. on him. May as well round him up as well. Uh, um, yeah, he's a he's a he's a right bastard, a terrible person. Uh, and then he gets a taste for power, and it seems like he likes it. Oh shit! Yeah, I uh, really like how before then he like clearly knows that he's a bad idea to be king. Like yeah. he's like that's we shouldn't do that. No, I one think he just he just doesn't king. want it. It's work yeah, and responsibility rats. when he'd rather go around fucking people and watching these yeah, terrible he fights to be well and aware of the fact that snorting Rhaenyra cocaine. Is like probably way better an idea because like she's been raised to rule. She like from the beginning, like she's taken it rather seriously since episode three or four, uh, four I think. Um, whereas Aegon's never really taken it seriously. He just wants to fuck around with impunity. Um, and then, yeah, he gets up on that platform, and the crowd cheers for him. And he's like, "Ah, ah, yeah, they I love you." Think me. that was, at, um, yeah. yeah, look at this attention. Look at this. Yeah, do you think that's adoration power or adoration more so? I think it's mostly. I, I think it's like a starstruck kind of thing, like being on the stage in front yeah. of a whole bunch of people who are cheering. I think because he's always pretty much gotten his way anyway, so I'm sure he doesn't mind being able to make more things happen. But he's never been in a situation where he is the focus of such a huge amount of people who are cheering him on, who are, you know, who, who are, he's, he's like, a, he feels like a rock star in that moment, essentially. And actually being there and hearing it and seeing it, just sort of like, it, it clicks something in his brain and he's like, all right, this, imagine what I can do with this now. Yeah, this and it makes you worry good. because a person with all of his actions and history with that level of power, who knows what will happen in season two with him, you know? Uh, and an, an aspect of yeah, go ahead. For those who've seen oh, Game of Thrones, when Joffrey gets to be king, he's like most people haven't even seen the show are aware of Joffrey being this like absolute monster, and he's yeah, he's like the boy king, and he gets to do all kinds of horrible shit. So you wonder if Aegon will be kind of a. Uh... It's funny. I was about to say a repeat of it, but it's more so he comes before. So Russell Crowe, yeah, but ran George, into George the, wrote ran it into the afterwards. Castle. Like it kind of is a repeat in that way. Well, there's, there's loads of parallels with uh, Season 1 of Game of Thrones. There's so many different storylines that are kind of done again, but with tweaks to the characters. So well, you you, you mean results. like the the um, royal family member who has three bastards, and one of them is raised to be heir of the throne, and then, yeah, yeah no, it, it's, it's basically just the same plot elements, but shuffled around a bit. I think, yeah, because George likes to do the whole history sort of thing, but... Um... I just oh, think yeah. it's it's kind of neat as well, right? Because like the one of the biggest scenes that was tense as all hell was when Aemon has his eye cut out, and they all have that big old discussion. Yeah, it's, that um, was super tense. It's really reminiscent of uh, when Tarantino Joffrey got bitten by uh, yeah uh, Nymeria. It's it's like kind of exactly thing. And there's some yeah, there's some dialogue that's even repeated over, and it's just like yep, yeah, there's uh, 
all the similar dynamics and it's just like a prelude to how everything is going to get worse and worse until it's just there's a first blood that gets drawn i think game One of thrones the... you could argue it's ned getting killed that makes everything definitive like we're having war now there's no no turning back uh, with this show obviously it's a, a death at the end there is an element of Aegon that I think it's almost like he's the he's the bad version of what a lot of us would likely be or want to be in the sense that you are born into an incredibly luxurious and privileged position in the world. And you want to enjoy that without any sense of the, the incredible stress, danger and responsibility that comes with actually ruling there's an element of like like me like if I was in that world I'd want to live in the castle and have all the you know food and medical care and you know, access to knowledge and books and tournaments and training and teachers and stuff like that but I I don't really want to like rule a country and all the stuff and, and, and the insane stakes that come along with that like that that's not me so e Egon's like or Egon's like a, a bad version of that he's that kind of person but they only pursue selfishness and they don't care about other people and everything's just for them and they're just spoiled rotten and terrible people um super chat just came in saying please go into Aegon's scene after you're no son of mine i assume they're referring to when it's the only time i think that you get a little bit of humanity from him you don't get a lot throughout the show but when he's like all i've ever done is everything you've asked me and it's never enough and he's like crying in front of uh allison basically i think that's just the show's way of telling us that yeah he's destroyed because uh he has goals, he has interests, none of them align with what his parents actually want. He tries to appease them and give them what they want, but they're never happy, and it's drawn him into just all kinds of exploring different things that have led him to insane depravity, basically. He's at the point of just saying, fuck it, I don't care anymore. Yeah. Uh, which sits in stark contrast to the uh, bastard children, which I think was done on purpose, right? The true-borns are much more worrying while the uh, the bastards like seem like they probably yeah. make good kings um, george does this quite a bit when he like poses the people who fit the criteria of the system actually being way worse suited to doing to, to fulfilling their roles than the people who clearly don't fit the criteria like how the most noble honorable characters in the main books are like brienne who is not a knight because she's a woman and then uh like the, the most you know, extolled knights are the worst people, like Gregor, Amory, yeah. Morch, that sort of it, uh, vibe. Sort of highlights the absurdity of the system itself, yeah. doesn't it? And like the people who really ought to have that, who who would who would take on positions of power with the responsibility necessary to to wield that power are the people who aren't going to get it. And instead, it's going to be people who are clearly unsuited to these roles because of the rules and the customs of this world. Yeah. All right, well, that's it for Aegon. So, we got a grand old choice here. We can move up to one of the other kids, or we could maybe... Do we want to, yeah, knock out the kids? Because they're sort of, you know, related. I don't know if it's better that, to yeah, do way, the parents or first or not, you know? Like, because we can knock out Damon and Rhaenyra next thing, or not. Well, what they do you want to both... talk about Aegon, though? Sorry? I wonder if there's anyone more minor that we can, you know, scrub out quickly. Um, oh, well, Lena and Lenor, I guess. Those oh, were yeah. just yeah. sort of relevant enough to merit being talked about, I guess. Um, or maybe not, actually. To be honest with you, I think they actually Lenor's just... Lenor's pretty vital. Well, they, they're they both very vital, but they're both also... They don't have a huge amount of screen time. There's a story to be told with both of them. Um, I think the yeah. end of each of their stories is the one thing about each of them that merits talking about. Yeah, because it has huge implications on how the story continues. Yeah. Obviously, one of them freeing Damon to be married again, and the other one freeing Rhaenyra to be married again. To yep. Damon. Yeah. One of them getting up and just wandering away while nobody seems to notice and getting burned by Vega. That, uh, that was a bit weird. That whole deception... There's a couple variables there that really had to... Uh, I would have thought that even back then they'd be able to tell that that was a different body, potentially. You'd really have to burn the fuck out of it to make it so that there's no chance of being able to tell, right? I don't think um, yeah, some people ask there... why there weren't any baby bones in her skeleton. <laughs> oh. Because she was, like, heavily pregnant. Oh, yeah, true. That's awkward. Yeah, cause I, I always thought it was weird that they showed us her skeleton. Like, just yeah. simmering. Like, yeah, like... Dragonfire should... Burn. Hang on. No, no. Dragonfire doesn't melt bone. That it wasn't does leave bone. my contention. It was that 
Okay. Leaving her out there till the dawn. You'd think they would have. Yeah, that's fucking weird. You think they would have done something about like like picked her up immediately? How'd she get out there? Damon Damon right, watches her die right, wow. and then he's like, "Nah, just leave her there. I'll clean it up in the morning." <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you're walking, to, like, you're getting a drink in the middle of the night and you spill it and it's like, ah, oh, fuck. She starts to God, you know, the old tomorrow. ball and chain. She starts to get up and walk out and Damon just tells her, no, 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 I want to see where this goes. Is that what happened? Let's hear her out. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, um, that, that whole scene was confusing to me. Like, I didn't even understand how it was in terms of, like, the timeline. Uh, the logistics are extremely strange. Yeah, because again, how does she I was get out there? Confused. I was baffled. I I presume that that happened way later, not that it was happening while Damon was having a conversation. That she just managed to sneak out and get outside. Yeah, there was a lot I'm of pretty sure around, there's a cut scene that explains it, but I'd have no idea why you would cut that. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe they felt the ambiguity of it was the way to go. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> like it definitely was only hypothesize. It feels like there's not a whole lot to actually be said about her though. Um, um yeah, just one of those kind of, you know, that that sort of tragic uh, you know, thing that we get in this world, you know, childbearing is a dangerous thing. Um you know, she this isn't how I guess I guess she saw things we get as a result. I, they did a yeah, good job of just... putting in a little bit for a very minor character to imply a fairly meaningful relationship with. Yeah, them. I was I was about to say that that seems yeah. to be like the main thing with that character is what does it say? What does her presence in the story say about where Damon's at and how his perspectives and values have changed? Because it was like during that period that he became not at all involved in like the political affairs of uh of the world that he just wanted. That to That was one of her travel. complaints of him. Yeah. It was one of our complaints. She wanted to get more involved for the she, sake yeah, of Damon uh, was... the Valerian bloodline and everything. Yeah, yeah. Damon's like, you know, it, it's nice here. We, we're living pretty well. Things are going great. I'm not getting stabbed or, you know, everything like that. Mm. And she's like, man, like, well, there's got to be more for us than this. Just sitting around, you know, maybe it's yeah. the maybe it's well, that Orlis in her, you know, it's kind of come out. She's good yeah, at reading. When we first meet her, way. she expresses desire for she like talks about Vega. She wants to uh be free. They talk about how Valarians um Targaryens are imprisoned by fire, but Valarians are like free to roam the seas. Um there's a there's freedom in her blood. And um that's why Vega is so important to her. Like Vega d defines her life um in some way. Um yeah, and, and then Damon choosing to not have her killed in service of having another child. That's like definitely to contrast what Viserys does in the first episode to Emma. So yeah, there's like a he, lot of things that Lena's character accomplishes in not very much screen time. Yeah, I'd say so. Well, is it not strange? Um, like, what would, what would be your uh, assessment of that? Why, when, when offered the choice of you can maybe save the baby or they both die? Why would you ever choose not to try and save the baby? Because to do so, you plunge a knife into a still living person. He doesn't want to, I guess, die in that way. Like, um, we, we saw the horror that Emma went through when Viserys had that happen. Um, I feel like Damon maybe that should have been in the show in terms of seeing Lena make that decision that clearly, because... She strikes me as the kind of person that if she was told either you die and your baby might live or you both die, I feel like I know what she would say. Yeah, well, the interesting thing is that in both cases, the decision is made, is left up to the father. Well, I, mean, don't, I don't even Lena. know that. Hey, Lena, do that, you want us to true? punch a knife into you? Lena seems to just, against Damon's wishes, walk off and get herself immolated. I, so. I mean, in reference to doing a cesarean section. Which... Well, yeah, but... What I'm suggesting is just that uh, it seems that Lena was on board too. She made that decision too. To it's not like we saw a scene yeah, where she was like, "No, cut me open, take the child." And they went, "No, we refuse." And then she did. What oh she did. yeah, 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 yeah. It right. seems like she's she's fine with that too. That the baby dies with her. I I don't know. It struck me as strange. I feel like we needed something for that. I agree, um, but I can also understand why the show may not have wanted to touch that with a barge bowl. Oh, you mean because of abortion allegories or something? Yes. I guess so. 
Like, that's kind of lame, but I imagine that would be why the writers would have wanted to steer clear of that sort of a discussion. Even though it, the show warrants it, so you can't really get around it. Also, well, she's young enough to have more. Like, not if she kills herself. <laughs> like, yeah, she's gonna live. Single... You can't really have a child while you're dead. Well, uh, limitation of the human body. This is a fantasy, after all, you know? Skill you issue. <laughs> Skill issue. Biology issue. Biology um... issue? I don't know. So what about Lenore then? Gay. The fact that um, he's alive gay. is so dangerous for Rhaenyra. Yes. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Obviously, I'm so wondering if they're going to use that. Also, the, from the thing I was Black. curious about was Sea Smoke. Um, dragons don't yeah. yes. bind without a dead dragon rider, right? Yep. So yeah, far yeah. as we know, yes. if, if the dragon believes that the rider's dead, is that how does a dragon know? Oh, they'll know. Can they can they sense have, like, it. They, the they know. They know. Link. Is it I think they make that clear oh, okay. in the show as well. Like when Rhaenyra is uh, having the the uh, sort of stillbirth. Uh, they keep flashing to Cyrax, yelling basically. Hmm. So, like they they share a significant bond in this show, that, and to the point where and, they um, you can't be a dragon well, rider unless you have Valyrian slash Targaryen blood, right? Yeah, Valyrian blood. Um, yep. Also, when Daemon gets hit by an arrow, Caraxes cries out. Yeah. They, yeah, they're definitely right, connected on some like yeah. ritual. And it's more level. fantasy than yeah. So yes, uh, Sea Smoke would likely. Uh, know that uh, Lenor is not dead. But what does that mean for how things are going oh, forward? Definitely. Don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, Sea Smoke is a little homophobic, and he's just like, you know what? I'm kind of glad he's gone. Honestly, uh, you know, must brush cancelled. I mean, I guess that's the thing because I'm not. I think this is probably left ambiguous intentionally. But who made the call for Lenor to live? You think? Was that Rhaenyra? Was that Damon, or was that it was uh, Lenor's friend, whose name well, I, don't I um... well, I feel like it was an agreed upon thing between Rhaenyra and Lenor, like part of that conversation that kind of cut off when they were in there, um, in yeah, the actually, room in the castle. On, I they kind of on rewatch. Yeah, go, it was the uh, when Rhaenyra is talking going. about Targaryens and Valerians, and then she says uh, Valerians. She says uh, when she says the sea represents an escape. I think she's already on board with the idea that we're going to be we're not i don't think i used to think it was the there was a plan to possibly kill him and then it would change to faking his death i think it was faking his death from the beginning i think that was always going to be the plan. yeah that's what that yeah. was my Rhaenyra read on never it i wanted him to die it's the yeah. implication of that's kind of one of the things they started to set up when that scene ended but their conversation you know carried forth especially considering what they were talking about in terms of you know we tried you know, I, I, you know, there's a, there's this element of it. It's just the, the realization it's just not working out. Can we come up with something? And she doesn't want him to die. I, I, I get the sense that they, they liked each other. That's but... a question I have actually for, I guess for Glidus. Does Westeros have any official like institution which can annul marriages? Um, who, who handles that sort of thing? And does that happen? Short, short answer: Yes, but. And long answer, no, and, <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Short as a yes, Go but, on. long answer, no, so, but. <laughs> as we know, Go on. um, if a marriage hasn't been consummated, the High Septon, which is, like, the highest religious office in the realm, can set it aside if he feels like it. Wow. And okay. that's basically it. That's how you do annulment, divorce in Westeros. It's very rare. Okay. Um, I suppose it, like you can also set aside a wife with even like if you have consummated, but like you have to be very powerful and have the high septon on side. Okay, so it yeah. is handled by the the religious institution. Quote yeah, unquote. but Lane, like if you're a king, fuck, like you can just do whatever you want, you know. Yeah, Leno's story matches a lot of the characters in this, being that uh he's clearly he he likes guys and he likes fighting and he wants to be on the stepstones like you know in doing that that the other buddy's forced to politically just appear as the father of children that he's not actually the father of and to have married someone he doesn't really want to be with and it like and then uh you know he has to deal with that for a long time to the point where he's just drinking a lot and hanging out with people and not getting involved to the point where the rumors are spreading and getting stronger and then when his sister dies he's like a wreck and explains that like he's just fucking lost 
doesn't really know what's happening anymore and is has been irresponsible and terrible and stuff but it, it, you know it's not really that he's a bad guy in any way shape or form he's just again chewed up by this world and forced to be in a position to the idea of how people use their time their short time sometimes on this earth and Lainor very much struggles with that later on into his time in the show he's really i've kind of just sat around i haven't really done much yeah kind of squandered my time on the planet and just another another son that's screwed over by all the intentions and expectations from the world and the parents he has. Yep. Because they crack that deal, right? Him and Rhaenyra, and they both seem pretty happy about it, but then both of them are miserable when we move forward ten years. Mm -hmm. And they did try. They did try to do yeah, sex they tried. with each other. Yeah, and it didn't They did work. try to do sex. I quite liked when he announces the baby's name is Joffrey, and then she says, don't you think I should have some say in my child's name, and then he says, our child, and then she says, I'm the only one that's bleeding, and uh, he says, I should have some affair, in, uh, or some insight, or s some control over the affairs of my family, and then she says um, something along the lines of, like, uh, it seems like you had no concern for your family as of late. Like, it just tells us exactly what's going on. And something you can miss, which is something I didn't even pick up, I, I think it's someone in chat let me know, but, like, yeah, Joffrey's the name of the, the Knight of Kisses that died. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's him, like, I think in the book, Lainor wanted to name all of them after Joffrey, but, like, you know, they weren't going to let that happen. But then the no. third one, they're like, oh, okay, whatever. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's yeah, like the one thing that he boyfriend. asserts, and it's it's kind of, like, it's kind of neat, because, yeah, that guy it's meant cute. a lot to him, and he got fucking murdered. And by the person who, the person who did it, he has to see basically every day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's plenty going on with both... Lena and Lenore. It's just they're not as um, involved as some of the other characters. I just can't emphasize enough how dangerous dangerous it is for Rhaenyra that he's still alive. Oh yes, maybe they'll do something with that. Who knows? I hope they do. Yeah, I feel maybe. like um, they have to at this point. I, I think really they like have how to, but I'm not sure that they will. Lenore running away with Carl Corey at the end of episode seven. Like they go off to Essos to have their own life, to be free, to do whatever they want, to be gay and do crime. Um, that is what Kristen Cole wanted to promise Rhaenyra. Yeah. So Rhaenyra gives that to Lena, who she says that she loves. Like you know, he's the best person she knows. That's what she says. And, like, she gives that to him, and, and that's cute as, don't you think? Well, sure, but, I mean, I wouldn't want to assuage the uh, the fact that this is all also benefiting the fuck out of her. She gets everything she wants. Oh, yeah. She gets to marry Uncle Daddy. Yeah. Pure blood. What that is. None, of that, yeah. none of that mud Ooh, blood. All in the family. Um, all right, so... Who shall we target next? I feel Children. like. Well, uh, we've got we kind. Of, Helena's not much else to say about. She's she can see into the future vaguely, right? And she's kind of nuts. She does have Based. some of that foresight, and yeah, and she's crazy. Um. All right, there we go. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> she's not much in the show at all. That's that's all. She likes bugs. Um, well, I feel like it makes more sense to talk about Aemond and Lucerius uh, after we've done uh, Rhaenyra, Daemon, and probably Viserys, because those two have the last scene of the show almost, don't they? Those yeah. two. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to listen? Why not Rhaenyra and then Daemon? What's that? Oh, hey, Gary. Oh, I was oh my waiting goodness. for that to happen. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, Hello? God. Yes. Yeah, Hello. we can. Told you he'd Is be it? here eventually. He was like, I was about to say Batman, but no, Gandalf. That makes more sense. Yeah. Bat Galf. Sure. Bat Galf. Gan Man. Galf. Um, Sorry. Bat Dolphin Sorry. Gan Man. We've been, we've been going character by character. Do you know who we have left and we're about to talk about is Viserys and oh. Damon. Yes. <laughs> it's like of right. the people you could have bumped into. It's like, well, that works out. Funnily enough, who's after that will be Aemon. We haven't talked about any of those three, and I'm pretty sure they're like your three favorites. Oh, easily. Uh, well, I mean, mostly because they're white males. That's, oh, cool. uh, that's about it. Yeah. Um, even the hair, them. yeah, it checks out. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Practically um, albino. <laughs> Practically <laughs> albino. Yeah. Just, just don't want to break any narratives on the internet or anything. Well, uh, uh, that, oh, I'm sorry I'm late. I love this show. Let's talk about something fun. Sure. Uh, 
Oh, Rhaenyra. We're kind of just like sort of summarizing the character journey. I got a helpful little graphic on screen that lets everybody know exactly how everything works. It's so well made by me, of course. Um, but it, 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 it's mainly for people who fucking can't remember who everyone is, which is fair because there's lots of characters. Lots of, lots of time jumps, too. Um, rather hard to keep track of sometimes. But anyway, Rhaenyra, what kind of characters do we get here? Funnily enough, when I was first watching the show, she uh, she kind of made a not a great first impression on me because I got the impression that she, um, she wanted to be respected and given what she wants, but not put in much of the work to do so. Uh, she seemed a little bit entitled. But one thing I had respect for the show was every time she brought this up, be it in front of Kristen Cole or Allison or whoever else, they would throw shit back at her, be like... Yes, oh, yes, it was so very hard good for you, isn't it? It's such a hard life you live. Nobody else has to deal with anything difficult. Then she's like, "Yeah, mm -hmm. but they don't know the life I live." It's like, <laughs> I mean, I think, yeah, it, the show recognizing that, granted, all of those things are probably true, but consider that you want an in, you know, your position in this world. You live in the castle, and you have all of these. You know, you know don't forget that. Don't lose your per sense of perspective, I suppose. Right? Uh, I know things are hard for you. You don't get everything you want, but you're not covered in shit every day. Yeah. So. You're, you're not starving and ridden with disease and living in the dirt and pulling to your back every day to, you know, support your family. Like a lot of people are, you know, so. Because I, I would agree. She ends yeah, up going through a lot more difficulties, but at the point of her first saying that she's, she's in a pretty stellar position, like does everything ahead of her sort of thing. Um... Meanwhile, people around her are already suffering a lot more, um, and she's sort of just figuring out, what do I get to have? But of course, uh, I think she gets... like that, I think that part of what they did in this season was kind of making a balancing act between her and Alicent. Um, you don't necessarily spot it in the first few episodes, but it's going to be that they, those two are going to represent the two sides. They're like almost the most significant cause of both sides, while everyone else is um, around them as advisors or influence of some kind. And it's like, which one do you think is worse? And the scale can sometimes tip in different directions depending on what kind of thing you're assessing. Because I um, I had quite an issue to take with her when she did what she did with uh, Kristen Cole. Because I was like, she should know better than most that what she's doing with him can get him killed. Um, mm -hmm. Significant. And then, of course, having kids with Harwin Strong. I thought it was kind of inept of the internet to be like, how neat that she's having kids with one she loves and she's letting her husband, who is gay, you know, <laughs> do what he wants. And it's like, having... She's, That's idyllic of you. Those children are fucked. They're like Especially absolutely because... ruined. They, they, as anyone finds out, they're all dead. Like, wh how is that good? How is that something that's crazy? Anyone's like, allowed to, yeah. Her indulging yeah. in who she wants to sleep with is gonna destroy everything. Like, Especially because it is so obvious that there is no ambiguity here. Yeah, they there didn't do a good be. job of covering it up. <laughs> like, not even I mean, you can trace be. the issue back further and say it's not her fault that they married her to a gay man. Um, that's fine. Well, that, so this is the problem, right? A lot of people would point that out and be like, so they, they're like absolved. It's like, yeah, but this is the horrible world you're in, the cards you're dealt, and there's still decisions yeah, yeah, for you yeah. to make. And if you yeah. make that and decision. She still, yeah, she was still allowed to pick out of, uh, yeah, I mean, not everybody, but she was, she had her chance and she blew it. Yeah, she so, had, was it 20 suitors she could have? Yeah, between? They, tried, they tried to work with her and she, she was just too willful. You know, and uh, yeah, paid the price. Yeah, and I, they uh, thought that that could work out. Like I'm sure in her mind, when they were walking on the beach, she's like, you know, "He'll nut, he'll nut just once." I mean, come on, I'm kind of hot, and uh, he didn't because he's super. Gay. He was that gay. That's how gay he, he was. was. Gay. Hyper gay. He couldn't ejaculate inside of that. Damn, you gay. Um, you gay. You gay. Okay, I got news for you. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, Galadriel was... with the ring. He's like, ah, I've passed the test. Yeah. Well, I was saying earlier about like <laughs> how you go from almost idyllic to actually it's just before the episode ends too right because you were saying about that beach walk they they agree and they're like yeah this is great and then they're married they're dancing and they're happy the guy gets killed and then they're being married with him like still had a bloody nose and she's just like I think she's even starting to cry like it's one of the most awful weddings ever and in the background there's a rat feeding on the blood of the guy he loves rat Mm -hmm. Like the most scuffed wedding ever. <laughs> this is like, yeah, it's representative of how this is not going this to be was great. This supposed to be a happy occasion. Yeah. When it leads to all the, the issues, yeah. So, yeah, I I took a lot of issue with her at that point, and I was not quite a fan of her. I, I think the character was really strong, it's just that I didn't like her myself. But then, 
and I think this is deliberate, the second half of the season, she's kind of a really good person. She's only ever trying to move things in a way that there's just more peace, defend the claim yeah. that her father gave her, and to raise she her children the fuck right. Well, over I her think kids. It's, it's, yeah, um, she really cares about her kids. What yeah. happened is that her interest in the line of succession becoming the queen was uh, shallower and that the older that she got and the more that she understood the nature of this world and the obligations and how to maneuver through it, that the, the older she got, the more she began to appreciate the responsibility that had been entrusted with her yeah. by Viserys. It that that up. is her arc, is essentially, yeah, growing up, becoming more responsible. And so the result is that you have, like, this really great arc for that character. Like, she's a really strong character. No, I think, yeah, I think she's excellent. And uh, I quite... I'm quite ready for her to do lots of things by the time you hit the end of the show. Like, uh, you have to respect a lot of decisions she makes are quite peace ready. But uh, wait, was that was that disapproval noises? You go ahead. Oh no, no, not disapproval. Just um. Oh, for I what's to come. Anything. I know. No, yeah, I got I, lots I, of this I from Gary. He's he's read the book as well. But no book spoilers. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just like when, when you speak about being excited about all the things Rhaenyra is gonna do. I, I hope I said I'm ready they... for her to take action, all right? That does not include right, yeah, horrible, yeah, yeah. horrible, horrible, horrible evil things. No, no, no. I, I'm not like doing a moral judgment on what she does. It's about the amount of things she actually does in the book, which a lot of people are kind of disappointed by. I hope they play up her role in the show. They're going to have to. Yeah. On, on the they're on hey, you uh, guys have your own really podcast to talk about that shit okay <laughs> yeah. you just, it's funny to me because it's like the, you're speculating on how much she's going to be involved it's like you're already spoiling things well yeah right. we don't read books uh, we watch the moving pictures yeah all right. not sorry at all wow uh, cool. okay. let's talk about something in the show that was like really developed uh the book like way better was uh that that transition from uh you know, young, rebellious Rhaenyra to adult Rhaenyra. You don't really get that in the book at all. The show does that a million times better, I think. Uh, and that's on purpose, too, because the book's just informational. It's just a dumb history that doesn't even count. So, oh, so uh, as it? I understand it, the book is, is presented as the accounts of people who are not necessarily reliable, right? Yet three unreliable narrators. Yeah, and I, I get you, like, with all the complaints you've had, it's just like, you didn't have to do it that way, why did you do it that way? And then they don't do it that way for the show, because they know that if they had the format be three dudes, and, like, each episode starts with one oh, of the dudes, so and, like, confusing. a place be like, let me tell you this, the chapter one, then some other guy's like, let me tell you chapter, it's like, people be like, what That's the fuck is this? That's such a shit framing device. That last guy was crazy, here's what really happened. Terrible. Uh, so this is supposed to be the definitive history. Uh, the only thing I miss is Mushroom, the character of Mushroom. I wish he was in it. Hope they bring him in season two. He's he in like it. Mushroom, you mushroom. see him once or something, right? Like he's, yeah. he's hitting a drum or something. But yeah, look at him go. Look at him go. Yeah. Look um, drum to pound town. Yeah, that uh, that about sums her up. She's gradually, I, she gets to the point of being much more responsible and reasonable, and um, I quite like the scene she shares with Viserys before he uh, goes to the, the throne room, where she basically says, yep. like, she's not even 100% on board with the idea that she should have been queen, but the fact that he made her queen and simultaneously isn't helping her defend that claim is, is destroying her, and that plea, like, really good scene in terms of acting and stuff, but it gets through to him. Like, she needs his help sort of thing, because everyone's coming to destroy her. And, and the fact that you can't help but feel bad, right? Because at the same time as me condemning her for having chosen to do what she did because it puts her children in, like, the target zone, once that's happened and it is there, but these are good people, they're good children, she's just trying to defend the claim and that everyone could just get along and move on, you kind of feel bad. Like, when, uh, when Vaymond is ripping into them for being of not pure blood, and you see their faces, they're like almost terrified of him, and it's like so unfair, these kids are just good people, they don't deserve this, but they didn't choose how they were born, you know, just, and mm. that's, that's the result, they piss off everybody. This might be a bit of a tangent, but I just want to talk a little bit about how crazy the internet is, like I spend a lot of time on House of the Dragon Twitter, and there are people who this show has reduced into talking like medieval 
peasants what? like like there are people saying yeah no they're even bastards and peasants. they don't matter they, their opinions that their lives are forfeit they should be treated like dirt because they're born out of wedlock it's like what the fuck is wrong with you people <laughs> nobody can trust the bastard the best part is that doesn't even in terms of succession or at least in terms of kingship that doesn't matter a huge amount because they still have targaryen blood which is the blood they, and they can be legitimized yeah. You know what happened? They bought established titles. They thought they were a lord, uh, and they started looking and now at they know. And now because they're not. A, if, it, if it was a hypothetical world where it was Lena with some like lowborn woman or what have you, that would be a problem. But it's still Rhaenyra's blood being passed down, so we don't have so much of an issue. Yeah. More of an issue when it comes to Driftmark. Oh, yeah. Big issue with Driftmark. But for the crown, less so. Less so, but still something that can be pushed. And because if of how is... obscenely overt it is, it's still a problem. Yes, it's quite well, a quintessential elephant in the room. One of the other things that's kind of mentioned in the books and like slightly brought up in the show is the whole, well, it's actually brought up a lot, the whole thought of pure Valerian blood. Like, it doesn't exist. The, the whole opening of the show shows the blood spit, like splitting up into multiple facets. And uh, when Valerian is sitting there going, pure Valerian blood, it's like, wait a minute. Yeah, it's like, there is no pure Valerian blood. You just need some. You need a drop. There's something about as it. As long as it's in there. As long as it's in uh, there. Well, the opening credits show the descent from Aegon and his sisters, right? Yeah. And that was, but like, purely yeah, the... incestuous until yeah. Viserys yeah. married Emma Arryn, whose oh. father was Broderick Arryn, who's not Valerian. And that's really the entrance of non Valyrian blood into the Targaryen family tree. Well, and it kind of reflecting what um, Corlys said, right? Because it's ultimately, if we can just get away with it, the blood's not going to fucking matter once enough time passes. People will just yeah. claim that History they were remembers blood anyway. na names. Yeah. But uh, yep. that's isn't the Rainey's problem with this. Isn't Rainey's mother a Baratheon? Yeah, that's right. But Baratheons are Valyrians. I mean, yeah, really, I the moral oh, of the story is that the closer your family tree looks to a telephone pole, the better. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Everyone knows that. Surely this will be um, a good yeah, idea. Um, Baratheon, Don't look at Baratheon, Baratheon was, a Valyrian, was a Targaryen bastard. Oh, okay. So he's probably half not Valyrian. So, yeah, true. Mm -hmm. um, should we talk about Daemon? Shall we talk about Daemon? Matt so Damon. I'm, I'm keen on talking about Daemon, personally. When I was doing my rewatch... Uh, I had a niggling thought in the back of my head where I was like, I wonder what how much Damon... I was, that was set up for both of you to say that, and it worked. <laughs> I was so happy that I, that I got it. Uh, so the, the the thought I was having was, I wonder how much of him is that he's really well characterized, and how much of it is the amazing performance from Matt Smith. I was happy to find yeah. out that it's both. It's good. Because, um, boy, what a what a stellar performance. Hard yeah. to so undersell how hard he just kills it. Yeah, he is every very scene. very good. He's he he makes this character. He just he he just makes this character. He, the, I don't the character would just not work if you didn't have the, of all the characters in this show, having someone who has Damon's personality and his his mannerisms and stuff. You got to nail the acting for it, or else it just won't sell. Because mm -hmm. it's it, him more than a lot of people. It's more than just glances and talking and you know the more subtle things. It's. He, he really has to have this sense of, like, kind of menace about him. What's, uh, that, that can be subtle. One thing is kind of interesting as well is that there's a lot of characters where you'll be like, and we didn't expect that, you know, we didn't know that this person could pull that off sort of thing. We're going to be saying that very soon about someone else. But this one was one where it was like, oh, he's probably going to be the best in the, uh, in the show. And it's like, well, he was really good. So, yeah. Like, it, it, nobody was surprised that Matt Smith pulled this off, really, because he's just that good. If... Obviously, my experience with him is mainly Doctor Who. Um, mm -hmm. I'd seen enough of him in that, but I assume some people might be like, it's the Morbius guy! <laughs> <laughs> Which I feel was so he bad about. Was like, he Morbius? Was that, uh, time. Wasn't there that thing at like, well, Comic-Con was... or something where somebody went up and said it's Morbin time when they were meant to ask questions about House of the Dragon? Well, yeah, was did did there was this some kind of interview video where they talking about like fans of Morbius and like really into it? Some they say it's Morbid time, and then didn't Mass Smith say something like, Are "You sure they're fans?" Like, <laughs> uh... <laughs> there's there's an article here on uh, IndieWire from August of this year. It's uh, Matt Smith uh, is like more. He said Morbius flop doesn't bother him. Oh yeah, well, yeah. well, well I guess not. Right, right onto this. 
Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely. This was this was a role that should, it, it, I was about to say needed to happen. He'd already proven himself, but this was definitely a role that it's like it helps uh, focus his power as an actor in terms of just like there you go. There you this go. is yeah. This seems like this is the craft of acting, and Morbius is a paycheck. Yes, hundred yep. yeah. uh, percent. It's yeah. kind of like the guy who did the music for Ragnarok and Rings of Power. <laughs> It's not fair that those two things are the things he did. I don't understand it. How how does one of them was the passion project, the other was the paycheck. One for me, one for them, as they say. Anyway, oh, Bear McCree. Bear he McCree? Chose, he yeah. chose wisely. Who, yeah, well he's good. He was very good at Battlestar Galactica and uh needed a paycheck for Rings of Power. Uh, this is the thing, man. Like, I, I feel like he's he was capable of way more. And Rings of Power is like he walked it in, sort of thing. I don't know what's going on there. Like, there was only like two tracks that, if I, it, it, like, stood out to me as worth being like, oh, that's music. The rest of it sort of just faded into the background. Yep. Wait, so I haven't watched Rings of Power yet. Are you telling me the soundtrack is like, the? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's extremely just... unmemorable. Oh no! Like, no! no. Right. What the fuck? Well, it's not like. God of War Ragnarok, and like phenomenal. Holy shit! <laughs> it is so it is a many. night and day difference. It's so well. I mean, I feel like it's got to be indicative of the fact that in God of War, there's like something that you can latch onto to really do some cool musical. Um, something that I actually read was that. Um, oh wait, no, we we're talking about House of the Dragon. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to be getting next week. Next week. Next be. week. Uh, yeah, it's it's a really great soundtrack, and by comparison, Rings of Power is just like, eh, it's not bad. It's just yeah, like it know, didn't it didn't eh. get in the way. It's just that I didn't notice it was there really. Um, uh, what you, do you think of the soundtrack of this show? I really, really like the parts. Yeah, like when uh when Viserys enters the throne room. Oh yeah, favorite. that's a that's favorite. A yeah. Love no, that. I love it. I can't wait for it to come I was, out. I haven't seen I a release show. Yet. Deserves I like its own fucking theme. Rhaenyra's theme is good. <laughs> Rhaenyra's theme like, is good. It's, it's really versatile as well, good. which is something I tend to like. Kind of like in God of War, how the main theme hey. is super versatile. Well, I'm just I'm just saying it's kind of like that, because her theme has He's several saying, different man. renditions with He's the same saying. like court motif. And mm -hmm. it's like applicable in these quiet moments and then these much grander moments as well. Like it's super robust. Yes. Um, I feel yeah, like it's, easily it's have made a mix of that into the show's title theme. Uh, well, so why don't you expand on that thought, Theo? Because you said that you don't like that they don't have their own theme song. You just used the Game of Thrones one again. I don't know. I, well, I, before anyone says, like, Theo, why do you... What was the benefit of doing that, if any? Is there a benefit? The benefit yes. of using the Game of Thrones one again? I yes. guess to connect it to Game of Thrones. But is that something you want at this point? It's well, also it, tried and tested. Like, everyone knows that it's yeah, going really yeah. well. Like, it's a good piece of music. I want it pointed out that there's probably good reason for them to have decided on it. They probably thought about doing their own theme, and they were like, yes, but They this... didn't. They've said that they didn't. Oh. Like, they decided oh. very early on that they would be using this theme again. I Well, so funnily enough, I actually settle on they should have had their own theme. I think the show deserves its own identity. Yep. And it doesn't... I agree. Uh, the idea of it being like a there is material it. in the soundtrack that would have made for a great opening yeah. Yeah. Uh, scene, and they just didn't do it. Um, Not yep. exactly a music pun, but I just don't feel it fits tonally that well. Well, was um, a I have a bachelor's degree in music composition, and I can tell you that you're on the right Not track. a master's? Oh my god. <laughs> Not a master's, no. Loser. I'll go well, back to whatever it's... Yeah. I whatever bet you don't worth. even know yeah. how to analyze What's the true? Teletubbies theme. Can you even okay. play the glockenspiel? Yes. Good. <laughs> yeah, get or really get wrecked, easy. Rags. Why, oh. why? Why? Why me wrecked? I'm Rags happy for Rags was it. annihilated. Uh, no, you why? why? I'm, I'm, glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that he can play the glock. He spiel. didn't know how to play it. No. You want me to yeah. teach you? I was setting. No, I was setting you him up for away. success. Running rags, running away. I'm doing away. the opposite of running, running away. Rags. I'm standing my ground in how supportive I was of him. Running away. So. Anyway, Damon. Anyway, nailed that. So, moving on. You did nail that, Glytus. Rags is right. Absolutely. I smack that as one does to many instruments, like a glockenspiel, or perhaps a triangle, or a gong, or he... perhaps a walk that's been turned upside down. Damon is what I would probably call chaotic, prideful, 
cunning, reckless, passionately Bisexual. loves his family. Yeah, and I was about to say, loyal. Like old Valeria and furiously overcompensates for what he believes in to be right. Like he'll he'll make some really impulsive decisions if he believes something is happening. I think most I think... accentuated in what I quite love is when he's informed that Viserys is dead. He says, how did he die? He doesn't get an answer. It's not that she's ignoring him. She just hasn't answered that yet. And then he just jumps immediately to he's been slain. And then he jumps to Alicent killed him. Like it's You know, thinking about that list of traits that you gave there for like Damon is a character that could easily have been fumbled. Yeah. Like that you could have easily turned him into a confused mess. But it's like this delicate balance of all of these seemingly disparate traits. Um like never never coming at the expense of the other or never feeling like they contradict. Like that would have been really tough to write and really tough to perform. And the fact that it works so well is a testament to both aspects, both the writing and Matt Smith's performance. He, uh, his earlier time in the episodes, he's uh, more so just sort of thinking about what it is he's even around for. What does he want to do with his life? It seems like through uh, impulse, he gets himself banned twice. And then uh, mm -hmm. he's already been this married to uh, someone in the, the Vale. So he's just like a little bit of trapped sort of nature. Kills her and then goes for uh, Lena. And then uh, when we see him 10 years later, it really feels like he's settled down in terms of uh, he's not as crazy anymore. Yeah. He's not as chaotic. Seems to have chilled. I really um, love the small part of his conversation with Lena where they both, both go through, like, this isn't really what they wanted out of life, but they've made do in a way that they're yeah, content with. this will do. Uh, yeah, 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 he says... Got a kid's um, a place, you know, I wouldn't, you know, doing pretty well. Well, and she says, like, he, yeah. he claims he likes to be in Pentos, but she says, like, you never, like, look around in Pentos, you never go around, you never do anything here, you just read about yeah. histories. And he says, um, we're, we're free to do whatever we want, we're without responsibility, political scheming, endless shifting of loyalties and succession, none of it is ours. It's like he misses the chaos. Wants to yeah, I mean, it, it, you get again. the impression that he's just that's that's his element, yeah. There's chaos, yeah. He wants to be, I mean, probably closer to Viserys, almost certainly. That too, yeah. Um, and you know, yep. uh, Rhaenyra, but yeah, it's it's that's his arena, you know. What he's told, it is, um, he, he's still trying he's to figure it out, like, even when he's in Pento, so you can kind of tell. And these are the subtleties of acting, yeah. not adult <gasps> protect, pretending. To where, like, he needed to find that out for himself. Like, no, this is this is great on paper. We're we're all taken care of here. Boring as shit. I can't handle it. That's that was the reality. That was never going to work out, no matter what. Even if she survived. So uh, that was. I thought that was really cool. Hell, uh, she's the one who was trying to egg him on to leave. If anything, if she back. survived. Yeah. It would have happened yeah. sooner, maybe. Uh, yeah, when he's told that uh, Rhaenyra had another kid, and he says, uh, did your brother mention whether there was a market, but also entirely coincidental re uh, resemblance to the commander <laughs> of the City Watch? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just so well known that it's a joke. Yeah. Uh, which is helpful um, in terms of moving along, mm -hmm. like, the world building of everyone becoming more and more aware, because everyone's just joking about it, but it's a serious thing as soon as everyone agrees on it. Yeah, and it's one of those things where you see it Again, you read it, and, you know, it depends on the reader, obviously, but uh, it was never presented as, wow. It would, They said it was pretty obvious, but you still, there could be some question, because Rainey's supposed to have dark hair because she was Baratheon, but, like, in the show, it is the Emperor has no clothes. That's it. Yeah. We're just going to pretend <laughs> this oh, obvious dude, that, thing is not happening. We were talking about the scene with, like, the ex insane amount of tension after uh, the eye is taken, but when uh, Aemond is asked... Who told him these awful lies and he he looks at his mum but then moves it to Aegon. And then Aegon doesn't blame anyone, he just says, We all know, everyone knows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aegon's got that deadpan thousand yard stare. So, Aegon to me in that moment is like, why are we pretending? This is stupid. Everybody knows the truth. This is pointless. But obviously the, the reality is and Viserys knows, like, yeah, we have to keep pretending, otherwise people start dying. Um, Including you, there you go. Yep. But yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if uh, you've said it enough. Uh, his mom told him a bunch of times, like, uh, yep. you're going to die if this, does, if this whole ruse falls apart. Somebody's going to die. 
thing to accentuate uh, how awesome Damon is as a character, not necessarily as a person. He's probably kind of a bad person, but uh, the the way that he talks and manipulates conversations and just moves his way through the world after he's killed uh, the, the Royce girl, I forget her name, the bronze Rhea. bitch. Rhea. Um, her, her cousin, I think, comes to, uh, to Damon and he's like, in the veil, men are made to answer for their crimes, even Targaryens. His response is just, who are you? Just like <laughs> undercuts that straight away. And then he's like, I am Sir Gerald Royce of Runestone, which is enough to imply why he might be saying this. And he just goes, and says, I'm uh, like, oh, yes, terrible thing. I'm positively bereft. Such a tragic accident. That's like how he delivers his POV from his <laughs> wife dying. And then he's like, you know better than anyone. It was no accident. And his response is, um, are you confessing some guilt, Sir Gerald? Like just <laughs> fucking with him is so awesome. Um, he's like, I'm making an accusation. He says, in King's Landing, men are made to answer for their slanders, even old bronze cunts like you. <laughs> and by the way, um, Lionel's watching this whole conversation, and he just looks stressed. He's just like... Oh, he's no, like, oh, like... please don't, please don't do this, don't do this. <laughs> he's so wonderfully good at fucking his people. You yes. see it just even in episode one with Otto. Yeah. It's a rise out of Otto, which is pretty impressive. Well, yeah, yeah, right? And you get that pretty consistently throughout the whole season. The acting is really consistent and solid. He's always in control, even when he's out of control. He's in control. Like, like his whole element is being out of control. He loves watching people squirm. Um, even when Viserys is beating him and telling him he's about to expel him, uh, when he's like, please tell me what I'm being accused of so that I can properly uh, deny, deny it. it. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just like a really fun line. He's just drug, hug over, whatever. But... The one time you see him really rattled properly is when he's trying to appeal to his brother to help him with what's happening with the succession while his brother is just you know, ruined in the bed, like like in pain. Uh, when he was visiting with Rhaenyra? Yeah, it's it's a testament to uh, Massimus' yeah, performance. Yeah. He's struggling to get yeah, words he out. He on his words. He can't Bringing, look at Bringing, yeah, it. Viserys with him, yeah. He keeps, other, like, little Viserys, yeah. looking at him and then looking away, looking at him, looking away. Like, he can't bear to look at him for too long. Cause... Well, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to see, you don't want to see people you care about look like that. No, people and... understand, people no. learn that about themselves as time progresses. You don't want to see your family members, you know, deteriorate. And so you have all of that, and you have the line from episode one where he's like, you should have made me hand, I would protect you. And he says, from what? From yourself? Obviously referring to the fact that Viserys makes choices that puts himself in danger and gives people power that he shouldn't, like Damon. And I genuinely believe that. I don't think Damon actually would have tried to take the throne from him at all. I think he would have been happy uh, being by his side. That's all he really wanted. He wants a strong mm -hmm. Targaryen house. That's his main goal. And um, yeah, you see that then culminating when he he helps him to his throne and gives him back his crown. It's just like that shit is powerful with all of the other Abs stuff that's been built. Yep. Heard that was uh, ad libbed. That was not a the the crown falling. Apparently was um, not intentional. It just happened as they were doing the acting, and they just carried right along. Well, I imagine that they would have reset. It probably was an idea that they came up with while filming, but uh, they would have. To get um, the shot perfect, I looked into you know? it a bit further. Apparently, it happened during a rehearsal, and everyone was like, "Oh, yeah, 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 that's way better. Let's do that." Ah, nice. That's still improvisation. Yeah, so I'm happy to is. consider that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of my favorite moments in the show. Like yes, one of the that's, yeah, it's really that's good. I adore it. Does so that's much really work. Good. For most of it. So nice that Viserys gets that. He gets that. Um, yes. But I guess we can talk about that a bit more later. We're almost there now. The other thing I was going to say about Damon was just uh, in that the last few episodes, you really get a sense of uh, he's now like fully active as a participant in this game. He's less an agent of chaos looking just for stuff to do. Now he's got a particular role, particular goal, and it's going to be the survival of his house and his bloodline that's what's on the line. And uh, I really like... It's such an interesting element of the character that um, he's told about the nature of... Rhaenyra's rule and she's like you know it's it's way more important than just all the things that are going on when you consider a song of ice and fire and he looks at her like what and then uh, yeah, and the she's like about all that shit yeah and then she like gives a bit more information and he just he cuts her off with strangling her and he's like this fucking bullshit that would have like it the series and all of his nonsense like we've got real shit happening I don't want to hear about dreams and prophecies but then she undercuts that with saying like he never told you about it. He never trusted you enough to actually give you the information that was passed on down yeah. from all the rulers. So he would feel betrayed. 
Yeah, and so that that gives you the sense that he's not just informed by finding it nonsense, but also that his brother never gave him this information. There is so much going on with Damon Targaryen, he's... and he's played by such an amazing actor that I can't wait to see what other what else they do with him. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited to um see what I assume will be season three, but the whole thing. I'm so excited to see yep. um the things written about Damon happened on screen with Matt Smith. Thanks oh for confirming God. he's going to survive season two, probably. Wow, spoilers. Oh, yeah, well, maybe maybe not. a lot. Maybe not. Oh, little, little, little. Guys, oh yeah, here's what happens. Uh, everybody, <laughs> everybody lives. It's happily yeah, ever after. Yes, this one. Yeah, the war happy. actually yeah. ends at the start of episode, uh, season two. The rest of the show is about well, something else completely. It turns out when yeah. they got bit down <laughs> on the dragon, it reassembled itself as it was falling down. And the kid was fine. He just got a bit lost. All good. No more. Al Alicent and Rhaenyra make up. They find the men of their dreams. Uh, Damon lives. Everybody's happy. There's tons of dragons. The Yay. end. That's how I thought they married each other. Oh. Oh, it's it Polly Amorous. It's Everybody gets married. Everyone. Everybody gets married. Love everyone marries everyone, everyone else. Mandatory. Yeah, if everyone marries everyone else, then everyone's happy because everyone has all the power. Great. Yep. And they share the power. Yeah, and everyone has strong <laughs> alliances with everyone. They share yes, the Yes, there's a, a healthy democracy springs free and everyone's just full of happiness and kindness and wonderful. There's it's so funny there. because like we so we nice. know from Game of Thrones <laughs> that <laughs> like the world ends up in a particular way. True, but let's not you don't need to think about it, you know. Just... I won't mention any specifics. Yes. Um which leads us the man of the hour, Mr. King, King Boy, King Viserys himself. Are we, are we doing anyone else who isn't listed here before we do him? Yeah, I want to do like, the, uh, I want to do Aemon and Lucerys after him, and Rhaenys, yeah, we can do them three after him. Okay, our little epilogue, sort of. Sort of, yeah, because he's, he's the main, he's the big boy. He, he's the reason to see this show, I would say. Uh, as yes. much as I had a lot to compliment about everyone else. His story is complete. It is incredibly meaningful. It's performed almost perfectly. I don't understand how he could have really done any better. They put so much work into making sure you understand the entire journey from start to finish. This, uh, man, is it fucking potent. And there's so much work mm. that goes into it. Uh, where to begin? Who is Viserys as a person? I think most people just summarize it as he's a good bad. Uh, he's just a goofy little guy. That's how he comes off at first. He's just this affable kind of easily swayed maybe but he's just this he's just this cool guy he's a chill king who just wants things to remain chill he inherited a notoriously peaceful kingdom and has had that weight on his shoulders the whole time in terms of like i wouldn't want to make it so that it stops being peaceful but simultaneously i don't want to be forgotten i want to be a king that made a difference i want to be a king that that mattered I, that's the most that's the strongest part of the character in my eyes is how you can really feel the weight of his place in history on his shoulders in everything he says mm. everything he does the way he carries himself in every scene he's really really concerned with what he will be and what his what he will do for the future with his uh uh Aegon's dream and all of that as well and he uh is 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 very obsessed and fully believes in the uh the 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 scariness of the north is coming. The the long winter, the song of ice and fire is one hundred percent going to happen. And he needs to facilitate it. And then you combo that with a vision he had of putting his own son named Aegon on the throne after him. Like he needs to make that happen. A lot of his decisions are based on believing that that's something he has to facilitate. And so he almost feels like a failure when it, he's not getting the ears he needs. And then that in Lead turn. To make leads to Emma dying, and he feels nothing but pain and regret for the rest of his life over that, because he loves him more than anyone. Yeah, it's, um... keeps looking at that ring, Paddy and that's Paddy Constantine that has said that, like, that's when he considers Viserys to have died. Like, everything else after that point, Viserys is just, like, a husk. He's not mm. even really there. I think that makes sense, especially with the last set of lines he's getting when he's super old. Like I said, yeah. he remembers Rhaenyra being his only child. He talks to Emma. That was that was where he was enjoying life. Everything else was done politically and for the sake of maintaining peace. Which, oh god, when when he's being lifted up from the table because he's getting too much pain again... Uh, this the, oh, well, actually, we'll get to that in a second. The first thing I'd want to say is in the throne room when he's lifted up 
uh, because he's he's in pain. And uh, Allison's holding him. Says like, "You need to take it back to your room." He says, "No, no, 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 no. I have to. I have to. I have to set things right." Like he understands as well as I think the audience does, especially in retrospect. He was like the only thing keeping everything together. As soon as mm, really he's gone, much. it all falls apart. Which is really interesting yeah. to contrast with not only everyone in Universe's perspective of his rule, but everyone out of Universe. Everybody on fucking Twitter and discussing this is like, he's one of the worst kings ever. I was just like, I don't what know, the man. Fuck? It's, uh, what the fuck? You have everyone saying he's ineffective, he doesn't make decisions fast enough, he always like wonders what the hell he's supposed to do, he lets people who are evil like have lots of power. He's like one of the worst kings ever. And I was just like, I, I, I don't know that, like, look at all these characters. Who exactly is the superior person to be king than him right now? Maybe Lydell? That's probably like it. But... Lord Beesbury. Yes. Lord King Beesbury. Chadsbury. Put him in charge. Um, the thing is, I actually think if you really pay attention to everything he does and says in all these different episodes, uh, there's so much more going on in his brain than a lot of people realize. Like on the surface, right, you have um, you have Damon saying it was never a strong suit being king. You have uh, like like Otto saying that. Um, uh, oh no, I think it was Otto's brother or something. Just, like, you have to. I think it was Otto who said you have to guide Viserys toward reason because he's never going to find it on his own. Which mm -hmm. is just like, damn, okay. Um, you have the when they're gossiping in like episode three, they say that uh, the crown is at war and your father refuses to admit it everyone has, like, cynical views of why certain things are decided, but, like, Viserys is aware of all of these things. He doesn't, yeah. like, there's reasons why he makes the decisions he does, and he's on, the way that he constructs his, like, advisory council, it wasn't, it wasn't, like, cringe and corrupted before he lost influence over it. Like, uh, mm. it was obviously but, stacked well, by Otto eventually, but at first, like, him switching Otto out for Lionel was an incredibly good decision. The idea that Rhaenyra Viserys is a hapless king is absurd. Yeah, he's way it's more active than he, people realize. He knew what was good. The fact that everything even stayed together and, and hung together, considering, like... Because, I mean, we, we talked about it earlier when he was like, oh, you know, I don't feel like I've been tested. He was tested. He was very much tested. He didn't yeah. have an easy go to, of it at all. Like, he had a lot of difficult situations he had to maneuver through. And the, the reality is that when it came to him, he maneuvered through those situations as best he could in accordance with the things that he valued. And if that makes him a bad king, you know? I don't know, he, he, was, he was a good king. Like, he's a good, you know, he... Honor, honor. like, he had honor. And he kept... The, yeah, the fact he held things together for that long, and, you know, it, like to the point where you... You know he's a good king when you're, like, fearful for when he dies. Yeah, because uh, you know that everything's going to fall apart more than likely. And Ooh, do you feel the same way about Robert? Because things immediately fell apart when he died. Oh, sorry, um, I'm going back to the. I don't actually. The dragon, so. I, I actually dragon. think it's worth talking about, uh, but maybe not in this stream. But just yeah, I actually think it is worth saying that Robert wasn't as. I think when you're in peace times, it's, it's kind of like the thing of when you don't have real problems, your your lesser problems become significant. And it's like Robert could be so much better if he did this, 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 this. He's terrible. It's like, I don't think you realize the scale we're dealing with here. Like, terrible yeah. kings? I don't think you understand. Like, Robert is not a terrible king. He's he's a, he's fine. <laughs> to the point where Robert didn't care to make important decisions, so if it's really down to the council he surrounds himself with, and unfortunately his was filled with, like, corrupt assholes who are all trying yeah. to... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, meanwhile, someone like... Um, I mean, that's what they were trying to go for in the in season eight finale, right? That all the right people are in the uh, council at that point, and that Bran is a king. But <sighs> take the idea, like Bron, not the actual. Eh? I know. Take the idea, not the <laughs> example. Uh, but you, you have, yeah, like the best king, maybe someone. It could have been like a um, a uh, Tommen, but he's he's got all of these like advisors who are actually good willed and in integrity driven people. Um, and yeah, it's it's always going to be a complicated balancing act, but. Even Robert, when he's like, go and assassinate Daenerys, everyone looks back at that uh, after season eight as like, so he was right, and everything would have been fine if he had done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and Ned is like, what a horrible Same decision. Ned was like, in the wrong there. That's funny. Yeah. Well, I mean, we didn't know what was going to happen, okay? So, uh, in retrospect. But yeah, um, even in the first episode, some of the first lines, uh, Viserys is like, my son will be born and the whole realm is going to celebrate. And then the maester is like, we have no way of predicting the sex of the child. And then Viserys says, um, of course, and no maester, is, no maester is capable <laughs> of rendering an opinion free of conditions. Now, are they? 
like that's him admitting immediately that he already knows that like there's a bunch of shit going on with uh, the perspective people provide. Yeah, he's so witty and um, tactful and aware. But people people often claim he's not, and that's the thing. It's like if you listen to what he says and what he does, it's pretty clear. And someone I noticed on the rewatch, I mentioned this to Fringy yesterday. It's kind of neat to hear him say, but uh, the you have uh, the Baratheon guy say, you know, can I have the favor of the queen who never was? The Rainies and um, Otto is like, you know, you could have his tongue out for that. And then Viserys says, uh, tongues aren't going to change the succession, let them wag. Which is like, yep. man, you're going to change your mind on that one <laughs> as soon as we go <laughs> a little further. And I think it's because well, of the fact that wagging your tongue about that succession really doesn't change anything, but it will if you do it enough about uh, Rhaeny uh, Rhaenyra's children. Mm -hmm. See, um, I was keeping track of the times he actually did threaten to have people's tongues out, and um, it basically is always concerning Rhaenyra's yeah. succession. Like, um, mm. the first time he actually threatens to have someone's tongue out is when Dame when he has Damon on the floor of the throne room after he's been accused of fuckling Rhaenyra, mm -hmm. and he's so, so that's it's about his love at, for Rhaenyra, and um, you know. I guess from a more cynical point of view, you could say it's like the security of his succession. Doesn't he wait? I think doesn't he threaten him in episode one? Um, Damon's. Oh uh, yeah. I think he says so like it's a similar if idea. You'll refer to me as your grace, or I'll have my men cut your tongue out. I think he says. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So it's it, it's actually probably more to do with Emma then, because that was in response to Damon saying the air for a day thing about you know yes. his son. That really triggered him, <laughs> which is fair enough, I think. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Like, Triggering the lips. He's uh, he, he's very uh, protective of those sorts of. He'll always he's like a super peacekeeper. But the second there's like a threat to his uh, immediate family, he gets incredibly aggressive. Yeah, that's well, the, the part of his family he cares about. Yeah. Um, like uh, when when uh, the the Lannister says, you know, uh, Rhaenyra is not, obviously not going to be queen. It's going to be your firstborn. Then he's like. Like what? What do you, you know? Like why would I change my ear? And then he implies yeah. that like some some bannerman have talked about it, and then he immediately is like, "It's your sworn duty to report rebellion in my kingdom." And he's just like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" We were just having a chill with no, no rebellion, no, no. Because like it, he misunderstood how like like Viserys won't entertain it being commonly understood that yeah something like that would happen. Um, that's what I mean. That he's not spineless in any way, shape, or form. He's uh. He's just, he's got an idea of how to maintain peace, and if anyone steps out of that, he'll annihilate them. And uh, that's tested with Vaymond, and he comes through immediately. It's not like he punished uh, Damon for chopping his head off, did he? he was, yep, there we go. That's mm. what you get. Oh, well, that's sorted out. That's fixed the problem. Um, and yeah, the uh, how he fires Otto, I think, is one of the bigger examples of how much he's aware where people maybe not have realized. Um, and I, I quite love that whole sequence because it's uh, him putting together a lot of what he probably should have thought about before, right? He opens with saying five days. You're like, huh? He says his uh, his dad was handed the king, and then he and he was like at peak of his health, and then five days later he died of a burst belly, meaning poison, uh -huh. right? That's I think. I think that's the implication. That's the implication we never find out. And he says like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Otto says, I recall it all too well, it was a grim day, and he says, it was a good day for you, you were made hand. You went from being just a man in, like, the room to being the most, second most powerful man in the entire kingdom. And uh, and he says, Alicent was a calculated distraction, and he now realize how calculated it was. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. him putting together that Alicent was obviously moved in place to benefit Otto, and then Otto fucking with Rhaenyra in order to move his blood into the uh, alignment makes it like convinces Viserys that he's always going to put himself before his king, and then he's like, "Oh shit, did you kill my dad?" Like, <laughs> and and as soon as that's even a thought, mm -hmm. it's like Otto's done. Yep. And that's why it's so it's so well put together that the reason he comes back is because Lionel dies, and uh, at this point, Alison is in more control of of uh, you know the dealings than Viserys is. So Otto is hand again. The implication there is even bigger because um, Balon dying, Viserys' dad dying, 
that's what sparks the succession crisis we see at the very beginning of the show, right? Where Rhaenys is spurned. So that's like saying that Otto is responsible for two separate succession crises. Well, um, you know, is it is there any more information to believe that Otto actually did have a hand in the death of uh, Viserys' father? Is there any reason to believe it beyond no. the accusation? Well, yeah, it's basically just what Viserys says, and that's it. Because that's the trouble with uh, with the Game of Thrones universe is sometimes it makes so much sense for a person to have done a thing. It's like look how much you benefit. It's like it turns out they there's had nothing to do proof. with it. Yeah, and there's well, zero that proof. That like that um, be... when Ned thinks that Cersei killed John Aaron, right? Yeah. Like it makes sometimes complete sense, sense, and she didn't do it. Yeah. Sometimes you just get a break. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that's that's the thing George does that could be frustrating or or good depending on how you like it. Maybe we'll get an answer later. But I think it's very likely he was killed, but not by Otto. Oh, I don't think it's Otto. Oh, I, there's a Grand Maester conspiracy. Maces? Yeah, okay, that, yeah. Maces. Yeah, fair enough. Or oh, Maester that's, conspiracy. Yeah, that's worth mentioning. Is like killed. the earlier episodes, of the Grand Maester is so clearly in line with Otto. They're totally like besties. Yep. <sighs> well, they're you know high towers. Well, right yeah, there. and that's the thing. You start to connect the the voice of Old Town is the high towers who are next to the. And Mace, well, the Mace. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, should we talk about that scene then? I think we should talk about that scene. You know, sure. basically, the series is worn down to almost being a skeleton man, and he's hanging on for dear life. He's he's on all kinds of painkillers, and Otto and us, Allison have basically taken over everything. And the Driftmark succession is coming up, and the problem with it is, Vaymond is going to be very passionately pointing out that he deserves. To inherit Driftmark, but the problem is if he does, it delegitimizes the kids and thus delegitimizes like Rhaenyra's whole line. Um, and so if that basically it's this big old knock-on effect, and it's just a clever way to to drive a thorn into the side of a lot of the concerns people have over this succession. And before the day happens, the implication, of course, is that Otto and Alison will be deciding, and we already know exactly what they want, so it's all for show, really. But Rhaenyra pleads to um, Viserys the night before. He under he understands more of what's going on than I think people realize at that point as well. They think he's kind of out of his mind, but he's picking up all of it. And uh, the next morning, I think he refuses milk of the poppy. And um, as the proceedings are proceeding, he makes his way into the throne room and walks from one side of it to the other. And it's considered the best moment of the whole series by basically everybody who's seen it. Yep. yep, it's my it is my top tier moment. It is a man uh, walking oof. across a room. That's, that's what good writing does. A guy walking yeah. across a room to sit in a chair oh, is the the crowning yeah. moment of I, a whole series of television. I know they did some really cool battles and the dragons were whooping around and stuff. But did you see that <laughs> yeah. guy walk across? A yeah, room? dude, he walked <laughs> oh. like all the he way across walked, the like room. from one side to the other. Yo, and he's incredible. got a cane. When he went up those stairs too. Oh, I lost my fucking mind when he got to the stairs. That one guy. I actually and did, though. Like, I'm yes, not even it, joking. The media doesn't make me cry much. This did. Like, It's uh, it's pretty powerful. and Incredible. It's, it's a representation of strength that you basically never see in media. It's a very rare form. Um, he came through for his family in a way that is so incredibly important and difficult for him and represents everything that his character is is built toward. He's, he's the... And you get the reactions from everyone. Otto has a level of, like, fear, as well as just being like, well, we're fucked, because this is happening now. Alicent is, like, surprised, but also looking kind of distraught. Like, what does this even mean? Um, Damon and Rhaenyra, like, they're all going to be impressed. Rhaenys is one of the interesting ones, even though I don't like her. Being, like, she's, like, looking down and concerned in the sense of... Uh, I think the takeaway from that is, good God, look what being the monarch did. Look what, like, how much he's... Yeah. His life is just a disaster, and it's this horrors. Like, I wonder what would have happened if I really yeah, was. Yeah, maybe making... Rainis is thinking about what that would have done to her if she That's was the queen. Um, it's. Yeah, it's... I wonder if she's starting to think about what's going on here with Alicent and Otto as well. There's some realization there. Cause yeah, because there's she makes after that. a real public showing of the state of the series, which is probably kept away from most people. Um, even I think in episode one, when the wound on the back of the series happens, Otto says no one is to know about this. Like, so yeah, they're gonna want to keep it as secret as possible because it's the 
the whole thing of like if you keep the image of him in power and in charge but make all the decisions on his behalf then you have complete control essentially um yeah, and he gets to the steps, drops the crown, and, and Damon picks it up for him, and then he basically just lays everything out as straightforward as possible. They're legitimate, move the fuck on. He's Done. like, hey, I thought we worked this out. Why yeah, well... We to discuss a settled succession. <clears throat> that was almost a surprise yeah, but... to me, was that he said something that I, was, I didn't even necessarily think about. He was like, the only person who would have insight into this, more so than what we already had, would be Radice. Because she's like gonna have the most up-to-date information of Corliss. And what's cool is all the other characters saw her as a sort of she's a wild card, but she's not in control of anything, and then she's given full control, essentially. Yeah, that's cool. And yeah, she sides with uh the the blacks and, and takes the offer of marrying the two the two sons, which is interesting because in that moment, that offer was uh, really great, and it helps them uh, get that going. But then later on with uh, Boris Baratheon, they they can't offer anything in terms yeah. of marriage. I'm of not that. entirely sure why you would marry both of your daughters. I assume that was overcompensation. Sons. Yeah. Just being like, because yeah. Rhaenyra's desperate in that scene. She's, she's like, it's trying to sweeten the pot. Like, both of and them. I guess, you know, people die, and yeah. it's nice to have a backup. Well, hey, especially after what happened to later and later. Yeah. Don't worry, if mm -hmm. one of your beloved grandchildren die, you'll have another one that's still there. Although, it's a little weird to be to continue tying your family members to the same people who led to the deaths of your previous family members. Oh, well, isn't that why Rhaenyra refuses at first? She's like, I know you had something significant to do with Leno's death. She's just like, yeah. la 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 la. But then, yeah, Rhaenys makes the decision of like, well, I gotta throw my lot in with one of you fuckers. <laughs> like, yeah, and... So and She's not. She's not gonna get much out of because like Otto's already hitched his wagon to Vaymond, so that's not gonna work out for Rainey's. Yeah. Um, phenomenal scene, really tragic and uplifting all at the same time. And then it's followed up with the 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 scene they have like a whole meal, and it's again just a banger. The series, and I should say, Patty Considine expressing this desperation while showing that he's absolutely at his wit's end. He even comments on how I'm not going to walk among you for much longer, but I'm begging you. Uh, he says, not even for the crown, but for this old man, please oh, stop fighting. You so, dearly. so good. And it's, uh, this is the thing, this is episode 8 for you. It's just, everything is excellent in episode 8. Um, even when Damon chops off Vayman's head and says he can keep his tongue, that shit was fire as well. <laughs> Towards yeah. the end, when he's about to get carried out of the dinner scene, when he's just when it goes quiet and he's just looking around at everyone having a good time and sharing some companionship, once. Yeah, and you can cherish the gives. fact that it don't care if everyone dies. He got to die thinking that they'll be okay, and that's all he that matters. <laughs> through for a second yeah. before the the corruption that everyone had so ruined it through. Yeah, and it's and... it's done really well too because what makes it all fall apart again? It's like it's the kids. Why is that happening? Because of the fucking parents. Because they've been they have been raised on this idea of those guys over there. If you don't beat them, they're going to kill you. And meanwhile, the parents are finally sorting it out, kind of. Like, this is the uh, at the end of episode 8, you have Rhaenyra and Alicent have kind of managed to mend it. But the thing is, their kids will never. And you have... Yeah, they poison their kids for a decade. That snowball has so, tumbled too far. Kind of a problem, yeah. Well, yeah, it's just excellent, right? They, they put the pig down, and uh, Lucerus laughs. And so then Aemon says his speech, which is just fucking great as well. The, uh, the handsome, wise, and strong thing. He does yeah, it much clever, so much. much more clever <laughs> so than uh, than Vaymond. <laughs> Put it that way. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and then uh, he's he's taken to his uh to his room, and you just get this, like I was about to say extended scene, but I, I don't know. It's, it lasts as long as it should, I think, of him just in absolute agony, like labored breathing, struggling to. They even show like a tear coming out of you know, and, and it's just he's he's ruined and. Uh, he, uh... It's every motion and noise and just the design of his decrepit form, they really, really earn just his position in life. And even just every step he takes as he walks to the throne, like you can see the sheer lurching effort in it. Um, yeah, and he dies. And uh, they don't even like, it's not even explicit in terms of his death. You, you pick it up, you understand what's happening. Especially yeah. when he says no more. Uh, yeah, you feel nothing but fucking bad for him. 
poor guy. He's lasted so much longer than well, like was even expected. Because it's um, it's yeah, episode... I thought he would die in the jump, the time jump. I thought I was, I was like, oh, he's still here. All right. Yeah, because he totally collapses at the end dead. of episode five. A lot of people That's... expected that to be him dead. Yeah. yeah. It was funny watching people go, he's still alive? <laughs> yes, he <Yeah>. is. <laughs> well, as was said, the 10-year time jump, when you see him and his hazel god, he's lost an arm, you're like, oh, god, oh, jeez, you still... How you doing there, bud? He's still walking or something. Uh, yeah, like, it's, uh, the, whatever this stuff is, it's crawling up his face. You can see it in, like, uh, episode 7, and then episode 8, it's taken his eye and reduced, like, a lot of his skin down to the... It's, it's not great. But um, yes, I got uh, I got nothing but praise for the performance and the writing, and it, it, he alone yeah. is worth seeing the story unfold. The series mm. binds a lot of this story together. It feels like it's his story, and from what I gather, this is a dramatic improvement on the book. Oh yeah, he's barely a character in the book. Yeah, that's where same um, with Alicent, I would say. Yes, Alicent, uh, the series. I mean, Damon's pretty fleshed out, but Matt Smith, Matt, da Matt Damon, Targaryens. Yeah. Was Most able of the characters to... are a vast improvement, yeah. And what, what the show did was allow the actors, you know, to, to kind of build their own character. They, they, so, they, you can't imagine them as anyone else now. It's like Lord of the Rings casting, you know, it's just... Right? Yeah. So yeah. this is what happens in a professional production when you have, when you hire actors who are capable enough to come in and familiarize themselves with the source material so much so that they can make creative decisions with a character that are in line with the book to the point where the author of the book says, wow, you did better than I did. Uh, which which uh, is what George said to Viserys. Uh, and that's, that's, that's something we've missed for so long, dude. I mean, like, I, I, I still don't know if House of the Dragon is the greatest show ever made, but like compared to everything it's in right now, it just stands out like a sore thumb. And the fact that it came out, we said this a million times, along with Rings of Power, was uh, it was perfect. It was the universe unfolding. It's like, here you go. Here's something really bad, and here's something really good at the same time. Yeah, and there's so much right? to compare. Because yeah. yep. high-budget fantasy, they both want to leverage uh, histories that they're a part of, uh, even in a meta sense. And, it's just like, and look, at, look at the results, the absolute difference. And I also uh, like that House of Dragon started and ended around it almost like it like it ate rings of power it's it like... <laughs> i am extremely glad we spent um we spent how many efaps on rings of power like four four or five actually five? Yeah. four or five i can't tell it's all a blur of awful um yeah. and all we could it, to to watch rings of power and to watch this it is um it is a it it's just it's I don't even know how to describe it. The difference is vast. These are just on, in two entirely different levels of quality. They're not anywhere close to each other. Rings of Power is, is shit. And House of the Dragon is highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, the like best the, part of the story is Ryan Kendall and Miguel Sapochnik were supposed to do a Conan show for Amazon, and which would have been fucking awesome and they were canned by the woman who took over the rights uh you remind me who are those right? two people who made this they made oh the house okay they're the showrunners for house of the dragon and jennifer sulky sent them packing because conan was too masculine so they decided to and i'm sure this is purely a coincidence pick up a, a be handpicked by george to do a fantasy series that just so happened to come out at the same time as theirs did, but I'm sure it was a pure co coincidence. That's the thing. I, I kind of refuse to believe that all of that, like the timing That's got not... all of even down to the uh, having two episodes out before Rings of Power starts up, and then having their finale come after Rings of Power. That feels deliberate as well. It's you like... when you invest so much into a show, both Amazon and um, I get so it, it's HBO who's doing this show still. Are they still doing? Yeah. Yep. What's um, you you do wonder behind the scenes like how much each side was sweating in terms of you know the other show because before it's out you might have an idea of quality and viewership but you know there's always you know there's that always that element of being surprised. Well, and correct so me if I'm, I'm wrong. This show is still being watched, right? But Rings of Power has fallen off completely. Yeah. If we go by just people talking about it, no, I'm talking about like Nielsen ratings. Okay. 
the uh, yeah I, i've heard that the rings uh yeah I, i've heard that the house of the dragon viewership just kept it kept going and going and going and people kept jumping every episode on. was an increase on the last yeah. one it and had like that finale. top gun maverick <laughs> effect kind of going where everyone liked it and they told everyone to jump on the train and you know watch it well if they keep this up it'll it'll be able to reach certain heights that uh, they, they probably want I, I i don't think it'll be very difficult for them we'll to recapture see. After all the damage that was done, <laughs> done, yeah, that's that's a shadow that forever floats around them. If if House of the Dragon has a horrible ending, people are gonna be fucking pissed. Like you did well, it see, again. Is, the ending is already written. Yeah, like, but even let's be honest though, you could still fuck it up. Execution is everything. They they can yeah. still fuck it up, but I I think it'll be a lot Harder. easier for them to not. Right. The question there is. is yeah. Will will you like the ending? <laughs> that's the question. We'll see. I'll just, I, we'll see. I, I think I think, I think they're smart enough to know that. Then, like, will the ending be at all competent? Which I think it like has a much higher chance of being. Yes. We're still gonna absolutely. like find things to disagree about, though. I guess the question us book readers will still have is where do they end it? Because it just kind of meanders on. Hmm. That's a conversation for us to have in private. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, well, when so, yeah, it comes it... to ring, when uh, I when it comes to Rings of Power and House of the Dragon, for two, I'm extremely interested to see their second seasons, but for two completely different reasons. I'm very interested to see the next season of House of the Dragon because it's excellently written and there's a lot of awesome characters, and I'm genuinely invested and curious to see what they'll do with the story and the cast that they've put together. Now, with Rings of Power, I'm extremely curious to see what happens more of on a meta side, this element of do they, do they change their strategy completely? Do they, you know, what is their plan? Because you have to be concerned based on its reception and the fact that your, your primary competitor is beloved, um, which is a contrast to your own show. I mean, the reality of those two things, you know, you can deny it on social media and you could parade around as much as you'd like, but they know the truth at Amazon. They put too much money into this to, to to ignore you know the reality of it, so that's what good and bad quality sort of produces when it comes to interest Dude, and what happens next. I swear to God, if Rings of Power season two and House of Dragons season two happen at the same time again, like it'll actually just it'll just that, uh, it'll kill Rings of Power at that point. They wouldn't would do it. So they, they, they'd have to be crazy. I, I think House of the Dragon beats Rings of Power to season two. I mean, in terms of getting it out well, speed wise, because, uh, uh, like production, both of them. Yeah. I, I think it'll yeah, because be both of them are big productions, but it's more so a matter of with uh, uh, House of the Dragon, they probably know where they're going. Mm -hmm. There's got to be like a course correction <laughs> happening with Rings of Power, right? There has to be. Yeah, I would imagine kind. there is. You can't you'd spend you'd that think, much money yeah. and get such a lukewarm response and then continue with that. There's no way. There's no yeah. way. Dude, I mean, that, that in a vacuum, not even. Like, well, correct me if I'm wrong, though. It's already, um, nobody's talking about it. Rings of Power is, they've started filming that. Have they started filming for House of Dragon yet? Uh, uh, I'm not sure, still actually. Writing. Oh, you're right. I think you're right. Like, Rings of Power they're is still shooting. writing. But they're okay, going to film wow. pretty soon. And they have a lot of people who worked on Game of Thrones who turned this stuff around in like a year. Yeah, I was going to say, I think so, they, they are more prepared to turn it over. And my yeah. God, the, I imagine these actors know what they know their characters. So. But Should you guys are right, they're redoing things with Rings of Power, just real quick. Sorry, it's House of Dragon. No, it's, it's a fair comparison. They are, they are absolutely shedding themselves, and they're retooling things. And that's going to add six months, eight months, maybe a year to their production. Yeah. I still don't believe we'd see significant change until season three, because season two is going to have, like, you know, Probably. residue. Yeah. Significant residue. It's got how season one residue in. on it. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Much, you can see dirty. How much we can write it down before we can watch like, it? Right, they they started shooting in October, it's the beginning Shagman. of October. So there's already they're already like two months into filming. There's only so much that you can change while your production is locked in with like actors and yeah locations but and stuff. So now yeah. they know how badly it went. They're probably already planning for season three to change it up quite a bit, and then season two Why will do they... badly as well. <laughs> Because it'll be shit. Uh, <laughs> and then they'll be like, how oh, could no. they not have seen? How could they not have seen that like what he, they had was just not that like I don't get it. I my my theory that I have is that the people who are actually creating, writing, and, and making the show, 
they have their own idea of what a good show is and mm. the information that gets passed from them to the executives is not going to be what reality is. They're going to say, you know, we're doing all of this. We got this cast mm. together. It's very diverse. We got these writers who they're, they're great. I mean, everyone on sets having such a good time. That's that's da. We spent all this money in it. The guys in the CGI dungeon are working their hearts off. We're doing all this stuff and we got the music in it. And, and so they're, they give this, th this Wait, version of the show. Yeah, exactly. And so you, they tell that to the executives who aren't actually creating the show, making the show being on set and supervising this project closely and they go oh excellent uh they're glad to hear it things seem to be going really really well they they keep writing the checks and then it comes out um how much of it this... was the fact that it was they thought it was a sure thing only to realize oh that well, no no it's not you know to an extent as yeah, well the people who the i think that comes into it yeah people who have all of the money i could see the, those kinds of people not actually being as invested in storytelling at all to the point where they could watch for example house of dragon season one and game of thrones season eight and be like yeah so which is the bad one be like oh, oh. damn good <laughs> like because they were like yeah. oh, this is all the same shit at dragons least, there, people there doing the backstabbing like a resurgence of um season eight apologia gross. <laughs> stop yeah gross stop it <laughs> There's no need. We all know. We know what happened. We accept it. We're moving on. Um, speaking of moving on, actually, yeah. If we, so we've got Amon and Lucerius left. Um, Amon is fantastic for how much I time love we Aemond get. So Absolutely much. insane. He's so cool. Every last second of his screen time was worthwhile. You learn so much about him so quickly. He um he comes in what like episode six. He's properly yeah. introduced just as a kid. And he like rises the ranks so quickly, especially when the reintroduction in episode eight. Like um Christ, he's 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 such a comes across as such a like a like a individual person, like an absolutely unique element into this world that you can't wait to see clash with everything. Fucking look in his eye. Yeah, this <laughs> actor holy shit, they cast him well. <laughs> he's so cool. <laughs> And I really like the uh, the fact that you've already got, and you don't have to say anything, okay? I'm speaking strictly as a show watcher. They seem to be building up that he is the equivalent of Damon, but and they they these two could have easily been best of buds. The fact that they're on opposite sides feels like we're uh, we may be leading somewhere, especially uh, that moment where he rips into the the strong boys and uh, Damon is like, you know, guys, guys, calm down. And looks back and over it, uh, and they have like a stare down, the two of them. And I think there's even a level of respect they both have for each other. Because when Damon cuts off Vayman's head, uh, Abed is like, by the way, these names, fucking hell. <laughs> um, Abed is like impressed, but then simultaneously, I think Damon is relatively impressed with how much Eamon just fucked with everybody in that room at that meal scene without having to do much of anything. He he's even like laughing when he gets punched, right? Yeah. Uh, he's for the ride yeah, also no the sapphire eye the eye patch was good oh, enough yeah. mate but that was just killer too <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. um yeah it's gonna be fun like they got the right actors that it's setting it up they're gonna take their time with it you know you mentioned uh oh, i'm sorry somebody mentioned earlier that they could have fucked up damon five ways to sunday and this is the kind of character that from the source material modern hollywood would just turn into a an idiot or to toxic, you know, uh, even when they said this, even when there was hints that this show would be a study in toxic masculinity, instead, it, 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 it wasn't. That was, again, creatives just repeating marketing shit. Thankfully, in this case, sometimes it's not. Or all oh, yeah, dude, I hated not. listening to people talk about their own work with this one. It dude. happens every once in a while, but we, yeah. We were watching the show together, and we'd like, as soon as the post-show thing, you'd be, I'll stop. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I don't need them infecting the show. The show um, speaks right. for itself. The like yeah. technical production behind the seasons documentary was pretty interesting. In the hell the Dragon is built. Great. Absolutely brilliant. The the dragons look great. Uh, uh, Viserys' makeup was fucking incredible. Just towards the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Technically, this thing was tits. It was perfect. It was so good compared to, especially compared to other shows. Well, dude, we uh, might even try and fetch it when we talk about it. We'll talk about the the final scene, sort of to round out talking about this whole show. But um, 
Vagar just throughout this is fucking awesome. So many really cool fantasy shots with uh, that beast of a dragon. And I say that as if it's the only one, but you've got Vermithor has their own sort of amazing oh, scene as so a dragon cool. as well. And for the sake, yeah. I just can't resist mentioning it. Such cool names for dragons. So cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not called, it's, you know, they're not I, called when like. I was recording my, um, my like beginner's guide to House of the Dragon video, and I was just recording the names of dragons. My favorite thing, I was just saying Vermithor over and over because it's so fun yeah. to say. <laughs> yeah. It radiates power, doesn't it? Yeah, the post, uh, the post show things would have been great if Gel Sapochnik just hadn't talked at all. Uh, and the guy's like a talented director. Like he's good at what he does. But man, yeah, his, his best stuff is great. He's just got a problem with light, <laughs> which is a problem bad with... problem to have as a director. Of hey. Yeah, <laughs> a little problem with light. Yeah, <laughs> just a little. And he seems to have um great contempt for the audience. A little bit. Yes, I think yeah. After all the shit he got for his uh for the long night, he probably hates them. <laughs> he did. Um, he, did. he got shit. I wonder why. He, I wonder why he bailed out. Uh, I'm curious. I, I'm wondering if. Brought him in for a season to kind of get things off the ground if that was the case or he just got burned out on it thought it would be a good idea again because after he did the long night and this is before the criticism he did an interview on just all it was was complaining how hard it was it's like, you probably got okay. burnt out yeah it happens like um you got all kinds of when when create like i i mean it's kind of a famous one in a, in a sense but when joss whedon's offered the two biggest marvel avengers movies of all time and he says no you're like wait what not like the best career move ever, and it's like yeah, I just hated working with them. Same for John Favreau back in the day. Not so much yep. these days. Nope. <laughs> Weird, because all of his work's become shit since then too. I don't know. What's what are you on? talking oh, about? Favreau. I love the Lion King 2019. <laughs> I, I love characters that by it was definition funny. don't have any expression. I don't know if it, was, it was either real BBC or Friday Tides. I think it was real BBC. Where I was talking about how he fucked the Lion King, and I remember someone in chat being like, "He didn't make the Lion King. He made the Jungle Book." Like, no, you made both of them. <laughs> he made, yeah. he made both. Yeah. He's yeah. also responsible and for Mandalorian. And yeah. Da, 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 and Book Boba Fett is the producer, right? Oh, boy. He has, yeah, he's got his fingers in Kenobi and Boba Fett, I'm pretty Meanwhile, sure. Was he, yeah, was he have you seen on Chef? Andor at all? I don't know if he has anything to do with Andor. That would be interesting to find oh, out, actually. Let me, <laughs> let me Google right now. Uh, yeah, John, I know about uh, Chef. Yeah, Chef is, uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. It's about his, it, they think it's about his experience on Iron Man 2. Yeah, and then look what happened. It's hard for me to take Chef seriously if this is, like, he needs to make another movie now called Sellout, I guess. I don't know. It's, uh, let me see. Uh, Control F. He's not involved. It says, uh, but Luke is no longer grasping the reins, and Andor, not a John Favreau and Filoni joint, but a Gilroy creation through and through, seems to understand that Star Wars makes the most enduring impact on its audiences when it isn't afraid to leave it in darkness. We'll see. We haven't seen it yet. We'll see. So far, well, the thing is, the dark, it's so pretty good, but we'll we'll see. It's easy for it to beat out. Of my eyes closed over uh, looking at my eyelids because I'm bored to fucking death watching that show. Sorry, I didn't like it. <laughs> Hey, well, it, it, what, would you would you give it a second chance if I watch all of it and say it ain't too bad at the end? <laughs> would that give you reason to try? You know I trust you, so yeah, <laughs> I would. But uh, I'm not gonna like. I just don't care. I don't care. I just, I've just been told by so many people that you got us. You got to see the rest of it. Apparently, it's the best thing Disney have made for Star Wars. But that really isn't I mean, saying I, a lot. Yeah. I could believe that. Yeah, I absolutely believe that. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's easy to believe. Yeah, it feels like it was made it's by better humans. than Solo. It does. It feels like it was. <laughs> by humans it feels so like there low. was a story there yeah yeah I'll exactly. watch, you know what i'll watch arcane first there you go chat oh, do, it. Yeah, do, do it. it yes do it watch do it watch arcane i'll watch it uh over the next week i've got a little free yeah, time so. do it good Excellent. we'll play ragnarok Fantastic. do that too <laughs> oh yeah no okay if you got uh, several hours to spare several 50 you really should you should, yeah, you should, you should watch you should watch arcane it'll be faster yeah. um watch all right what else is there to say about Amund? he's great so great uh when Eamon is yeah um we haven't talked about the transition from the child actors to adult actors well so i was actually just gonna say there was gonna be a general sort of topic about the transition of the 10 year gap um wow all the choices kind were of, pretty yeah. solid <laughs> like yeah i was very pleased to see all of the actors that 
because they nailed it on the two things you need to do. Obviously, you have to have the believability of the appearances that the the child that you saw becomes this new actor that they nailed. And then also those actors are all really good. I uh, I can't believe that I went from being like, oh no, I really liked Rhaenyra and Alicent though. I don't know, I don't know about these new guys. Uh, Olivia Cook impressed me really quick. Uh, it's funny as well because like I don't know her from really anything else except fucking Ready Player One. <laughs> Ready Player One, yeah. <laughs> Which uh, is, uh, but like in this, um, man, yeah. does she does she do a lot of eye acting? You could you could get a real sense of what she's feeling from a lot of how she's uh, expressing herself there and. Yeah, uh, I I got convinced pretty quickly that we'd be fine with with the changeover actors. Just reassuring as hell. Though I would say it's kind of funny. Uh, you can see from this graphic as well that I got on screen that you have like you look at uh, the old and new for some of these people, and you're like, oh, I can see why they cast them. That kind of looks, you know, but and then you see like, wow, some of these That's people they, they didn't they didn't <laughs> age them at all. They just look exactly the <laughs> same. Uh, Kristen Cole, Matt Smith, Otto Hightower, like all of them did change from episode one to uh, the end. I much. think Otto looks a bit older. He looks a little bit older. Um, but that, yeah. What What are you Otto, sort of thinking looks about? Identical. It's kind of like the same thing with those X Men movies. How it started in the sixties and ends in the nineties, and they look exactly the same. Well, look at like uh, except that one's actually all us as well, right? Longer. They could have. Yeah. Made Corliss' whole beard white or something like that. but Well, considering how much of a transformation they did for Viserys, it's kind of, yeah. Well, to be fair, he's also got the leprosy thing going on, but I would That's just, true, but... Yeah. Uh, I think the biggest sin probably is uh, is is Kristen Cole. He, he just... Yeah. <laughs> He looks like he's 28 Dang. the whole show. <laughs> Those are good Westerosi... Uh, you know, pleb jeans right there. That's mm. that's all you Alice's need. Perfection provides gave him like a couple to the of laws of reality as well as you know. One thing I think is pretty cool is uh, if you look at um, Lionel and Beesbury, they they both got a really decent sort of uh, transitionary ten year age up. Yeah. Like uh, it's because they were already old. Yeah. <laughs> they well, just that's the thing. You, up. you know, you say yeah. that, but like you could have done that with Otto, but they just sort of didn't. Like and, that and level then, of a yeah. moving on. Same with Corliss. Same with um. You know, like Damon is just they just they were like, nah. <laughs> we're not gonna fuck with him, it's fine, just leave it. Um and that's the thing. I, I wouldn't even I believe he plays Damon differently in the earlier years to the later years, it's just that uh, I wonder if there was something they could have done to sort of separate them in terms of age, because we are talking what a twenty year difference and he looks exactly the same. <laughs> that's the same for a couple of them. But yeah, so simultaneously it's like, okay, you, you didn't really do much there. And some people look at Tom Cruise, right? He can kind of convince you over twenty years that he's not really aged much at all. But uh it's Kristen Cole is the Tom Cruise of Westeros. That's what he is. But I would just go as far as saying at that point it's a missed opportunity, right? It helps us distinguish that time has passed really well. There's no reason not to do it, sort of thing. And and in the in the examples they did do it, I think they did really well. It's such a ballsy creative move. You got this show. That's following the disaster, like the biggest dis television disaster of all time. It's going up mm -hmm. against another fantasy series. You're changing two of your main actors, and they were incredibly, the younger actors were incredibly popular. And we were even saying, man, this is it. Like, this, yep, this we decided decide. you know, the show survives or not. And they freaking nailed it, man. Uh, you know, you say it, you say it very casually, but I guess when you think about it, Game of Thrones really was the biggest disaster in all television. Yeah, like we just sort of accept that as a reality, yeah. but it sort of bears you know, emphasis. I think that that's probably true. Gary, you'd probably want to do an honorable mention for Doctor Who at least, right? If not, yeah, because yeah, but like cultural impact. I mean, as far as fans, like Game of Thrones had more fans than Doctor Who. That's that's probably I, what like I would say Doctor Who's like the worst destruction of an intellectual property I've ever seen. Like ever, ever anything, even Star Wars or it's Star pretty Trek. Bad. Game of Thrones yeah, it's... Game of Thrones was is the biggest thing in the world as far as genre, scripted television. Everybody was watching it. And Everybody was loving it. it. And they freaking murdered it, man. They, God. And it was, it was, uh, it was showrunners who, uh, once they got, I mean, we've gone over this before, but once they got past the source material, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. And we, and we find out later, they even admitted it. And it was the crew. They had such a solid crew there that, you know, the HBO crews are experienced. They've been doing this stuff for a long time. They're very good at what they do. And they were carrying these guys. Well, it's like, uh, and they were actual dictators, you know, you who didn't this... even show up. 
enormous, well-oiled machine that's got all of these crazy components that are all of the highest quality working at the maximum speed, and then you just dropped a grenade in there. It's like, why? Yep. And that's in the form of the writers. They ruined everything. Because everything is upstream, or downstream, sorry, from writing. Uh, it, it, you hamper everybody's ability to represent the story if you make the fucking foundational script shit. I have never seen something so explosively disappear from yeah. the popular zeitgeist <laughs> as, like Game of Thrones you know did. Relatively comparable. Not it's not the same thing, but just I feel like I've noticed that Rick and Morty went from being incredibly influential yeah. to like non-existent. Yeah, I don't even hear much about it right now. Nobody talks about it. Really weird. It's um, happening right now, and it's like, yeah, nobody cares. But at well, least I mean, I'm sure some people care, but you know, it was the Szechuan sauce, right? Is oh yeah, that, ended it? that was. Uh, well, that was that was the hype uh, of season. Was that season three? Three. That yeah. was when it was like yeah, it was the most popular. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Meanwhile, like Game of Thrones is bad ending. This is the thing. Like Lord of the Rings has endured for two decades more, even, uh, and it will. The movies I'm being specific about now, obviously the books have been doing for fucking ages, but um, Game of Thrones is a show, it's hard to recommend it. It's complete, and it's hard to recommend it. you just like, eh. If you ended well, people will be sharing it forever. That's how it works. Because Star Trek. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Go watch TNG, well. <laughs> go watch Voyager, yeah, yeah. go watch Team Space Nine. Yeah, yeah. It's so That's funny, no matter what fucking franchise I choose, it's like, well, you don't mean the modern stuff. I said, like, no, no, I, I mean... No, of course <laughs> not. We, we mean, Doctor we mean the oh, old shit. good things, yeah. 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 <laughs> because at least with Star Trek, unlike Game of Thrones, it has, like, completed... You could, you could call them series um, among many series. Like, uh, Game of Thrones was one yes. big thing, so it's just a mess. That's the problem with Doctor Who as well, right? Like, it's, like, it's hard to or lines sometimes you usually do it between doctors or showrunners um but yeah much easier to do it with star trek not as easy with game of thrones to the point where you go by season and then even then you have people drawing lines all over the place i personally don't want to venture into season five ever again it's really hard to do that with a show that has such strict continuity in telling a yeah. single story because you get to the yeah, end of you can't season just say four. oh yeah just stop watching it season four it's like well then just why bother the why bother watching it all like I yep. still have my investment, and the promise that it becomes bad isn't going to make my investment go away. If well, you get plenty of people gift. like, well, hey, maybe I'll enjoy it, though. You know, it might not yeah. be that bad. Well, I, I want to see it anyway, and if that was enough for, if that promise of it's going to get bad was enough to kill their investment, they wouldn't have watched it in the first place. So mm. they watch up to season eight, and then buy a gun. That's yeah. Gotta... so impressively Metaphor. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> It really is. Um, and it, yeah, it, you can't help but think about it because you're like, they actually do it? We could have been at the point of saying, someone's like, what do you think of House of Dragons? Like, yeah, just another shit season of a shit fantasy show they're trying to re relaunch. It wasn't very good. Or it was boring or whatever. But no, they've come through enough that we all were like, actually, no, this is pretty pretty good worth talking about and it has payoffs in it that are pretty unique and powerful. And uh, there's no reason why they couldn't keep doing that. Um, but yeah, so... The last person to really talk about, especially the scenes they share together, would be adding Lucerius into this conversation. And I think they, with the very little time they had of him, you characterize him as someone unlike almost everyone else, who his view on succession and inheritance is that of, I don't want any of it because it'll have to mean someone died for me to have it. Someone I care about, mm. someone in my family, which is like, oh my god, has anyone else ever expressed that perspective in <laughs> all of Westeros? Has that even happened? <laughs> um... And yeah, and he's the one that gets killed. The one who's like, I don't want to engage with a lot of this because it means people I love will die. Um, brave little boy. And he, becomes, and he becomes the one, the loved one who dies that makes things happen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and he took his, you know, it's like, uh, he, you know, he, he wants to be involved at the same time. You know, he wants to, he doesn't want to feel useless. He's, he's kind of like his brothers in that way. Brothers yeah. in that way. Um, well, when when uh, Rhaenyra gives them sort of their tasks, you can tell they're very much like we're going to come through for you. We're going to do this right. This is important. Um, yeah, the, the, we've we've had conversations about whether or not that was a a wise choice from Rhaenyra. I'm going to go with no. Um, sending her very young children on their very young dragons to places that are potentially hostile, while being told that they're being treated with the other side at the same time. The especially it was a Storm's risky End. Move. The Storm's End is not far away from very dangerous places. Um, 
you know, go, sending him it, further north feels safer than sending him south is kind of what I'm getting. Comes down to something you don't want to have to acknowledge, which is the dragon travel being kind of bullshit. You mean... In what way, sorry? Because I'm not going to disagree, uh, but yeah. Okay, so them traveling alone is dependent upon dragons being a thing. It, and dragon travel being something that you can do to get between places, especially considering... Uh, I don't know if... This is, I guess, book knowledge, but Westeros is freakishly huge. It right. is mm -hmm. absurdly massive. Um, so the amount of time it would... Unless the dragons are obscenely fast to the point of killing their riders, the amount of time it would take to get there would necessitate stopping at least once along the way, which means that oh, yeah. you still need to have a royal entourage or just you know, an entourage of some description at all. So the only thing enabling the idea of dragon travel to get from place to place really quickly like this is the idea that they can, you know, it's like a car ride that can get there in an afternoon or whatever. Which yeah. isn't really feasible. And West that's Rose what is puts the size them in of... such danger. Yeah, it's the size of South America, pretty much. Big boy. Westeros. And uh, the George has always had like uh, this is going to sound bad size issues. Uh, uh, Shat point <laughs> points this out. You can't. It's because he's capital. fat. What do you mean? Yeah, how Maybe. could you? Yeah. That's yeah. kind of. But you know. uh, you're right. You're right. That that there's parts of uh, this fantasy that's supposed to like be the nuts and bolts and answer the questions that like Tolkien didn't like that doesn't. It just flat out gets stuff wrong. And it's gonna uh, yeah, and it creates more problems as it goes along, and it yeah. doesn't keep all this stuff in in track. But um, yeah. Him, you can see what's probably going to happen when this season's coming to an end, and she's like, "You guys go off on your own." And Otto's already said we're we're dealing with some of the others as well, offering them stuff. And then uh, he even gets, I think, focus at the beginning. Um, Lucerus, he's looking at Driftmark, and he's saying like, "I don't know if uh, like me leading armies is ridiculous because I don't know anything about it." And stuff like that, and then her reassuring him and being like, "Don't worry, you know, I I had to deal with stuff that I wasn't ready for." She's like, "Uh oh, get a little bit of screen time. He's on his own. It's flags. all rainy." And then we get the. I'm gonna actually go grab him now, but the uh, uh, Vagar is particularly fucking cool in this episode. They took advantage of uh, having a giant dragon. Let's put it that way. Probably yeah, they were do. really lucky that they managed to get her in the cast. <laughs> <laughs> they they chose well, you know. Of all the dragons yeah. that were on offer, they pick, they they cast plenty of small dragons, but uh, they, they cast one of them big ones, grandma dragon. Um, Body positivity. Oh, well, she she's got a bit of she's got a bit of flab going, but she's like a million years old. So I love that BBD, dude. That looks so the that looks so good though. That was like a I okay, Nick. Yep. All of it was pretty damn good. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the I think was it free. You mentioned it when we first watched it, but the color scheme on uh, the Lucerus's dragon, like really cool. And it's um. gone. <laughs> That's it. It's dead. But yeah, this this shot in particular, having like this is what I mean. Though. It's like why does this shot so fucking cool? And it's like it was probably because it's a um, a binding of absolute fantasy with things we're more familiar with, like a building, a castle. Then you just have this fucking giant lizard in the background leering over it. You're just like, oh, God. Well, that's it's the value of having all of those uh, objects and buildings in the foreground. Just gives us a sense of the scale of this dragon. Yeah, enormous, fucking insane. And you get that Vagar too. Um, when Aemond claims Vega, you see like that he has to climb. He scales her like a building. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. That's, see, yeah, that's where they nailed it with the stuff with the fantasy imagery. That and you know, Damon walking out, uh, walking out of the cave after he uh, cuts, you know, cuts in half the crab feeder, and the dragons are flying in the background. Yeah. That looks so fucking cool. That's like why I watch this stuff. I love it. Oh, you definitely <laughs> love those moments. Spectacle. I'm trying to find I that. Fucking love Caraxes so much. He's so Red dumb. Noodle. The neck is so dumb. He's, he's a noodle dragon, it. but uh, yeah, he's, a, he's a big, he's a very spicy unique design. Noodle boy. I wonder, um, favorite. because the, I wonder if I would, I would hate the design if the show was really bad, or if I'm very much in favor of the noodle <laughs> dragon, just because it's, I just like the show a lot anyway. So, because uh, yeah, no, he's such a unique dragon. Weird windy way he always takes off and flies. Yeah, he's floopy. He's, yeah, he's, he's so goofy. <laughs> 
That was a cool moment, by the way. When when Eamon uh, first starts riding Vega, um, Damon is watching it in the skies, and uh, I think Rhaenyra spots it and says, who's riding it? Because it's like, yeah, that has incredible repercussions as to whoever is riding yeah. that dragon. Dragons are vaguely analogous to nukes, but, you know, not one use. It's like someone just went and got the biggest one. Someone just went and picked up a fucking Zar bomb or whatever. Yep. There's yeah, the and that's why Otto for. is like, ah, oh, cool. That's good. I for best dragon? Cool, we take those. That's the thing. It, it, it was so, like, even with the limited time they had, they set up exactly what kind of person Aemond is, and he's like, I, I believe he'd be like, he knew he could die doing this, but that's how much he wants this dragon. Yeah, he's, he's defined by his dragonlessness to, uh, up to this point. And he has one the of the coolest the ones. Yeah, um, and and it seemed to me the scene of Vega flying around was like, really want to be the the dragon rider. Let's see if you could deal with it. And then came through, and so Vega's like, "All right, you're kind of cool. I'll give it to you." Pretty young, but you know, I like this guy. He's all right. Yeah, and uh, and funnily enough, uh, I want to set this up a little bit before we see what happens. But uh, Viserys, when he first talks to Rhaenyra properly about like inheritance and stuff, and her becoming um, the queen. He talks about the dragons, and he says, uh, "You know, people think we have control over them, but we really don't." Yeah, and uh, yep. that line is super important for this scene. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, and th this is what I was looking for. Seems like oh, you mean, meddling you mean with these guys was a mistake. <laughs> you mean set, they set something up for much later in the show, and then didn't like describe it to us what? on screen? I feel very confident what? that's going to do a lot going forward. Just the idea yeah. that oh, oh that man, shot we should is so good. Directors. Yeah, this is one of the yeah, best shots is... in the entire show. It's so amazing. Like uh, oh, they made they made oh, a jaw scene in the sky. Like yes. they do so well They're... to leverage yeah. Vega's sheer scale. So scary. <laughs> like, it's so yeah, it is pretty terrifying. Yeah. Um. And yeah. And and you discover quickly that Aemon is looking to fuck with with him. That's it. He doesn't want to kill him. Yep. To screw them because that means bad, bad, bad things happen. Yeah, the, the, the very, is... very tenuous situation explodes, even just beyond the tenuous situation. Kin slaying is not a good, that is a... Not yeah. Good. Eamon just wants to do a bit of trolling, but gets out of hand. They got to get a bit too seriously, yeah. yeah and uh, we can talk about it, right? <laughs> but like, I, I did like the way this scene unfolded in terms of uh, the absolute stress and anger that the smaller dragon's going to be feeling. And uh, being made to be... is It's like a top-of-the-chain predator, a dragon, but it's made to feel like a fucking mouse in this scene. Um, you have, like, all those emotional things going on, and, of course, the panic for the dragon rider. And so it takes a pot shot at Vagar. And Vagar, despite being the most mature dragon available right now, probably, is like, did you seriously just fucking attack me? You know who I am? <laughs> like, that sort of thing. <laughs> and he so said, he... there is a tempest in me! Yep. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, I just think it's all set, and both the riders are like, don't, no, you stop, listen, like, and they're just both panicking in the scene, because the dragons, dragons have got their own intentions in this scene. Um, and yeah, uh, it's so fucking sad. He gets this moment of rising above the storm. It's pretty chill, and we get this pause, just relaxing and almost heavenly moment, and then it just cuts him with... Uh, unfortunately, the other dragon is here. And, uh... Um, nope. Yeah, it just chews it apart, and all the pieces fall down. It's such a, like, oh, Jesus Christ. Dragon came apart like fucking tissue paper. Yeah. Jesus Christ. And I especially love, this is, like, the first time we ever see Aemond looks fucking distraught. Did you, yeah. Right before that, though, I love that it chews it apart, and there's guts flying in the air, and it grabs some more guts on the way. <laughs> and then it goes into this shot. It's like, and then he's all, oh shit. It's like two Oops. layers to this. It's like, holy oh, shit, he just killed that guy. Then there's, oh my, oh, oh, that's really bad. I, I, I want to see what he did when he got home. Did I, he just I, go I, like, man, I, mom, mom, I, I, mom, I, mom, I, I accidentally a civil you, war. Man? I, I could totally see him I being like, well, it it's going to get discovered, so I may as well just own it. It's like, yeah, I uh, I got some news. <laughs> like, yeah, you're not going to like have, it. I may have so done a kill. Bad news. I secured the Baratheon alliance, and I killed Viserys. 
Double Silver good news. Lining. Turns out that'll really Yesterday. come in handy. But they're like, you killed who? And he's like, I really think you're ignoring the Baratheon thing. I feel like that's not being addressed. <laughs> Mom, why are you always no focusing on the negative? Jeez, Mom. You're always a glass half empty kind of person. <laughs> come on. Oh, man. That shot of all the pieces just falling as well. It's like, oh, you tore him up completely. And yeah, uh, the show ending on that moment of Rhaenyra getting the news, and uh, I think it can sometimes for an actor, actress, whatever, be difficult to pull off a face like this, but I think she kind of nailed it. You get an impression of like, oh geez, she's gonna kill everybody. The fire in the background as well. Yeah, which apparently this was all Matt Smith's idea, this scene, right? Yeah. There was a different plan at first, but he suggested something really you know straightforward the... and powerful. Yeah. You know what um... the plan was, originally? Was it something to do with Cyrax? I have no clue. I'm just asking out of curiosity what I they remember changed reading, it from. It had something to do with it, a plan to do with her dragon, right? It was going to be... Does anyone... Gliders, you'd know. You know everything. Come on. Um, I'm just making sure I'm right about this before I speak on it. Right. I won't. Well, that, um... That's not acceptable. <laughs> that's not acceptable. Sorry. Well, that's, just... that's, that's unprecedented. Yeah, just affirm whatever and be right. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure there's I, a like big epic speech that she does. A conversation, yeah. I thought there was a conversation of sorts. Uh, and, and they, they completely cut that. Out. It's just her looking at the camera, and I think it's way more powerful. Oh, it's just oh, it's you great. get to draw it all out yourself. You know exactly what this is. It's you've you've drawn yeah, first no blood. It's over. To, this is war. Uh, stipulate on what she's thinking. You can see what she's thinking. Uh, it's, it's subtlety. Yeah. Uh, you get, to, you get to think all about it. Especially Damon doesn't seem to be... In this moment, it looks like he's deferring to her anger. Like, he's going to be pissed off, but it's going to be nothing compared to what she's going to feel. And he, like, backs off. He's like, yep, I already know what this means. Sort of. I can't wait for season two. Oh, it's going to be really, really, really fucking fun. Especially if a trailer comes out and baits the kind of payoffs we're expecting. It's going to be like, well, time to get the gag back together. <laughs> it's nice to have things to look forward to. Well, yeah, because Arcane Season 2, I'm going to be really excited for. Aren't you, Theo? Oh, yeah. I'm oh, fucking terrified. I'm in the waiting room. <laughs> in the waiting room. Watching every uh, additional piece of content for LOL to see if it gives away anything about what Arcane will be like. You're hoovering up whatever the material they put out. Yeah. Uh, um, I suppose this I'm not going to spoil anything, but scenes happen. There's Whoa. other things happen. Whoa, in the in Events? The events will happen and there's certain events that they saved for season two that i was worried they would rush towards in season one that they didn't and i'm ultimately very grateful for that because i think you mean when off. those guys do those things when those guys do those things and the things happen uh that's uh yo i love those things happen you guys spoiled the one thing i didn't yo, want to be spoiled. pride rock <laughs> sources have told yeah, me things great. will happen I now know that the guys are going to do the things right Ruined. Thanks. Impossible to I recover. The show. Um, sorry. Yeah, I'm the production sorry. design, fantastic sound design, the acting, the soundtrack, the choice of arcs for all these different characters, all of the ways they interact. The the one thing I, I I've seen people say was lacking in the show was that the world didn't feel that big, but the fact is like the story didn't take place in many areas. They didn't like King's Landing was like the big one, and then Dragonstone was like secondary. Um, yeah, you have to infer. A, anyway. You have to infer a bunch about just what happens elsewhere, but it's not like super impactful in any real way. They focus on the places they need to. If something important happens somewhere, then we'll be. You know, yeah, and I guess this kind of story, almost everything that's of importance happens in you know these castle places or you know keeps and things. So I think they've proven themselves at this point, and so we could probably expect an expansion when we hit season mm. two and three and stuff. They'll go to different places. How it would be nice. Rises. It would be nice. Mm, Get some new scenery. Happen. Imagine if we're getting a war. There needs to be, you know, battles fought in the war, which necessitates going around a bit. Necessitates going around a bit. Yeah, maybe they'll visit. Visit. visit some castles. Maybe <gasps> you never know. Winterfell. I know that one. Pride Rock. Thimble Winterfell. Which one's Winterfell? <laughs> the one with the big. Uh, it has like a oh, snowball well. on it. Oh, cold one. because yeah. winter fell and the snowball winter going. fell over. Oh, that's another oh, yeah. thing, Gary. It'd be Stranger Things season yeah. five. Hopefully, that's good. We'll not know. Uh, yeah, we'll see. They're, they're working on that, so yeah. I 
I wonder if it's going to be like short and split season again, or we'll see. Since it's the last one, it's definitely going to be something I'll check out because I just want to see what happens, you know. I'm just very happy that David Harbour will be filming that and Thunderbolts simultaneously. Whoa. Uh, no, it, I cannot wait for Thunderbolts. Thunderbolts, Thunderbolts is Thunderbolts? my favorite of all the bolts. What is it? You don't know what it is? What's Thunderbolts? I don't know what Thunderbolts are. Well, you know it's, Ghost, uh, right? Thunderbolts, the dog from, uh, he's the hero dog from 101 Dalmatians. Yeah, it's Marvel Suicide Squad. Oh, I mean, it's, it's going to be shit. Dog. What? Yeah. You guys, I thought you liked. I'm sorry. I, forever, I, no, I, I said it was going to be the shit. It's going to be amazing. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That would be shit. Anything else anyone wants to say in general about House of the D? I oh, mean, go I am Rainies. kind of miss the. Oh, oh right. yeah, are we? Right. 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 Sorry. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> Let's end things on a high note. That's too, yeah. R that's sad actually to bring this Rainies up now. Accidentally piloting this... a dragon through the roof. Fucking hell. Listen, yeah. just close your eyes and think of Viserys. It's um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Rainey, dragon was in inverted controls. Okay, Rainey's was kind of interesting to me, and then she was not, and uh, not at all. Yeah. Um, she really talked a big game about how you know these men they'll watch the realm burn instead of you know. Men would sooner put the realm to the torch than see a woman ascend the Iron Throne, and your father is no fool. And then you have Alison saying, "Back to her, we need to direct and you know." push men to make sure they don't engage in severe violence and she says like a queen needs to take care of her people she says something like that i hate <laughs> listening to those fucking words when they have that as an ending for a, episode woman, a woman will just as soon break through a wall and kill thousands of peasants than take the proper exit fucking to kill that many so, people just to make like a power play i've actually heard the defense there's no other way out and it's like how could there be no other way out that's the way he fucking sense at all. <laughs> Why stay no, there every forever? Every time a dragon leaves the pit mold of it, like, they have it. to it's rebuild scary. the temple. <laughs> the construction costs are through the fucking roof. Why? No, and there's no union or anything. Just yeah, it's, get it's one just, Targaryen just... king or the other. Be like, why did we make it like this? And why do we because keep it's rebuilding tradition, it like damn it. <laughs> Absolutely fucking nuts. Yeah, she. The whole episode is filled with crazy contrivances. She never should have been able to get to a dragon. It's a plot point that she can't. He's like, where did she get her armor? Wait, she left it by the dragon. Everyone does that because the armor looks very, very cool. So we need to have yeah. her an armor like Galadriel. Um, I also think it's dumb as fuck that she didn't burn all of them. To be honest with you, especially the character. And then for her reasoning, you you can t sort of think of the reasoning yourself. But then she claims her reasoning is that she, it was not her right to start the war. Oh. Her reasoning is terrible, but I don't think burning them all is actually a legitimate like, option. I think it is. They've already put a crown on You burn on them all, on. and your the line, and everyone vaguely related to you is, like, scum forever. For like, yeah, uh, so yeah, the rest to be of fair, they don't do a good deal. enough job of even implementing that in Game of Thrones, I don't think. Like, they, they need agree. to really True. play that True, up compared because to... because Euron kills his family, Cersei kills her family, yeah. uh, Alaria kills her family... To the casual watcher, kinslaying isn't even a thing. Exactly. Uh, but secondly, yeah. this uh, I think Rhaenys is the kind of person to know that if she wipes them out here and now, then it saves shit tons of lives. Um, unfortunately, she just killed shit tons of people. <laughs> everyone in that room that needed to die <laughs> lived, and everyone who needed to live died. With the rationale yep. she gives for it, it's the most balked power play ever. Like She, <laughs> right. she comes out with making this huge grandiose statement of like, yeah... That that's a symbolic like rejection of the offer that was given, right? Well, did, I thought she said that she her, her reasoning was she, that she, it's not her war to start. Yeah, and then she shows up to Rhaenyra and she's like, "No, it's not my war to start." It's like you kind of, if that's not an act of war, fucking gate crashing the coronation. I don't know, dude. I, bet, I, I, dragon, I can't stop mentioning the killing her. of that many civilians. You can't just casually do that. And then the writers would would give a statement of like, "It's Game of Thrones. Civilians don't count." <sighs> Very true. Um. There, there is a, a, a hint of truth to it in particular context of particular discussions in relation to Game of Thrones, but also to the wider context of like... It does have to be specific. Yeah, yeah, very specific, but not that one, where you just casually kill a whole bunch of people. First of all, it's bad enough for a character, it destroyed her, because nothing I can... I can't take seriously anything she says anymore that has anything to do with the poly... It's funny, um, when she's like trapped and... and Allison is trying to say, like, this is an attempt to avoid violence, and she's like, avoid violence, this is what you're doing to me, and I'm just like, stop. Stop talking. Anytime you mention anything about keeping peace or avoiding damage, I'm just like, I look at you and I'm just like, I can't believe they did it again. Daenerys is bad enough. They have another woman do this insane move, and it's just like, and it makes no sense again. Like, 
How did you not learn? And then you find out, like, the person who made that episode, I'm pretty sure, is not responsible for, like, the Viserys stuff. Uh, or the, it's a slightly different person, slightly different team, slightly different rationales. And I'm just like, I see. I understand. And that it was supposed to be a girl power moment. And it was shit all over the internet it, as a girl power moment. And it's just like, guys. Isn't it just... It's it's isn't it just like a fucking tumor on things? Well, have, you can have yes. girl power moments. Why the hell did you do that? <laughs> what are you there doing? There was a bunch of girl power. There was like a bunch of legitimate, just powerful moments in in the show. Yeah, like you did not need that at all. It would have been. We talked about it. It would have been more powerful for her to bust out somewhere else without killing a bunch of people. Yes, that would have been yeah. enough. Like it's like, oh shit! Now people are going to find out that we just basically usurped the throne. Or if she wasn't she can, characterized so strongly as giving a shit about the small folk. Yes. She can make a power play and disrupt the coronation just by flying around the yes. city uh, like, and just grabbing attention that way. Oh yeah, you have like the, the audience are yelling and cheering and it finally dies down with Aegon celebrating and then and it's then just the roar of a dragon. And then screeching over yeah. and it's like, hey, well, excuse me. They could have referred back to the reference in the book <clears throat> That the dragon pit, there's there's two frames of mind of what happened during the coronation, right? That it was packed and people were enthusiastic. And the other version was, no, it was about a third to two thirds full. And it was very quiet. And you could have thrown that in. You have Rainies fly around. And then the crowd that was once enthusiastic, like, stops immediately. You could just yeah. hear them quiet up immediately. And that would send a message to Aegon. See, there's, there's, there's a lot of different ways you could have done this that would have been better. Um, but no, we need the girl power. Speaking of the book... Um, I I can see why they wanted to do something like what they did. Like they are setting up something specific that I obviously won't mention. But um, yep. it, 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 I get the motivation behind that. But like, it's just not a good enough reason to. No. Yeah. It was a I huge agree. blight, and it changed. It had a significant plot shit, and it does damage to a main character. Or. Oh. Secondary character, but still, it's just like, uh, I just why don't you do understand that? how she can possibly pretend like she's neutral after doing that, or a good person? Yeah, she's throughout a piece the of next shit. episode, she just like sits in the back of Rhaenyra's it's, it's really chambers. She's been, like, like paying no respect to Rhaenyra during all of the ceremonies she's around for. Like everyone else bows and she doesn't, which is supposed to be like, ah, she's undecided. But no, that's just plain disrespectful. And I don't know if you've heard, but medieval societies operate based off of respect. Ooh. So that's kind of fucked. Well, and she also just sees this. She when you rewatch it, it's actually really hard to watch the scenes because she sees herself as so far above everyone else. The way she talks oh, around everybody. from up on that dragon, she's you know she she is. She's gonna use it to so kill people. In season two, they just yep. call her out on all of it. That's the problem. I, I don't know that they know they've done anything that, wrong. That, We're in that they're, situation. They're no. that. We said this uh, before we saw the next episode. We were like, unfortunately, she won't get punished because the the writers have already said like this was an awesome moment. It's like, oh no, mm. oh. It was a that mother, episode was mother uh, teen. Yeah. as a mother is stomping on a bunch of mothers. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So to give context, one of the <laughs> things they said was the the writers said she didn't burn them all because she couldn't bring herself to burn Allison, a mother, just like she is. It's like what about just, all the people uh, in the she, room? She just stood on a whole bunch of mothers. Yeah. Yeah. Check on earlier, mothers. none of them were mothers. Everything I <laughs> hear an actor say about a character is like really good and insightful. Everything I hear a writer say about a character is just, or like a scene is poison. Oh yeah. I hate it. When you see what the actors had to say about Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, when they desperately <laughs> no. try to explain anything about that movie, like, oh, it's great because of the reason. But no, yeah, uh, it's more than likely. You end up with, especially actors who really give a shit. Like, uh, listening to Paddy Considine talk about his inspirations for how he played the series is golden. Um, and then listening to, you know, Elizabeth Olsen try to justify Wanda's insanity is like, oh. <laughs> it's like the actors are put in these positions because the writers, you know, give them shit to work with or greatness to work with. Make it even. Yes. I'm not glad, Will. Stab twist cut. Mm hmm. Another legendary girl boss. Hey, kill an orc. Very cool. It's not Stab as cool it. as Nori. No. He went off the trail. I, I, I'm, I'm still not over it. We're going to gate crash the coronation, fly away straight to Rhaenyra, hang around with Rhaenyra for a while, but it's okay. We haven't picked a side. Yeah. <laughs> and then Corlys comes in and he's like, let's not pick a side. And then she's like, actually, no, Rhaenyra. Oh. 
I'm what you call a go getter. You are stuck with Rhaenyra now <laughs> because this is a succession crisis. You can't be neutral. Well, I thought it was kind of funny because, like, if Corlys had said, "We've decided we're going to remain neutral," it would be such an awkward like they slowly walking out of the room, and Rhaenyra's like, "Um, nah." <laughs> Grab him. Them. <laughs> Grab him. <laughs> I I don't understand why that was presented as an option. You can't be neutral in a succession crisis. Someone's gonna be king. Well, what happens if you just say, "Um, I'm gonna think about it. I don't I don't know who's king. I gotta think about it." Yeah, you can think about it. Hey, but... we're just gonna sit this one out, and whoever's king at the end, like whatever. <laughs> yeah, thumbs up to you, whoever. You, you know, are. I don't have any strong opinions at all, so I suppose you guys that. Settle I'll he... be over here. Let me know who wins, and I'll serve you. There's an implication that of it being a binary, of what but I Walder think. That is what Frey did. Yeah. Uh, well, so interestingly, right? That's what that guy tries in episode eight, nine. Yeah, nine. He's he's like, uh, I have to confer with my house, and then Otto says, "You cannot leave this room until you declare, like who." And so, you know, you can make it so it's binary. You have to choose. But if you're Walder Frey or someone else who's got a huge army and just sits in a castle, yeah. You'd be like, nah, I haven't chosen, fuck you. That, that's the thing, like, if you're in King's Landing, there is new, no neutrality. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, and that, oh, that was another thing I didn't like, when that guy tries to escape, and, and that, that, that part is, like, something, I'm surprised he got as far as he did. But when he's, like, he's brought before Otto, and Laris is like, he was clearly trying to warn the Queen, and then Otto's like, hmm. And then the guy is like, uh, you know, you, you presume far too much, and then Otto goes, alright, why were you leaving? And he's just silent. Uh, and it's like, you couldn't make up uh, anything. You couldn't say you were going to go visit family. You couldn't say, like, you needed something. You, anything. You just went, oh, shit. Okay, anything. You got just say there's a I fucking was... sale at pennies, for God's sakes. Come up <laughs> <Yeah>. with something. <laughs> I saw a spider and I got scared. And he legit, yep. he gets hanged for that. I was like, you motherfucker, you could have said... <laughs> like... Why open with? I don't know if he would have been able to weasel himself out of yeah, that but one. You got to try. What the hell? Yeah, I'm just yeah. gonna go back to that castle and tell everyone I declared for you. What, how are they gonna find out? I'm, I just I'm want to go for a horse ride, dude. I do it every day. I love my horse rides. I literally do. And Otto says you literally don't. And he said, Oh, but I literally do. They go the starting back today. Forth, I do it every day. Checkmate. Starting today. <laughs> starting today. I do it every day. Every day. I promised Viserys if he died, I would uh, <laughs> ride, a <horse. laughs> ride a horse every morning, uh, every day. It was this whole thing. You wouldn't get it. We had a thing. We were connected. We had a thing. It was something about the Song of Ice and Fire or whatever. He wouldn't tell you because you're not worthy. Yeah. Well, how's the dragon? Not, the, not, not me, though. I think you're worthy. It's just that that's I'll him. I'm just telling you what he said. Uh, people say, do you recommend it? It's like... I'd probably rather to wait until the whole thing is out, but I can't deny that people should probably see the story of Viserys Targaryen. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, neat. Yeah. Just don't watch Game of, Game of Thrones afterwards. <laughs> if you haven't seen them. If you haven't seen well, either say, of them, just watch House of the Dragon. Your hope, right, is that they nail it with House of the Dragon. They maybe do another sort of shorter series like Robert's the Rebellion or something else, and then that they maybe remake Game of Thrones. So you're hoping if uh, if the world gets right again, <laughs> yes, that, that um, would be my hope. Um, I have always thought that the Game of Thrones story is better suited to like an animated adaptation, just because yeah. there's so much ridiculous scope that is easier to capture in a non-live action format. Robert's Rebellion would, pro would probably be the last thing they make. The reason I think they would do it is because they can rely on a lot of Game of Thrones. I'll just be like, look, we got But Ned there are Stark. plot points in Robert's Rebellion that are like big spoilers for the books that George is apparently still trying to get out. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's so what he says. That's the apparently, whole point of these. even the uh, the Dance of the Dragons, what this is based on, is supposed to be a backstory for A Song of Ice and Fire. That's just how it started, you know. And uh, it's supposed to be a lesson uh, for other characters. And like, I think it did spoil something for a song of ice and fire. I think the song of ice and fire that was on the blade, I think yep. some form of that is actually going to happen in the book, but it hasn't happened yet, but it makes a lot of sense. It explains some Targaryens doing what they did like Aegon the fifth, Rhaegar. Rhaegar. I agree. If you're going to put something on a sword, Amen. it should be loyal, brave, and true. Yeah. Nailed it. Well, I was the dragon.
House of the Dragon, everybody. That's uh, that's uh, that's really something that is discussed. Absolutely, really pretty impressed. good. What a neat show! Like a lot of great characters. I didn't see that one coming. Really cool thematic elements. Mm. Uh, yeah, glad I mean, we I got it. Yep, I'm I'm glad we got it too. Thank yep, you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan Condal. <laughs> And in terms we, of uh, we, we, yeah, Viserys, it's real nice because his story is is wrapped up. It's uh, it's complete. It can't be you know? ruined. Yeah. No, yeah, it, it there's really an can't. element of that as well. That at least you know that there is the one thing is safe. You know, it's, oh, yeah. it's, you got that insurance policy that you've always got, Viserys. You never know. There may come a day where a lot of people who said he wasn't a good king are like, mm, maybe he wasn't so bad. Well, yeah, they'll be pining for those days. Get him back. Well, um, all right. Well, uh, next up, we're gonna we're gonna check out the messages that have been sent over the course of this stream. But I would like right. to offer, as it's uh, it's a particular time into this stream, if anyone should wish to escape into the world of the living, probably a good time. That will be me. I do have to go attend to some business elsewhere. Rose, thank you for having me on. It was but fun before time. You it's go... been a long time coming. Yes. It's been like a yeah. year. Finally, we found a subject. <laughs> oh, Moller and I have been talking about d doing something together for like three years. Yeah. <laughs> so any day now. Any day. Well, that's the thing. It'll just be, I'll just have This was back. it. This was it, everyone. This yeah, is that's it now. Yeah. Gotta go. All right. Yeah. Bye Done. forever. Yeah. But, uh, Goodbye. Don't worry. See you they'll when make, season two comes out. We'll make more seasons of this thing and then we can talk about it again. It'll be great. But, uh, Yay. yeah, tell people what it is you do. You, crazy symbol on a gray background um what is that know, symbol make... it's a glidus it's um well I, with serifs that i added personally it's just a dumb fucking avatar i made when you know you gotta make branding when you make a channel and i didn't have any other ideas yeah um, a I line make... is pretty cool yeah thanks yeah i think it's pretty cool, um yeah. yeah like lines um i make overly edited videos about game of thrones so far and maybe other things in the future who knows um That's, i'm apparently uh, funny okay. i don't know about that but you know i would agree i binged basically your entire video catalog after finishing hot d so <laughs> did you ah, saw your yeah. icon <laughs> wait what was that was that rags's input like like theo's like i watched your whole library and rags like i saw your icon Kind of as far as I can too, I love how it's. I love how I, I like the the ironic artistic decision to have such a minimalist icon to contrast with the overly edited uh, final products that you put out on your channel. It's a uh, it, it's a bold vision. I can yeah, definitely that was, appreciate. That that's the kind of that's the kind yeah. of forethought that I appreciate from you, an EFAP guest. Are you still working through just getting coverage of basically every episode of? Game of Thrones and Haunty, is that the, uh, the plan? Um, yeah, I'm going to finish my House of the Dragon videos, then season six of Game of Thrones. I have a series called Got Review, where I talk about, I, I go like, basically what we did today, but like even longer and more bewildering, um, character by character through the earlier seasons of the show. It's a fun time. Yeah, even went back and more, and one day you'll run out, and then you'll have to talk about another show. Impossible. Hot well, don't worry, you'll have plenty. That's why it takes so long to make videos. I was going to say, by the time you get through all of Hot D and Got, you'll probably have another two shows that they've made. Hot D Got. Yeah, they'll be provided I'm for not forever. being lectured about video releases by Mauler, am I? No, I, I, yeah. I was you saying what a, what a good stream every week, choice. multiple times. I said what a good yeah. choice that you've done, you know? No, it's, yeah, it's good. Great. It a clever a good business choice. decision. It's great for the algorithm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm familiar with such things. That's what people love. Long videos that only get released once per like half a year. That's that's the way to do it. I mean, it's not great for the like algorithm, but people do come out in droves. It's weird, right? I, it's I, like um there's this different it's a holiday like Christmas. You get longs yeah. become more popular over time in terms of like you see like an hour breakdowns yeah, of some obscure Nickelodeon show and you're like, okay. And then, like, those people tune in. I don't know if it's because they, they go to sleep to them or that they put them on while they've gone to a really long shift in work, and that's just... Like, I it watched matter. all the Drake and Josh episodes in Portuguese for this 12-hour review. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think? Well... I think it's just I, because God is dead. Mm, that's really, probably why. Really, really. I saw him yesterday. He's fine. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's chilling out. He's watching Hot D. God made House of the Dragon and Rings of Power just to remind us what he's capable of. Yeah. Yes. It's like, don't cross me. I'm capable of horrific torture and incredible, you know, joy. So don't, don't fucking push it. All right. Stay on my good side. All righty. Well, subscribe I to Glidus. Link in description. And or, I posted it in the chore. Or don't. Well, <laughs> That's oh, not yeah. how you sell um, yourself. Well, if, it's the opposite. When I hit a hundred thousand subscribers, which is soon apparently, I'm going to. Well, I've. It's kind of basically going to happen. I'm going to eat the winds of winter when it comes out. Uh, what do you mean by that? Surely <laughs> your speech so, is. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, some kind of subtext. No, I'm going to get, acquire a physical copy of the book, paper, and ink, yeah. and consume it. Are you going to read so, it before or after eating it? Why would I read it? So that you could... <laughs> so, that sounds Why funny. would I read a book? <laughs> now, now, for a slight amount of, you know, seriousness here, uh, that sounds hilarious and all, but are you sure that you can eat a whole book and not, like, hurt yourself? No. So, <laughs> you should actually probably check... Yeah, just to check. see if you can that's eat a, that that's much. That's a big book oh, too. I, I've done the research. I'm fully aware of how terrible an idea it is. Because I don't know about like the ink you, uh, um, and stuff like well, that. Is, so, like, is, actually, what is, be what method check? Are you what method are you going with? <laughs> you gonna do like soup? <laughs> I think you <laughs> can do a variety of things. Why did like, this happen? Um, Why was this something you <laughs> promised? Well, so once on stream, um, you know, Hollow Knight Silk Song's been in development for a long time. I was streaming Hollow Knight and someone asked me, do I think The Winds of Winter or Silk Song will come out first? And I said, just off the cuff, um, if The Winds of Winter comes out before Silk Song, I'll eat it. Because, like, it's so unlikely. And then I just kept using that as a thing to say for things I thought were unlikely. I will eat the winds of winter if this happens, you know? And then I thought, well, you know what? I'll just People eat the winds of winter. <laughs> well, you can eat uh, the winds of winter uh, romance book. It's out. Like, you can find you it. Go. That could be like your appetite. Uh, true. Oh, my God. That's a good idea. So you, you kept making the but bet, and you were like, of, um... you clearly noticed about yourself. You're like, you've been making this bet because ultimately you just want to eat it you're looking for an excuse that is why i kept saying it i realized deep down there was a part of me that wanted to put that book in my body well you could just show it your ass. you don't need to eat it well maybe you'll <laughs> absorb like the information from it and just still yeah that's what i was thinking it. yeah 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 you are what you eat and i'm gonna be a book i'm gonna be the winter winter <laughs> um, <laughs> cold yeah, so I I know it's great to pull a Herod and everything, but like seriously, check and make sure it's safe to eat a book. <laughs> like... um, my brother is a doctor, and um, <laughs> I've I've talked to him yeah, about but... this, and and his response was, um, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, he just doesn't know what makes for good content, though. So I'm gonna do it anyway. Yeah, idiot. He probably doesn't even have a YouTube channel. Sure. He's not he's not content brained. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what a loser. Doctor. Anyway, thanks for asking. Who's a doctor these days? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, th thanks for thanks for popping on for the quick five oh, thanks hours. Thanks for having me on. See you next sure. time. So. Yeah, quick yeah. relief app. All right, talking cool. okay, toodaloo. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cheers, bye -bye. Cunt. <gasps> ah, bye -bye. Told us the nice Travel. word. Yeah, I'll leave now. Three, two, All one. right. Adios. All right, Theo, Gary, you guys hanging around for a bit or are you leaving? I'm good. I'm hanging out. out for half an hour. Sweet. All right, okay. so begin the super chats. First one says, "If critics are supposed to be objective, then reviews wouldn't need to exist at all. Every critic would say the exact same thing. How am I supposed to respond to this?" Ooh, wow. Um, I would like you to, I mean, I explain. Uh, gosh, you could probably just find a test to show that that that's just not the case. So there does seem to be this misunderstanding that an objective review is just this clinical, sterile description of events as they occur without any level of analysis or creativity or anything like that. It's if you if you were to go and ask a hundred people what they thought of the same movie or to describe it objectively, you will get vastly different answers. 
Yeah, the that person, in and of itself should describe the point. The person who told you that, it, if they are going to go from the school of thought, like, if I was to describe a game objectively, all I would say is it's the name, it was made this time, these people made it, it has this mechanic in it that functions this way. It's like, already you've gone a different direction than the next person. They might describe in a different order, or they put one thing ahead of another thing, or... Uh, and, and then, of course, it's like, what is the line between moving from objective to subjective? If it is as simple as the character's name is blah, 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 they feel blah, blah, blah. And that is the subjective part. And you're like, why? It's like, well, because I just assume that's what they feel. I don't know. It's not written in stone. It's not a part of the meta information of the creation of it. What I'm highlighting is it's funny that you can be so sure that to be objective would mean everybody would sound exactly the same when everyone disagrees on what it even means to be objective. Well... Um, just, uh, I mean, Fringy and Fringy and Mahler, have, and you know, they've both done movie reviews, for instance, and they're just different lies. products. They're just well, different people. Yeah, they have ultimately, styles. If somebody wants to make it their goal to create a review where they try to focus as much on the material and do so impartially, um, in in attempting to do that, people are invariably going to uh, come to different conclusions about. Uh, what is in a story and then they'll present their arguments for why they think it works or why they think it doesn't they're going to focus on different things because they have perspectives ultimately that are going to inform what they focus on or why they chose to talk about it or whether they want to focus on a specific character or a specific theme uh certain plot point how they would even structure whatever they have to say like the notion that if you make an attempt to essentially uh approach like a creative work and try to dissect it in a way that is uh, as much as possible not hugely informed by like your own cognizant biases, it's, it's still going to be different because people ultimately agree and disagree on things and have different things that they value. And ideally, the way that you would think about it is that you want to create some sort of framework that you can use to talk about stories in a way that people will be able to understand and that you can uh, explain why you've come to a conclusion. It doesn't mean that everybody's going to come to the exact same conclusion. Yeah, uh, being objective is not... Because we get this uh, a, a depressingly high amount. People think that being objective is essentially making claims about the absolute truth of anything, and that's all that well, it, it is. It seems uh, to be when the, it's a the... process... I think yeah. what people get hung up on in terms of that word would be that it's like you're trying to make a claim that's unassailable, which I think is probably... Maybe somebody would try to throw out that word to make a claim that's unassailable. But I mean, ultimately, someone could claim that and then you could just make better arguments. Yeah, not that that's even mind. bad. I mean, if I, if I was to... When I get around to making reviews of shows and things, uh, then I want every one of my claims and to, to be things that are pretty, you know, pretty airtight. You know, I, I want them to be correct, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's not a bad goal to have. Well, of course, I mean, you know, it goes without saying. Someone can think they're being objective and be wrong, or well, even yeah. they're not. You know, there's a lot of the people that engage in the whole, like, absolutely not true, can't even remotely be objective about absolutely anything at all. You'll catch them in their reviews. We, we, uh, do you remember the clip of uh, High Top when he was like, some people claim that Daredevil is too slow or boring. No, that is objectively wrong. Like that yeah, was hilarious. All the time, <laughs> it's like they all do it. Well, so th this will help you a lot. Is you should recognize that for as much as uh, like there's always going to be some framework that you have that you're going to be applying to stories and you're uh, likely... or to anything really. And the better that you understand it, the less likely you are to say something stupid like that. That there is no such thing as like being able to appeal to true things in a story. But then also make the claim that if you personally feel like something is boring, which is totally subjective, that you're wrong. Yeah. But honesty. It really comes... You gotta be honesty honest. with yourself, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's what you say. Say. It's the most that's important thing. Down with, you know, that's, that's the, the baseline of this. You know, just be real. Yeah, well, I think um, accuracy and you're you're able to check whether or not you've been accurate. It, it, that's not a subjective thing. You don't use your subjective yeah. elements to ensure that you've been accurate with your reviews. Ultimately, I think that one of the goals that I would have in terms of developing some sort of framework that I can apply consistently to stories is I have my own brain 
that is obviously going to have preferences in terms of storytelling and biases and levels of like irrationality in terms of uh, different aspects of storytelling, like things that personally appeal to me or are meaningful to me versus things I dislike. Um, not everybody is going to think about things the same way and you can't assume that they will understand what you're saying or what you believe. Like if you can't develop some sort of framework that better distills uh, the values that you have when it comes to storytelling. Because everybody's got different values, but like you can convey that effectively, or you can convey it poorly. Well, yeah, if, so, if someone did a relatively, if like if, if actually, if all five of us were told to do a review of House of the Dragon without involving any personal feelings, it has to just be references to how the show works and what it did, and connecting. So you know, you have to very robotically claim like this is a trait that was set up in this episode, and it manifests here, and it's uh, got a variable of this, and that's what leads to that. Like. All those videos are going to be drastically different. They're going to be different. They're all going to be different. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I, you know, even if they were all considered absolutely objective by whatever robot decided that that was, that was the case, we didn't let any of our feelings bleed in. All of it was testable and provable. They would still all prioritize differently, spend different amounts of time on different things. Oh, yeah. So, uh, like if, if Fringy's review spent 80% of the time talking about Viserys, Mahler's review spent 80% of the time talking about Rhaenyra, I spent 80% of the time talking about... Uh, Brim, brimble barble bees worth mm -hmm. and then there's He's, like that those could all be equally as objective as the other but we just focus on different things you have you have way more freedom of what you can do and it, and it, there's so much of the creative process there even if you're trying to be as objective as you can i think uh as something that's cool sterile thing considering is uh, that when it comes to like truth statements about a story it's on a spectrum, right? There, there's, like, degrees to which you can support or discredit a claim about a story. So, like, if you said, man, Saving Private Ryan was awesome. I love the part when Superman flew to Krypton and then played, like, Gears of War. That was a really great scene. Like, you're just wrong. Like, you're totally wrong. You're completely and utterly wrong. Like, what you've referenced is not in the story. And all of the claims that you make on the basis of that reference are worthless. But then it could go like more so, oh, well, I think that this scene in a, in a film is like bearing reference to or an allegory for like, I don't know, some story in mythology where it's like, well, that's not as clear. But depending on the arguments you could make, I could be more or less convinced of that. And then you move well, yeah, along and you could say like statement about things that are just categorical, like the character's name was this and they did this. But then, of course, the arguments you make about what they did, it's like, well, you could say definitively what they did. Why can be a little bit harder, and it depends on what arguments you put forth in terms of supporting whatever conclusion you make. Yeah. You can be wrong part. and still be objective. Yes. I usually use the Absolutely. example of that was the broken thermometer I'd always use, right? What exactly is influenced uh, by biases? Yeah, absolutely. Just reading something, and if you're unaware that it's broken, you're just how is that not being objective? Well, yeah, yeah everybody's if, got access uh, to different information, right? Everybody's got a different level of understanding about things, and that would be the reality, right? Like your mind, if your mind, your mind can be changed. Like you can try to uh, present a perspective that you think is well founded, well argued, and new information could change your perspective. It could re, re uh, it could it could alter your conclusions. It's not like the be all and end all that you're trying to make claims that are rooted in the references in the story and that you're trying to do so without letting your biases overly color your uh critiques or praises yeah the uh, if, if if you're clear about how you know i reach these conclusions because of you know a b c d e you know bits of you know material and references and if i get more you know my, my conclusions might change as a result of it then i mean that's the important thing is you're doing the process so are any of you firearm owners? Yes, I have many firearms. I'm going to guess Rags many. and Gary are, myself, Fringy, and Theo are not. That's my guess. Technically, I am not allowed. My I wife has see. an <laughs> Oh, I see. Uh, I have about, right now, I think I, I'll have to take a recount in my head, but it's probably about 22 firearms I've got. I own Call of Duty. I'm, that was lots of guns. That's true. <laughs> Very cool. So proud of you, Rags. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm, and I'm, and I'm kind of coming, in, kind of in the mood to get another. So who knows? Who I knows? Bought a, uh, I bought a Squirtle plushie, and Squirtle evolves into Blastoise. So he, he's got cannons. So give he's him a got cannons. Bit of time. Yeah. 
He does. Squirtle he does. is man. Squirtle is just like he's so great. <laughs> like in terms of the start of Pokemon's Squirtle, he's just he's such a he's such a good lad. Being a little blue turtle and whatnot, isn't it clever that his name is the joining of Squirt and Turtle? It's real clever. <laughs> I think and it's neat, all right? Bla well, we have, yes, and then Blast and Tortoise, Blastoise. Yeah, even though Turtles and Tortoises are not the same, but... That's true, that's they're okay. not the same. Like, but he does, he does evolve, so... He does evolve, that's true. So they're and saying Tortoises turtles are better than Turtles. War, war well, Turtle I mean, it's is, not better, right? Well, it's just the thing that comes afterward. I don't know why you would attach any sort of better or worse when it comes to evolution. Have you played Pokemon? <laughs> Well, no, I know that in the poke. Well, I mean, it depends. Maybe th this is you see, we're talking about subjectivity, Mola. Like maybe you subjectively like it when it when the uh, no, they are better. <laughs> I don't know. I genuinely don't know if you know this. The stats go up. You should if you deny an evolution, stats, you lose out on stats. The numbers, the numbers, not gain, necessarily. Like, value you do, in yeah. terms of it being higher. There, but, I mean, what if you value the fact that Squirtle knows tackle and. I can't remember. There what are the you can you can maintain tackle. There are times when you want to there are times when you want to delay fruit. evolution for statistical reasons. Um, I think the what well, I think the example that comes to my I forget there was like it's been so long since I was kind of in the know on Pokemon, but there are some there's some Pokemon that if you hold on to their early evolutions for longer, they can learn certain moves that they otherwise wouldn't have learned at higher levels or I things of that right nature. About that. Um, but, I can't remember. but yeah, generally you do want to you you do want to evolve them. Yeah, it's kind of the part of the progression stuff. Oh well, sure, um, but that's up to you ultimately. It's your choice. Yeah, and and there is an element of I mean, who who really evolves their Pikachu into Raichu? Really? Well, fuck that. You no, know? yeah, you uh, don't want to do that. Yeah, who? Uh, I don't know. Raichu's all right. He's oh, he's fine. You know what? He's that fine. summarizes it, doesn't it? Raichu's all right. <laughs> Raichu's all right. Raichu's better than all right. All right. Raichu is like the forgotten Pokemon. <laughs> he can't. Like... Yeah. Well, because even Pichu's got more of a uh, reputation. Oh yeah, than you're right. Because people love it's... Pikachu and they want they don't want to lose their Pikachu to become Raichu. Plus, because yeah, remember, don't isn't it when you have Pikachu in your party, it follows behind your character, and I think if you evolve it into a Raichu, does it? Go into the Pokeball now so it doesn't follow you? What you be talking about? I don't remember any of the games where your Pokemon is like sitting there by your side walking along well, with you. Oh, yeah. What? Like Pikachu. Pikachu follows you, yeah. Pikachu. Wait, Pikachu, one? Hate po Pikachu hates Pokeballs. In wh which one, though? Yellow? All of them, as far as I know. I know in yellow, okay, then yeah, you have a, one follows you. Um, but I. Maybe I'm misremembering, but I know in like yellow version, that was one of the things you, always, you had a Pikachu follow you because Pikachu doesn't like being in a Pokeball. In yellow, okay. Gary, right. what's your opinion I'm... on Pokemon? <laughs> what's your opinion on evolution? I personally uh, deny it in all of its forms. It is a bastardization of science, and it is it, completely abiblical. Of course, by stance on that's pretty hard. How do you feel about it? I think coming out of the trees was a bad idea. We were happier up there. Um, it was cool. <laughs> yeah. the evil uh, of the we didn't trees. have to. We didn't have to sweat so much up there. Yeah. I was too old for Pokemon twenty years ago. So uh, that's fair. You know, it's best Sorry. you just avoid it anyway. Pokemon is nearly thirty years I, old. I, you know what? Because I want to catch them all. Because I'm a completist, and I wouldn't be able to. Too many now. Gotta catch them all. Except I don't think you can transfer your Pokedex into the new ones fully. So, which Ooh. upset a lot of people. I remember. Yeah, there are yeah. people who've yeah, been collecting like, and moving their their collections over forever. Twenty now, years. Yeah. yeah. And then it stopped. It's like, oh, it'd be too hard to like make the assets. It's like, guys, you like Pokemon Company and Game Freak. Like, is, yeah. your new game sold 10 million copies in three days, okay? Like, you have to you make a front use. pixel model, a back pixel model. No, well, and... they're 3D now. So, yeah. So, oh, they're, they're 3D, 3D that. now. That's but, right, I guess. I mean, let's get real. They're not that detailed. <laughs> like, you guys like, are none the most profitable. Uh, like, I think they're legitimately IP. the most profitable IP, like, ever. Well, it's, I think yeah. this. I think this this came up during one of your streams and yeah yes, I think so. um yeah it's 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 in terms of video games i think the only one that's made more money is mario and even then that might not be the case anymore um oh wow yeah so it, it is the third best selling it is one of the highest grossing media franchises of all time wikipedia says it's number wow we need the poo is number one <laughs> and then it's pokemon the number two apparently that fucking China. bear 
Now, Pokemon ninety two point one two one. I just googled it because you know Google always tells the truth. Uh, ninety two point one two one billion. Hello Man. Kitty <laughs> number two at eighty point oh two six billion. Then Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the freaking Pooh. No way. Well, Winnie the Pooh's been around since like nineteen twenty four. Yeah, nineteen twenty four. So I yeah, guess it's that. Poo. Yeah, isn't, isn't the, the um oh. copyrights running out on him, right? He's he's, he's uh yep. public domain now. Yay. At least I think in the United States. I don't know about in the UK because finally countries have different things and everything. I've been waiting to make some fanfic of Pooh. Put him on some mm. adventures. Me too. Oh yeah, yeah. Kanga's hot. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. You don't even have to say it, brother. So when we were talking <laughs> about paladins and Shad, I said Shad would probably just be a fighter. If any of them were a paladin, it'd be Odin. The uh, Odin from Friday Night Tights, I believe. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of people would pick Paladin. Paladin's kind of fun. Yeah, magical powers yeah, from be. gods. Yeah, and absolutely. Especially if you go with, uh, I think, I guess we were talking, was it during the stream or before the stream we were kind of talking about this? This was what's referring to, I suppose. Beginning I guess of it stream. wouldn't be Very so much of a coincidence, yeah. But, oh yeah, yeah, you absolutely can. Really good role play potential. Hold on, guys. I just need to go to the bathroom. And then they follow up with, I'm back. Thanks for waiting. Oh, yeah, no, no problem. problem dude. Yeah, we, we wait for you. Well, the sun is a myth. All hail giant space heater. True. Fiery yeah. day ball. That's what I called it. See, like, the, the wire and the plug come off it sometimes. They don't cover it up that well. And this enormous socket in Earth that it plugs into to get the power. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just glad that our, our Illuminati overlords, you know, turn it on every day for us to you know, keep the crops growing and you know, energy for the planet. Getting bombarded by ads calling Wakanda Forever number one movie in the world, which both annoys me and makes me wonder if these are ever just straight up lies. Uh, well, it would be make it would be like number one in the box office yeah. those weeks, and that's the claim to be number one movie in the world. Basically. Nothing's competing with Wakanda Forever right now, right? There's nothing even. Uh, well, not not any like massive movies. I guess Black Adam was kind of for a little while, but Black Adam's already on digital, so that's yeah. it. They Black just Adam out, happened. Uh, Variety just came out and said, uh, Wakanda Forever had this $60 million weekend. What they're not mentioning is it's the holidays here in the States. We have a Thanksgiving, right? Thanksgiving, right? And it's like yeah. five days, so they're counting it. Uh, it's a five day weekend. Oh, that really. <laughs> That's yeah. <laughs> that's shit. That's not legal. I can't. Think well, I guess I, ultimately Why? the the question is like if it beats the first film, and it looks like the answer is actually going to be no. Oh, no, it's not. Um, yes. And that it, if it's actually even going to cross a billion, is is uh maybe who knows? Very iffy. Um, Which uh that's surprising actually. I I thought it would clear a billion. Hey, can't wait to watch this live. Sadly, I uh, have to do it after work. Uh, personally, I think the show is a 6 out of 10. Lots of great moments, but almost every episode has one moment that dips into post-season 4 quality and almost season 8. Okay. Uh, I don't know about <laughs> that. Nah. I'll happily videos. concede on the Renice Re Re moment, all right? But... <laughs> Yeah, that episode is it stands out. Yeah. Other than that, the biggest long running issue with the show is I don't think it. This is somewhat assuaged by being fantasy, but I don't think it really understands how medieval society works. Hmm. But that's you know a quibble. A little bit, yeah. Too many modernisms, and even well from the book, right? Uh, they amped up the violence, like at the tourney, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, which certainly happened, but there was a lot of uh, there were a lot of a lot of uh, sons uh, sons of high lords who were getting their faces bashed in. That, that just was wouldn't one of my go down. Yeah. Yeah, it's not flying with anyone. I'm sorry. I yeah, I that one ugh, doesn't work with me. By by the time you're seeing tournaments like that, someone dying is a very unfortunate accident yeah because that ever. guy's daddy is very important mm. he probably wanted that son for something you know mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah maybe <laughs> uh viserys best character yeah yeah yep you know yeah. arguably pretty cool i rewatched yeah. slash binged it and it was even better yeah i think it actually improves mm. on a rewatch there's lots of stuff you get to does. see building ahead of when it, it really pays does. off 
Fitting that Viserys' most powerful moment wasn't for power or politics, but in defense of his daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's for his family, and that's what he really, really cared about. Especially just... As a dad? Yeah, oh, that's, yeah, that's what you want your most powerful moment to be. Um, God of War Ragnarok has been a five-course meal for my soul. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I think a lot of people are very inspired by the storyline in that game. Uh, not to mention, I had a, several messages about like people talking about the relationship with their sort of father uh, as a result of that game, making them feel a lot about it, which makes complete sense. The game is about a lot of things. We're going to talk about it next week. It's going to go long. I'm, I'm excited. It looks fun. Great. <laughs> I would be horrible at it, but it looks fun. Don't worry, they have an easy mode. Oh, dude, easy mode doesn't help me. I, <laughs> I am so inept. You'll find out. You'll see. Um, where do they keep Vega? So around Vega's, like, I'm assuming in if they're talking about King's Landing specifically. Um, I don't know if Vega would ever. I don't even know if it can fit in the dragon pit. Is it big enough? It can't. They, they mentioned it earlier in the season that he can't. That uh, she goes wherever the fuck she wants. There you go. Yeah, Vega just chills out wherever. Uh, hey, Mola, Fringy, and Hi Rags. Hey. Hello. Hey. Yo. Glad to see a hot DE fap. Amond is my fave. Thanks for all the content. Been watching since the beginning. Hope Wolf is well. Uh, checking it out. We've got a lot of people who were desperate to hear our our EFAP collective thoughts on, on House of the Dragon. And it is done now. We actually post that part. So we did it, everybody. Excellent. Um... They, uh, second, oh, and what do they do with a huge dead dragon's remains? I was thinking about this. Surely they cut it up because it'd be really valuable pieces in there, right? Uh, so it probably depends on who finds it. If it's random people, they would probably take the scales and stuff, and yeah, because it's probably incredibly valuable. Um, if it was some some of the authorities, they would probably give it back over to the people for, I guess they have some kind of a burial process or you know, something like that, I would assume. But it probably depends on who finds it, which is likely going to be some guy. And uh, yeah, if, if it was me and I came across him, I'd at least, you know, nick some scales off that thing and take it with me because that is oh, the maesters, a yeah. lot of money. Oh, I'm sure the any... maesters cut it up. But yeah, George has never talked about that, I don't think. Say, I wonder if there's any royal charter or anything relating to what should be done with dragon remains. Should that ever happen? Do you think they would treat it like a Targaryen funeral and burn it? Uh, but I'd still think the maesters would want dragon scales, some and of the blood. Dragon teeth, right? I could see that being yeah, yeah. I, I imagine the Targaryens would fairly jealously hoard rights to yeah, anything dragon yeah. related. Well, they, you know, Balerian skull is like that's that survives all the way up to Game of Thrones, right? I'm not sure what entirely its fate would be, but pretty cool skull. You don't want to keep it yeah. until they shoot an arrow through it. Oh yeah, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> we don't talk about season uh, eight. What a good uh, show! How do you shoot an arrow show. through a dragon skull? Oh, it's not. It's a uh, it ballister. Like arrow is out. Oh, okay. It well, that that's was... just ruining a really cool, you know, decoration. That's just not feng shui at all. There's a bit of a tangent, but it looks like people are getting their plushies. They're 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 making their way out there. They're arriving. Oh, very they, good. Very yeah. Very good. I've seen a couple of pictures on Twitter. They got the little Fringo. Oh, my mind came God. In. Which is neat. That's so yeah, it looks like those will be coming soon, which is very cool. Wag. Uh, what is your full opinion on the death of the author? I usually take the author as the authority, like Ray Bradbury saying Fahrenheit 451 is about TV making people morons and not government censorship. Uh, oh the, boy. We, well, I mean, we, we, we covered this with the Rings of Power stuff. We were like, if uh, we treat the author as another source of information, they are more than likely going to have more insight than most people, but at the same time, they have to be in a position where we can deny them their interpretation because they can be insane sometimes. They can get it wrong, or they can create something that is totally different from what they intended. Textual yeah. reference is I don't... really cool, it turns out. Yes, I don't like it when yeah, the author says, you know what? My work was actually about all this crazy shit that you can't see in there at all. And it's like, yeah. oh. 
Oh, I don't believe I mean, you. we just talked about it with House of the Dragon, where we were listed the people who made this, talk about it. It's like, no, 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 shush, 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 nah, shush. it's okay. Nah, we're, we're good. You keep your interpretation to yourself, that's fine. <laughs> like, I'm just... Right. Like, the author's right to say that, I don't know, Bloodborne is about a penguin on a chair. It's dependent yeah. on, you know, Bloodborne being about a penguin on a chair, which I don't think it is, so... <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, the other side of the argument is, of course, when a really experienced author with their work tells you a lot about the inner workings and references all of it and says what they were going for, it's like, yeah, that's worth taking all into account. Go for it. They'll often have a lot of insight about their own works. They made them, after all. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't. Sometimes they critically misunderstand their own work though it's really but sometimes yeah. gotta hate it were, when that happens they yeah. Exactly what they were doing. yeah uh there's always some nerd on reddit who knows your lore better than you do though yeah <laughs> <laughs> well yeah probably mools for your every time Mola says benedict cumberbatch supercut made me wonder if those are ad libs um uh, yeah a lot of them were in, in terms of just coming up with them on the spot but i'm gonna be honest with you i don't think they were particularly impressive they were just kind of funny it's, you know, like, they're not hard. You just sort of, they're a bunch of stupid shit, right? You just go. Yep. Yeah, like and a when wumble, dumble, jumble. hit a guy, hide it there. Uh, Except that was written. That was probably written down. <laughs> was printed on paper that was handed out to these actors to read. Uh, King Viserys is a very tasty man. Rags 2022. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, fair mm. enough. Don't think I said that. that. Uh... PSA, Scott Schaefer, established titles is a scam. What I hear. Uh, because I've aware. seen those sponsorships in videos every once in a while. Oh, this, I don't I, know. this is the trees thing, is it? Or the, the... Yeah, yeah, something about this company has this land in Scotland, and you buy like a one foot by one foot area, so that technically you could say you're a lord. And, is it all um... bullshit? Or was it really yeah, yeah, it was. It, Damn, it, it was. Oh man. Well, sorry for all those people who paid to be lords. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. That must suck. It's a it's a cool idea. But instead you just have to go online and like take a class and become a reverend. That's that's your backup. You go just, go to yeah, some online I, school I and that. just become a reverend. Honestly, just call yourself a lord anyway. God, I did that so long ago. Isn't that the Earth Church or something? Help me out, chat. There's what plenty. Of, there's probably plenty of places that you could yeah. do it. They're just accredited enough to where you could call yourself. And it, it's like if you're a doctor of some you know, bullshit thing, and you could technically be a doctor or something like that. Yeah. Which but isn't as cool because doctor has a sort of like because you know, being a reverend is like I could I would say that I was a reverend as a joke by you know, like going online, taking a quick little class, getting certified, and I'm officially a reverend. Like I, I would do that, but I, I wouldn't pass myself off as a doctor there's wow. i actually kind of really that's a that's one i wouldn't you know that see it as a different kind of prestige i, I seem suppose. to recall you having an avatar with a little doctor outfit on at some point so I'm yeah lying. That yeah i'm a doctor no yeah i wouldn't pretend to be a doctor but i am one yeah right, right. i'm a doctor dr rags i'd never pretend nice. to uh to not be to or to be one of course Very first dog this is all totally legit I can show you the picture later. It's I've got a photograph of it. So they they want us to read this out. Well, they All won't. right, let's do it. You got it. Starts with me, um, and I say, I will kill Rags, the dog of war. Oh, Fringy's muted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Theo, do your best, Fringy. No. Oh, jeez. Uh, no. And I gotta go, Fringy, you conspire against me? Bark. <laughs> That's probably good enough. <laughs> the thing is, the one thing they didn't get from this recording is Fringy saying no, which there's about thousands of examples online, so you should be okay for that. Good God of War reference. Um, Wings quote of the day. If I could pick any job, what would it be? No job. I'd wake up and sleep all day. Sleep all day, watch some TV, and go back to sleep. <laughs> Sounds like a fulfilling. You have to existence. respect that kind of. You have to respect that kind of drive and motivation in life. Uh -huh. I, yeah, he's a competitive <laughs> sleeper. <laughs> He's, he truly is a, a renaissance man. I just like the idea of like, ah, oh, there, I've woken up now to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls out a little, like, 
note of paper, like, okay, what's on the schedule? Sleep. There you go. Good. My favorite. Uh, bonus quote. I hate the McDonald's made the 20-piece nugget $8. That's unreasonable. 20 um, piece nut, 20 piece, 20 nuggets for eight bucks. Well, you know, where do you live? California. I guess it depends on how good the nuggets are. No, McDonald's. I suppose so. I mean, 20 that's like what? That's two and a half bucks a nugget. Well, two and a half nuggets a buck. You mean. Sorry, it's two and a half nugget a buck. Sorry. So that means each nugget is concerningly cheap. <laughs> so I. <laughs> right, sorry. I just had stepped out for a second. Wait, what, 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 is this, yeah. what is this dialogue? They just wanted you to say no. Oh, but... Okay. Uh, oh, but how, though? <laughs> well, like, it's, what, very, it's pretty straightforward. What's the direction? You're so yeah, close, you keep saying no. no. Yeah, you no like, put like, the I'm just there. trying to get a read on the script and the character that I'm trying to embody. Is it meant to be like a very passionate no, or is it meant what's to be a very... What's my motivation? No? For the, exactly. <laughs> for the acting, really, you get to really embrace the role in the way that you see this character. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to figure out, because... I see you conspire against me, which is a, a little Kratos line, so I'm wondering if that's... I'm just trying to figure it's out. Very interpretive me. project. No. Are you happy with that? You happy? You got what you wanted? Oh, that was oh, wonderful. Wow. I think that was pretty great. Uh, Rags doesn't seem happy with it. I'm sorry, you're going to have to do it again. I, yeah, okay. do it one more oh, time. Then they'll have two options to choose from. How do I say no, Fringy2022? <laughs> In the chat. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what this alright. No. There you go. Now you got a nice. That was pretty good. Nice I like that one, yeah. A lot of va yeah, variety that... between those two. That was a very classic no. Pretty cool. I figured I, would, I figured I would give them some options there if they yeah. Alright, you happy? I'm I'm getting coffee. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> oh. My friends oh, and I hey. like this show, and I think it's good, but it's frequent for our conversation to devolve into something along the lines of, why is the prisoner choosing Bran as king? Or, she, so she's just lawn mowing the city, huh? Yeah, it goes back to season 8 sometimes. Unfortunately. Season 8 is, uh, pretty funny. It is really dumb funny. Hi, Rags. Hello. Anyway, you guys could get Sophia Narwitz on for the Ragnarok stream just to have a wider range of views of the game. Thanks for the fun stream. Don't worry, we're already getting stacked for that stream, and we have Theo, all right? Theo, you got to represent hatred Hello. for the game, okay? You got to be the one that's like, I hate all of it. It's all really bad. Yep, everything about it is terrible. That's my opinion. We did actually. There was someone in my stream who said, "Please bring Theo on for it, otherwise it'll be a circle jerk." And I was like, "Hey, <laughs> like I'm, I, I, I'm the token hater now. Got that? Like after True. Elden Ring, I'm, I'm the token." Even though all I of us were like very critical thing. of Elden Ring in that stream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the maesters are poisoning the king, making him weak. A conspiracy with the high towers so they can control the crown. Both come from Old Town. I think that's possible. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh. It, it, just from going from the show, I don't know if there's more information in the book as to whether or not that's a thing, but I could see that being a thing. They, the one reference I think that's worth keep, keeping in mind in the show is when a maester that's new offers a particular point of like healing, and the grand maester's like, no, 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 we're not doing that. Like, hmm, that's. Uh... I've seen Glidus and Ultrawift X talk a lot about this grand maester conspiracy thing. Yeah, that really came forward in uh, a dance with dragons, with uh, a conversation. Maces. Yeah, it was like one. Uh, uh, there was a conversation where uh, one lady uh, did not like them, and then later on at the end, an actual grandmaster says says to uh, Sam, "Why do you think uh, gal or valiant dragon slayers killed all the dragons? It was. I mean, I'm paraphrasing. It was the maesters. So." Uh, that's where that comes from. But people were thinking there was a theory before. Uh, th th there's theories like people have dissected this book so much that the theories, a lot of the theories ended up being correct or George just picked them up on the way. Not really sure how that yeah, went. I, we don't I can imagine George probably read some of them was like, whoa, that's great. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. <laughs> like, that's really, that works really well. I wouldn't even blame a writer for that. If they managed to make an intricate world and they didn't expect how something just slotted together is like well it doesn't ruin everything i suppose you can implement 
Uh, do you all think that the failure of the Rings of Power will be big enough to disabuse corporations that woke shows will work if you throw enough money at said show? Also, high rag. Hello. No. Arcane um, is woke. Apart. So yeah. <laughs> so f first off, Rings of Power. It's only wokeness really comes from a very diverse cast, which is weird given the world. But once you see past that, it's it's not. It's not woke. Well, the vast majority know? of the issues in that show are just incredibly... It's just shit writing. ...badly written. Yeah, um, badly um, written. And I think people conflate the word woke with... Uh, and that's fine, because it's easier to say than intersectional, which is purely what that show is. Uh, trying to uh, erase gender norms and make uh, Guy Ladriel, uh And have at your actor sitting, you know, with their legs so wide they could give birth to a Balrog. So, like... That's oh, just hot. Because of the well, fire. I don't, the I don't know if you saw the latest promo picture. I tweeted it a couple days ago. It no, looks like I haven't. Housewives. It looks like Desperate Housewives. It's all the it's all the female actresses from the, and they're all in one. Uh, the one who plays female Sam is like front and center with her legs just practically in the splits. Uh, it's hilarious. It's freaking hilarious how clueless they are. But uh, not woke, intersectional. Well, uh, that's. I guess what I assume Rags is getting at is that if their goals had nothing to do with anything, it, basically, like it's so incompetently done, they could have achieved what they were going for way better, but they didn't even Absolutely. do that. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know how I mean, you you see like when it comes to like the Batwoman's a good example, right? It never did well, and they kept doubling down and doubling down on it, and it got worse and worse, and they just still they just kept going. So it seems like a lot of people. Until they it's, were bankrupt. They never, want to, they never want to pull back. It seems that, especially with these writers and directors who aren't paying for it, they really, they, I guess a lot of them would rather keep going knowing the show will fail without, or instead of toning that sort of thing down. Um, I think two is probably going to be just as bad or worse than season one, but season three is the one I'll be curious about in terms of changes for Rings of Power. Yeah, uh, season two might have some band-aids on it, if that. It, that's probably be the most they'll do, is having some band-aids on it. Just because, you know, how much can you change at that stage? But, I, yeah, I think Mahler and Fringy were right when they said season three. Probably where Probably. we're going to be seeing the biggest changes, if they're going to do it. And you might think, of course they'll change it. I mean, look at, you know, basic logic. But that is... Definitely not something that's guaranteed. It's, it's very possible so the showrunners or someone says, "Yeah, um, but you know how you know how these things can go." It's, I, I yeah, who knows, I would really. imagine they would. I don't know. It's tough to imagine what they do because I mean I wouldn't have done this in the first place. So, hmm. right, and, yeah. and by making changes, you're admitting fault. Oh which yeah, means don't like you're to do admitting that. A problem, which means you're probably going to get fired. So they're going to, what you mentioned earlier is they, uh, the, the bean counters, the bankers, the, uh, you know, the board members don't watch any of this shit. They have no idea. They have no idea what fandom is. So they're going to accept whatever the people working on the show tell them. And they're going to go, oh, everything's fine. Look at the minutes watched. They'll, they'll skew the data to make it look like they had a success. And that's why we keep getting such crap now because there's no measurable way to tell like what's a flop or not it, it, unless you're just on the absolute inside of Amazon. But I think it's pretty, you know, I think it's an objective truth at this point that that show did not bring in the subscribers needed to pay a billion dollars to cover a billion freaking dollars. Judging from its quality, it was never gonna like the, nobody's going to get passionate never. enough about it. Yeah. It just wasn't. Yeah. The, even Like I said, the even people who there. like it, they struggle to talk about character journeys in it. They really do. Because there's just so little to talk about. Meanwhile, like we spent what five hours talking about the characters one by one. Yeah, for the show. and, and we this wasn't even an episode by episode breakdown. Because if we did, no. if we did like the reverse quality version of what we did for Rings of Power, we'd be here for many, many. Well, it'd be times. like Arcane. Yeah. It'd be multiple yep. streams. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, also, there is a video. Yeah. Just I want to I don't want to go on too long, Gary. You you need to escape it. to the worlds of I... the living as as others have previously. So I want to give you the chance to jump out. Thanks for inviting me. It was a, a pleasure to be here. I love talking about House of the Dragon with you all. Well, yeah, this, this is like the epilogue, and it'll be back someday, and we'll we'll Eventually. charge up the machine all over again to talk about season two. Hopefully, it's at least as good as season one. Hopefully, I'm Hopefully. I'm just glad I can look forward to it. Yeah, something to look forward to. E. Didn't think that was gonna happen. So, yeah, thanks, thanks. guys. Um, 
before you go, do you want to? Your plushie is going right. That's what's happening. Oh, oh yeah. Who is it? Oh yeah. Oh, Link. That's that erotic. Shit. I mean, well, this is good proof. Yeah. Oh, dude, is is it called Wizard Plush? Yes. It's Wouldn't it be called wizard. Nerdrotic Plushie? <laughs> like, just to let people know. I don't know. Uh, I think it's Nerdrotic Wizard Plush, but it's fine. I, I I'm very happy with everything. Oh, Make you should sure be mad. Look great. at it. It's such a. That's such a really oh yeah, cool if you. Plush. Yeah, if you if you type in Nerdrotic, it does uh, it does pop up. Yes, mm -hmm. that does look good. Look at you. That's that's great. I have already ordered my my. Wait, you Wizards can stand them up, or is that just for a promo? Oh, I image? assume that's just for the image. Oh, okay, I, I didn't know if I had a third leg down there or something, or if the. Well, so, I don't know. I'll, I'll tripod the tan here, uh, so yeah. we'll, we'll get that. Gary, that's, that looks excellent. That looks great. Yeah, and you like also have do um, if you buy this along with a, a hot dog, dog man dog. as plush, which is right <laughs> here, you get yourself ten percent oh. off. Hot dog. <laughs> Uh, normally, normally I type that into my browser for unrelated reasons, but uh -huh. let me let's see. It filled hot, out something else, didn't it? <laughs> hot dogs in your area. Here it is, hot, hot dog man as plush. Look at him go. It's great. Yeah, and I can see a wizard and a hot dog feels right. Feels like a combination that makes sense. Sure. Wizard and a hot dog. <laughs> Jeremy was supposed to be in there, but uh, he and I had a little trouble figuring out the emails because, you know, we're done. That's what I think. That's what I think. That's what happened to me. It was the the format of like approving stuff and the yep. email thing. It was it kind of confused me a bit too. So, but yeah, let me add a let me get these. Yeah, and if I get them together and I get a yeah yeah yeah, it takes it takes the a plushy off. family is growing. Got my whole little corner filled with them, and yeah, I got I got me Fringy, you and As on the way as well. Another I can just I'll, I'll put them. I'll put I get all my plushies set together and I'll put them in the on the dashboard of my Miata and I'm just going to go pick up all the babes <laughs> even one at a time. So, let's oh, yeah, awesome. You have to, to fight them off and I can't They'll wait have to, to fight to be the one the only one that I could take with me. Yeah. Uh and thanks to you guys for help helping make this happen. So, I appreciate that and I appreciate y'all in the chat and I'll go with this cuz somebody asked in the in the chat. How many days has it been? Since the release of A Dance with Dragon. It's been 4,155 days. Since Not the many, of a Dance with Dragon. Not many. Just sure, it's just around the corner. And when it is, you're going to do like, would you do like a book review video? Or Absolutely. <laughs> okay, of course. Immediately. I'll probably read it in a couple days. And uh, yeah, it'll happen. If it happens. Well, all right. Thank you very much for jumping on with us. And I'll catch you next Tuesday, presumably. Tuesday. Hell Ciao. Bye yeah. bye. Catch. Toodaloo. See you later. See ya. Later on, dude. All right. Do you guys do you guys do because I guess I'm the only American here now. You guys know the see you later alligator, and then the person says in a while crocodile. Yeah. You ever heard of that? Yeah. All right. I was curious. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. We talked about the simultaneously or simultaneously thing too, so yeah, it's one of those things. Hey Shad, do you study Italian or German longsword or both? I'd imagine both. He, I, I feel like he's the kind of guy who'd want to look into all of the world's swords to see which ones are the sharpest and coolest. Maybe he has videos on him. I think an Australian longsword. Hmm. Don't know what that looks like. Made from the blood of koala bears. Apparently it's sharp. Sharp blood. Saw an article in some rag talking about how the Night King may return in the Snow HBO series. I'm thinking it's going to be a redo of The Long Night. I've heard rumors about that too. Uh, it's just funny. That's hilarious. The they Night feel King that will return in Avengers Endgame. <laughs> Do you think they feel that his his death and that whole was conclusion shit. was so wasted that they could like they, they just could they're just going to do it again? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you could say that. Yeah, That's an interesting idea. That being the case just makes the idea of a Game of Thrones remake seem more inevitable to me. Yeah. Uh, it's so unfair because everybody recognizes this is an Emperor has no fucking close situation. It's like, we all agree the last season was shit. Redo it. Just redo just it. Do it again. Yeah. I know you don't want to do that, but just do it. Decanonize the fuck out of that stupid thing you made and redo it. Get someone who cares. I beg you. All the actors are still around. It won't be for much longer. 
Well, I say that as if several of them are old. I think they are. Well, I guess it might be more so a matter of they'll move on to different projects. Well, yeah, they'll be like, I don't want to fucking do that shit again. I, I, I'm trying to, yeah. you know, make a name for myself and other things. Like, oh. Uh, to me, the show is about uncertainty. Otto can't be blamed for looking out for number one. Ultimately, it's the king's uncertainty that wastes decades. All started because Damon. Now that he's mature, the problem's taken life of their own. Uh, the show is about uncertainty. Um, I wouldn't know that the problems are really created by uncertainty. Rather, a lot of the problems in the show are created by a certainty of a certain course of action that everyone seems to have locked themselves into. Yeah, you could the argue he disinherits Damon. Cases. That is a decision made in stone. It's done. And he commits mm -hmm. to Rhaenyra being the heir right up and Well, I say right up until he dies. He still commits to it post being dead. It's just that it, uh, his words are interpreted. Once they're committed to Rhaenyra, and then once Otto's back and Alicent's married to Viserys, everyone's just committed to, okay, this is going to come to a head when he kicks the bucket. Yeah. What do you think of the final evolutions of the new Pokemon startups? Meows, Karada, Skeledige, and Quaguval. I don't know what they look like. I hate like. Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I may as well have just said Flooby, Fleeby, and Fimblewimble. <laughs> um, are those actually the final evolutions? I uh, that's what they say. I don't know. No, I'm I'm just because I'm looking at the pictures. It's like are they 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 must be. I think this is it. This is the the final. Oh, link them, link them. You link them. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, because I uh, gotta say I'm I'm not a big fan. Oh, I still yeah, not hate a big Pokemon. Fan. Oh <laughs> well, no! What am I looking well, at? Are these the, way the that new they ones, at, dude? This well, is so they're the, they're no. the final evolutions of these of these. This stuff. reminds oh, me of like are sh these are shit. It's like lame spore yeah. monsters. What this is like? Viva like pinata! It. What the fuck? Oh, is <laughs> look at look at where they start and look at where they end up. That's, this, I don't this, like. They that. started so strong. They started really strong. These are what is really this horse good shit. Started. What happened to the cat? Oh my god! Wait, what did that's? That? I guess that's what the cat turns into. Cats are weird. Oh no! Oh, that's not. Yeah, because like they're, they're so much better in their starter form. They are. This, see, and, this and is what we're talking about. This is the advantage of um of not evolving your Pokemon. That you get to keep them wonderful. Well, you the get thing to is, keep is them that nice, you told me, shit. it's like, do you want to keep your boy Squirtle or you want to turn him into Blastoise? It's like Blastoise is cool. Yeah, usually um, there's usually a, a cute to cool is awesome. changeover, isn't there? Pretty much, yeah. Like bo like uh Venusaur. Wait, hold on. Yeah, wait. Well, Venusaur... Venusaur is the final. Yeah, Ven <laughs> Venusaur is the final. I'm I'm um, I'm Venusaur. okay with someone saying Venusaur is cool. That's fine. You know, you can Venusaur find... is cool. Yeah, they see. There I think go. so. He's got the big and, and hyper beam flower in the back it? of him. Yeah, there he's you know. a big They're chunky cool. boy. He'll fuck you up. But Excellent. these these ones just look goofy to me. What? Uh, yeah, Especially the fire <laughs> one. Yeah, what happened to the duck? What is that? <laughs> I don't know. The duck turned into <laughs> sassy dancer <laughs> duck. Dude, yeah, the... I don't know. Not a... Why do they insist on making them like anthropomorphic? They're also just lame. They're just like so. Mm. Look at the expressions. Okay, looks... So what do you, what do you think of uh, <laughs> the the legendaries? Um, hold on. Yeah, I get a picture. As far as 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 far as I can tell, of the legendaries, there is one that is way more popular than the other. Oh boy. Uh, oh, there is it two legendaries. One. Oh, well, there's always two legendaries, right? You've got one for each of the versions of the game that are. Well, what about the basically... legendary dogs? Uh, oh, well, yeah, th there have been those ones, but I don't know what is the case for this. So they're the... Oh, uh... Can you I say guess the one on... Designed? Yeah, well, these look yeah, I was, terrible. I was actually about to I say, it, it, it should never take me more than a few seconds to understand the creature. Yeah. Well, so, it's which which one do you think is more popular? The left. Play. So, I, as I understand it, it's the one on the right is the really, really? popular one. But my yeah. answer was going to be, I don't know which one's more popular. it's legs. <laughs> That thing's a Yu-Gi-Oh card. <laughs> well, so, as I understand it, one of the big things is that they turn into motorbikes. What? You can oh, turn them into motorcycles. Oh, now I see the wheel. The wheel. And drive them around. Yeah. Oh, no. Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds. <laughs> so that's, that's, what they, that's what they do. Oh, you can drive yeah. them like motorcycles. Eerie me. 
what I'm hearing about this new one is that if you take away all the bugs and all of the technical problems, it's what? actually one of the better Pokemon games. That's what people have said. That's really funny, though, in isolation. If you take away all its problems, you have to take it's away one everything of the best that's one. wrong with it on a technical level. That it's the best. That it's one of the best Pokemon games. I always hear that Black and White was one of the really good ones too, but I, that was when I stopped. I dropped off after Pearl Why Diamond. Are bikes? I don't know because so you can drive them around in the big open world. But can I, just get I don't bike? get that either though. Uh, well, yeah, well, you used to have bikes. Remember in Pokemon, you just had yeah. a bike, but you would ride around. Yep. Now it's like the Pokemon was also your vehicle, it, just in case you weren't enslaving it enough. No, I have to ride and drive you around. I'm sorry, I'm just I, battles. I can't get over this. They're bikes. They are bikes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. They're bikes. But, Wait, I need to find a picture of them as bikes. You, you probably on. should, because my mental images are. It, I'm having trouble. I can see the my... wheels. You know, you like or at least one wheel on each of them. Wait, yes. these two are supposed to be bicycles? Yeah, they turn into bikes. Oh, what the fuck! <laughs> No. What the fuck? <laughs> that looks awful. Is, they have four fucking legs. You don't need to give them wheels. What did, is this horse shit? Did they not know you could just have them run real fast? Oh no. I don't know. It's not good. Oh, that's just... God damn. What a shame. Oh, are that... they unlocked at the start of the game? What kind of legendary is that? Did you get the bride at the start? What do you mean? Well, maybe someone in chat can help out. It's like, are they unlocked from the start of the game? Like, you get them right at the beginning. That can't be right. Because then you can't have something that's legendary that you give to every player. Something I really liked about Kyogre and Grudon um, from Sapphire and Ruby was that they seemed very, like, mythical. Um, they, they seemed like ancient creatures that had been around for a long time. Like, it How comes old? through and. You can't prove that motorcycles aren't that old well, so all i was gonna say is that i i don't know it's uh you can't use them in battle you can't okay <laughs> it's literally so that... just a mode of transportation uh... really <laughs> it's got if you can't use it for battle life. like you can you breed with it not you so, can you breed it so and like use the like, uh... children to fight I guess, does the game have, like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my god, out of context, what you just said. Can you breed them and make oh. the children fight? I mean, that's and what this, Pokemon is. It's, I, I don't make the rules. I've just been sent this by the Discord. Oh my god. Oh, god. oh if they, you just they make... fly now? <laughs> <laughs> they fly now. So they're, they're legendary Pokemon who, despite having l four limbs, also Evolved fly wheels and, and wings. also <laughs> have wings as well. What the fuck is happening? This uh, has modern games written all over it. What were they thinking? Failed. You have failed your task. I Madness. should never be looking at something and saying it's a Yu-Gi-Oh card. That is never a positive comparison. It would. It's the only thing it's missing to be a Yu-Gi-Oh card is a is an a, an irrelevant abstract background. Yes. And maybe like some orbs just randomly like dotted throughout the design. And the flavor text that make it seem far more powerful than the measly 750 attack <laughs> that it actually has. Can suck the soul out of any enemy. Three stars, 750 attack, 400 defense. The landscape looks horrible. Yeah, one of the few game franchises I will actually criticize for low fidelity graphics. It's Pokemon. Should look better than this. They should have gone with a really cool ultra. They should have kept that that wonderful two D style and just yeah, made it a modern cell looking shading. version of it. Yeah, like a cool cell shaded cell or a super. You know, Octopath Traveler. I only yeah, know the that. like the look of it, but something like that where it's two D, but everything like the, the everything looks wonderful. It like it keeps that and it embraces it instead of this three D kind of. Well, either. Uh... I'm surprised that they didn't, because, like, Breath of the Wild is is uh, a really good example of essentially carving out, like, a unique art style. It's got the cell shading going on. It's like a painting sort of come to life, which is really cool. Whereas here, I don't know, just kind of looks a bit... It looks a little bit incoherent, almost, like the <sighs> backgrounds are a little too textured. Plain. They're and just yet, Yeah, and plain yet they're and really empty. low detail. Meanwhile, you've got kind of, like, cartoon characters, sort of Pokemon and, and people. 
running around as well. I don't know what it is. It's just, it doesn't look good. It's trying to get too um, real in a way, also, if that makes sense. They, it's like they're not put. they don't have the power to realize that, nor, but there are games on Switch that look better than this. Yeah. I don't know why it looks like this. I'm just saying, like, the franchise makes too much money. <laughs> you know, like it makes too much money for that to be like the level that you get out of it. Like the Switch is capable. Super Mario Odyssey is a very nice looking game. That's a real nice looking game, even though it's on the Switch. Breath of the Wild looks really good. There are a lot of good looking games on Switch. I don't know. Maybe it'll be the next one. They need more development time, though, clearly. Yeah, yes. or they need to like go uh, back to that 2D style and just really do something wonderfully stylized with it that will last forever. And it will I'm, always look good. I'm fully I'm all on board the meme. Let's go back to 2D. Remember the meme that you sent me? The the Miyamoto quote, but instead it's about Pokemon. Ah, uh, yeah. There it is. A delayed game is eventually good. A bad game will sell 10 million copies in three days. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, it's um, the Pokemon. Well, I mean, they, they buy Pokemon Scarlet games. Violet they don't have taste. The, uh, Scarlet and Violet is the fastest selling Pokemon game. It's the fastest selling Nintendo game. And it is the fastest selling exclusive, like console exclusive ever. Oh um, shit, really? Because because God of War Ragnarok sold about five million copies. I think in the first week or the first five days, ten million in three days was what Scarlet and Violet got. Um, there's in fact not only is that really good, not only is that the best for a, a console exclusive, that's better than most games, like on multiple platforms. That that's like. I can't remember how many copies Grand Theft Auto V sold in like uh, the first week, but it, w it, it was it was around that uh, around that ballpark. So it's tremendously successful. <clears throat> um, let me see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I have to. It sold. Uh, estimating that take uh, Guinness World Records certified that claim and declare GTA V the best-selling game in any 24-hour period, estimating that Take-Two moved more than 11 million copies in its first day on sale. Okay. So in three days, that's pretty pretty close up there. It says in the first five platform. days, GTA V sold 16 million units. So Pokemon doing real well, considering it's on one system. Considering it's Pokemon, and it looks like this. Well, I mean, it's Pokemon, right? But uh, but it seems Pokemon, to be another yeah. thing is that the Nintendo Switch has bolstered every single Nintendo franchise. Every single one has had its like best performing game on that system, <clears throat> including more of the niche ones. Like Metroid Dread, I believe, was the fastest selling Metroid game. Kirby in the Forgotten Land is the fastest selling Kirby game. Um, <clears throat> and of course, it even applies to their big hitters like Breath of the Wild, Odyssey, Smash Brothers Ultimate, Mario, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is like... The best-selling Mario Kart game sold like 50 million copies. The attach rate that Nintendo gets for their games to their system is unparalleled. Nobody else gets those numbers. Nobody. Gotta sell them all. Okay, <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Sorry, that was a huge tangent. So anyway, and I, yeah. Full skirts, time skips, hoping we kind of forget. I just think that you could have, uh, he, he has like a stubble beard going on, he could have like removed it fully for the first era and then added that on the second one and maybe changed the length of his hair more significantly. Add a, add some, maybe a gray streak or something. Just, uh, just a little bit of something, I don't know. And maybe, maybe there was some subtle changes to age him up and I didn't see them, but, um, yeah, I don't know, it was just, it was just a little bit of a, a, stood in contrast to a lot of changes other characters are going through. We're just like, oh, it's you and you look exactly the same, that's fine. He was supposed to believe he's early 20s to late 30s, and you know he just takes care of himself. He looks real good. I'm coming to disagree with your people won't bitch about good take on adaptation. Um, okay, well, they said All Quiet on the Western Front 2022 is the best of the films, but people hate it for not being book <coughs> accurate. Okay, wait. I'm pretty sure on. that that film's gotten pretty... Uh, if you want to, we, yeah. we gotta go all the way back to disagree with your people. Won't bitch about it if it's good take. So this, you should know if you've watched enough EFAP that we're fully aware that just being good isn't enough to prevent people from bitching about it. Especially like we would have defended. Um, people didn't like that the the uh, with great power comes great responsibility came out of Aunt May instead of Uncle Ben in the MCU Spider Man, right? So like 
we think it was really well executed like the reason she told him that and the context of why and all that but like that doesn't change how much people hate the fact that it's not uncle ben it's like we're aware of this alongside all kinds of adaptation stuff the context of us saying people won't bitch about it if it's good was more so to do with um, like race swapping or missing a couple of details here and there. These are things people will forgive if the overall thing is really, really good. Um, that seems to be the case for, well, funnily enough, we're talking about House of the Dragon today. A lot of people complained that, uh, you know, Corlys and the Valarian house had their race swapped, but, like, nobody gives a shit anymore because of how well executed it was. And in terms of, like, good. Just yeah. how good the characters are and stuff. So that's what we mean. We are staunch defenders a lot of the time of adaptations going like like look at um we even reverse it so we're like why do people complain more about hill house they should be because it's so in opposition to the uh, original source so i'm afraid the, the reason why i wanted to start there is that you're countering an argument we haven't made if anything i'd agree with your counter being that people will be upset if you go against the source it depends on the way in which you do it um say for example a source has this hero you know, character, and you adapt it all faithfully, except you turn that character into a villain, that can be enough to make people be like, fuck this. Like, you destroyed the legacy of this guy. That sort of thing. Even if it was a particularly good story in and of itself or something. Um, and then, yeah, as Fringy was just saying, to follow up, I've only heard praise for All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, I know that there's been some, but I've, I've seen people outright say that they actually prefer it to the original. Um, that they prefer some of the changes that were made. I've heard that. Um, and yeah, as for the response to it, I've only heard good things. I thought it was a pretty good movie. What was that? Because nobody's heard of or read the Hill House book. First of all, they have. They're out there. There's lots of them. The book was successful. Secondly, exactly. That's our point. Um, but yeah, there you go. There are major issues in Alicent's parenting, but for Ciri's lack of attention to those kids is also part of their problem, I bet. My only child, Jesus. To be fair, he's not saying that in the sense of, I hate my other children, I wish they weren't born, sort of thing. He's saying it because his mind is falling apart. And uh, his memory is, is, is he's starting to revert to the older and stronger memories, like calling Alice and Emma. Um, and, and I'm willing to infer that it's because that's where he was happiest as well. But um, yeah, his brain is definitely falling apart, especially while being on Milk of the Poppy. That, that'll, uh, that'll fuck with you. Um, hey, Rags. Hello. Updates on the Mando video? No, no updates on the Mando video. I'm not, it, it, I will make it one day. It's just a matter of, I probably want to do stuff, um, in the meantime. And plus, I just got this, this is actually the first, uh, EFAP from a new computer. So, I've, uh, it's gonna move some stuff over, and I haven't started, uh, working on this PC yet. But, um, I've got a, you know, a Vegas in here, and... I got my old files and everything, so it's just a matter of me, um, yes, sort of getting back into it, which won't take long at all. I'll be back in the zone pretty quick, but there was a good three or so weeks where I, where I just wasn't, you know, having a computer at full steam. So because I got this back, I mean, essentially yesterday, or this new computer, essentially yesterday, you know, I, you know, I'll be enjoying it for a while. Please go into Aegon's... Oh, wait, we did cover that one. Uh, hey, Muller, on a scale ranging from Aemon to Daemon, uh, how good of an uncle would you describe yourself? Aemon to Daemon? I don't... I'm not really like either of those uh... guys, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm more of a friendly, happy uncle who's uh, who's chill, you know? For movies and stuff. Friendly, happy uncle who's chill. I don't have the eye patch or swords or anything. My failings, but, you know. I have a sword, but no eye patch. Do you have a red noodle dragon, maybe? Um, off to check. I don't have a red noodle dragon. Do you think if Ray, Rhaenyra, I assume, asked her dad to annul her marriage with Lenor, it would have worked? Well, he's the one that set that marriage, right? And it's really important politically. I don't think he'd be okay with annulling it. Uh, if we're talking specifically about for, for series, but I'd be interested to see how that conversation would go because I think you'd entertain, you know, listening to her reasoning and mm. everything. But I just don't—I I don't know. Politically speaking, he'd want to give it up. Um, it was odd that you said Rhaenyra having bastards causes the war on Gary's stream, especially after agreeing with Otto in episode five and three. I doubt Trueborns would ease Alicent's mind. It could even make it worse. 
Well, so arguably, obviously, what does it is what he says to Alison before he dies. But uh, I, I definitely stand by Rhaenyra should know the repercussions of having children with someone who... It, 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 making it obvious that you have bastards is not a good thing to do. For the sake galvanizes of those... things, makes you no friends, gets everyone upset with you. And yeah, like it, everybody is pushed to polarize on these different sides, and then yeah, it's just all it's waiting for is a spark. Uh, a lot of his good scenes came from Matt, episode one, eight, and ten. Not sure. Do you mean a lot of? Viserys. Like he needed Matt to Matt Smith to play off of to have good scenes. I hope that's not he what they mean. I hope not. Yeah, because I I don't think there's a. Well, scene... he wasn't in episode ten though. Uh, this... oh right. So it must be talking about must be talking about Damon Maybe Rhaenyra. or Aemond. No way, Aemond isn't in episode one. So when you say a lot of his good scenes came from Matt, do they mean a lot of Damon's good scenes? Are a result oh, of Matt Smith? Uh, oh, well, I mean, of course, he's the actor, right? He's <laughs> he's the actor. Oh, sorry, they've the clarified. Element. They meant they meant that uh, a lot of his best stuff is stuff that Matt was coming up with on the fly. Or... Oh, I see. Right. Which makes sense. That he's, it was he's his job. Doesn't surprise me that he elevated the material he was given. Uh, Protector of the Realm is a great track. Is that the one that plays in the, the throne room scene throne room when he walks in? Because if it is, yep. yeah. About to be swallowed by the work abyss. EFAP on Spotify has been a real lifesaver. My knees are glass, but at least I have you massives in my ears and heart. Also, Fringy, you should get a goo launcher on your arm similar to... Similar to Ikit Claw? Oh, Ikit Claw. Ikit Claw? It, I, who, what anime I, is that I, from, that's a, Warhammer. that's a Warhammer. Oh, Warhammer that anime. He's a Skaven man. Oh, Skaven are cool. I like rats. Ikit Claw is the fucking... Mad scientist one. Ah, I think. of course, <laughs> of course. Rats, rats, we rule the night. We stalk at night. We're the rats. Yeah, sure, but that doesn't cause the war. Well, no, no one thing causes the war. As as you saw, it's Shad believes Otto is probably the like main progenitor of all of it. Lots of decisions cause lots of uh, points of view and attitudes that cause lots of more decisions. And what causes the war is unclear rules regarding succession. Yeah. Um, weird that he lets Hobart Hightower call Aegon second of his name in episode three. I don't think you could even call Rhaenyra first of her name while the series lives. Um... I'm trying to remember. When is this? He lets Hobart Hightower call Aegon second of his name in episode three, and I don't think you could even call Rhaenyra first of her name while Viserys is alive. Is that offensive to call Rhaenyra Targaryen the first of her name? I thought that just represents how many people in the family line you have the same name with, right? I would assume so. It's because they are not a monarch, so until they until they were a monarch, they would just be. Um, well, it doesn't work quite the same in Westeros because they don't have the same thing going. But in the real world, they'd be like Rhaenyra of insert location here that she is from. Like before King Henry the Second was King Henry the Second, he was Henry of Anjou. Wow. Um. Otto could have forced-fed milk of the poppy to Viserys and told the maesters to hush. I think he cares about Viserys. He just had a specific mind about how the kingdom should be run. Yeah, that, we, we were kind of talking about how it's difficult to be definitive about the sort of the 50-50 of how much he cared about just the realm and versus how much advancing his own house. Similar for a lot of characters. Old Town is a hive of heresy that must be destroyed. They attacked the throne and revolted against uh, because of inbreeding, and then there's the Maester Conspiracy. Oh. Um, he calls Aegon, not the heir, first of his name while the series is still alive. It's basically treason. Oh. Yep. 
Is the of his name sort of thing, is that what you were saying, that that's only applicable to those who were, like, yeah. in line for the... I see, okay. You get that when you become a monarch before uh, that. Okay, no, that makes more sense. Name. I thought you get that anyway or something, but they just don't typically say no. it. Interesting, yeah. That probably should have been... I w I'd be wanted, curious to check the scene again, see if there's any reaction at all from Viserys of any kind. Hmm. Um, so this is says part... There's four of these. On the next meme fap, would you consider watching Shafrilis TLJ April Fool's video from four years ago about the brilliance of the green alien titty milk? Uh, there's no. It just goes part one, part three, part four. <laughs> I don't know if part two got got booted by YouTube or not, but uh, the next one says, "Plus, strangely enough, it's hilarious compared to the rest of his content, and actually contains good satirical criticism of TLJ." And if not on a meme fab, then maybe on an efab to accompany the next video of his that you cover. Um, I I don't know. You could be put in the maybe pile. We've got a backlog of things I want to cover. We we've got videos to respond to as well as more bits of media to break down. You know, I'm I'm very happy we got House of the Dragon done. It's uh, it's nice to have it. It deserves it. Being yeah, done. It does. Um, because it's it's great. And now I'm just I'm super excited for next week. Yes, I'm. I'm more. I will than say ready, I've been thinking about it a lot today. <laughs> Ragnarok. I've any, been thinking about it a new, whole bunch. Anything worth sharing with the class? I, I the 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 problem is it's just it's it's like there are just moments that I'm so eager to get to discuss. I uh the the more that I sit on it, that one moment in particular, like man, yeah. I kind of adore it. I it's it's incredible. Oh, and um, we'll talk about it. We will. That one of of many, many, many moments. Um, <laughs> oh, that's that game. Uh, a Reddit Q and A by Arcane Writers happened with season two hints. I'm guessing you'd know about that, Theo. Yep. Good. They dropped some one word hints about the next season in the words "war" and "Rubicon." All right, you're obsessed. What does that mean? <laughs> um, Rubicon is a word that means point of no return, essentially. Point Sorry, no I meant what back. does it mean for arcane slash lol? Oh, like... war? Uh, fucking, I think you can guess what war means. Yeah, <laughs> I think we know what's happening. Okay, let me spell it out. So which factions does this involve? What is it talking about? Well, there runs on. Who else, right? Oh, I thought we were going to be involving, um, no, like, like... Why so so Rune Terror is enormous, right? We've got all these different is Yeah. It, so what what kind of stuff I'm I'm expecting more than just war. <laughs> like is that all we go? Because like I thought we do this. That was just the one word and they dropped. They did a bunch of other stuff throughout that AMA. Okay. Um I wouldn't say that is really a hint though, because war and Rubicon, those both are like, yeah, I know I know that. <laughs> like, yeah, I know that's that. that's kind of what I was getting at. Like I think season one tells us that. Sure, I would agree, but I don't know. That's what they gave. <laughs> okay. Uh, Henry Cavill as Cregan Stark, mourning his brother's death and bonding with Jace. Dude, just get him in. Whatever. Get him into anything that's good. That man deserves it. Get him in. Make him play um, uh, Viserys' ghost. Comes in around and spooks everybody. Just so he has a role. So he can say he's a part of it, alright? Any way possible. Replace Rhaenys with him. Uh, where are we? Hi, Fringy, Mauler, and Rags. Hello. Hello! Hey. Have y'all seen Detective Knight Rogue? The movie's really bad, and y'all might get a kick out of it. Also, when are you going to invite Hiddle Subtleties to the show? And he's welcome at any he, time. He has an open invitation. He pops in every once in a while whenever you hear something incredibly philosophical. That's him. That's his influence. He pokes his head in, he goes, Hello! And then he leaves. But yeah, no, I have not seen or heard of Detective Knight Rogue, I'm afraid. Not familiar. Uh, Rag, some French guy ate an entire plane in the 70s and didn't die until much later in something else. Uh, I think Glidus will be fine with the book. I don't know. Like, but just because, so, yeah, there's always some <laughs> weirdo who could eat, like, light bulbs and stuff, you know, stuff like that. I mean, Rasputin just, could eat poison, apparently, but let's... Got that really let's cool like the, of... That People guy have... ate a plane so I could eat a book. It's like, I don't see the connection there. <laughs> yeah, this person fell from space and survived, so if I jump off a building, I'm pretty sure I'll be fine. I agree with Rags. Just make sure you're safe with whatever it is you're up to when it comes to eating things that don't typically get eaten, that's all. 
Yeah, it's the ink that I'm concerned about. Like, if you space it out between a, a, a long time, sure, but, like, seriously, it, they're not meant to be made, and I don't know if there's chemicals in the paper or something, so. Uh, great commentary. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. That the sun shines is objective. Not liking the amount of heat it gives is subjective. Some even have self-immolation fetishes. Just look up most art-turned activism modern IPs. Ah, uh, I get it. Self-immolation. Everyone oh, sees an eight. Oh, right. Funny how Alicent's worries aren't tenfold by episode eight after Lenor's death. Her first example of Rhaenyra killing someone in her way to get what she wants. That is interesting. I don't think we get Alison's perspective on Lenor's death, the nature of it, and what it meant for Rhaenyra, right? We don't see her talking about it as, like, a thing that she clearly did to benefit, sort of thing. It feels like it just faults in with everything else, such as uh, uh, the the bastards, for lack of a better way of putting it, But like for Alison. I kind of agree with this sentiment. It's like, isn't it? Shouldn't she be, like, holy shit? Like, I could imagine a scene where her and Otto find out, and they're both, like... Wow, she did it. She killed him just so that she could, uh, mm. you know, blah, blah, blah. Because, of course, everyone would immediately, or at least Alicent, would immediately point fingers at yeah. Rhaenyra over that, Don't regardless of no how more. it occurred. You'd slip on a banana peel and fall into the sea and be like, yep, Rhaenyra put the banana peel there. And even if she didn't, she wanted it to be there. She used her psychic powers, probably. True. Um, True. So says Digimon of the day is Magnadramon. Magnod Here we go. Magnadramon? That just sounds like... Mm, Magnadramon. Like All monster right. Hunter. That looks like... Um, looks like uh, something. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, it's... It's the Yu-Gi-Oh card again. Let me... Oh, did you paste it? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um... Uh, I don't think the head really fits with the body. Uh, the tail like, is strange, too. It looks like someone crossed a Mewtwo and a Growlithe, or an Arcanine and a Mewtwo or something. It's It's got... Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not the worst Defender we've seen. But it feels like three different and, artists and, had four different ideas, and then they all ended up here. Yeah, that's 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 how all Digimon. I was made. gonna say, isn't that how it works? Oh, it's like a do. random generator for just things. <laughs> and then here's your Digimon. Digimon, digital. As much Digimon. I mean, as far as yeah, Digimon are the champions. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. As far as like, I will say this. I I don't play Magic anymore. I used to play it, Dude. but I will say that I really appreciated a lot of the thematic, uh, like the the, the consistent aesthetics and some sets and things. Um, so like Innistrad and things like that had these consistent kind of thematics to them, and I really appreciated that. Uh, but when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh and 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 Digimon, it's just like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> it's such a grab bag of stuff. Whereas Magic, it's has, just random shit. Yeah. Magic's really good at staying unified within its own aesthetic. Uh, I like that Theo's the token hypocritical guy. That's yeah, Theo. Hypocritical. That's like Tokenism. saying, I like that he's just wrong. <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> no, they said specifically hypocritical. It wasn't even like you're negative or you're pessimistic. No, 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 hypocritical. Specifically, you hypocrite. What Theo, the do? famous <laughs> hypocrite. Yeah, a little bit. What standard have I, you know, betrayed? Well, you say you like anime, but you don't like God of War Ragnarok. What's I don't that about? say that, but... <laughs> You, know, my you say you like anime, like anime, and yet you don't like Digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, what's that about? Hey, I, I love Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu -Oh. I, I love Yu -Oh. classic Yu-Gi-Oh. Don't get me started on what Yu-Gi-Oh used to be versus what it is now. Fuck that. This game is fucking hilarious in its current state. It's absolutely it used to be so goddamn fun. And it, it, I'll, I'll accept that that might be because I was a, a kid playing it, but man, early Yu-Gi-Oh was fun as fuck fuck to play with people you felt like you were actually fighting another player and you'd whittle their life points down and you'd make it was fun as hell i loved early Yu-Gi-Oh. it was legitimately fun to play and when i see the shit it is now I don't even don't even I've, i won't go into it i have before i have just never seen anything that is 
as strong of an example of power creep. Absolutely. Ooh. There is no stronger example than Yu-Gi-Oh. It's absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, you remember Ray Geki that destroys all your opponent's monsters? Yeah, no one plays it. Fuck that card. It's shit. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> You're like, what the hell? The that hell? Reads unconditionally destroy all monsters your opponent controls, and like no one's interested. They're like, nah, it's bad. Monster. That's Sweet. one less card that I can use to make a 12-stage multi-combo to win the game before the opponent gets to play. <laughs> it's like, it's, yeah. fuck that. That means you're good. That, that means you've got skill. Oh, well, that works. Idiots. Yu-Gi-Oh! Was, it was great in the sense that, like I said, you, you really felt like you were battling another player. And these could be long, drawn-out slugging matches sometimes that were super intense, you know? But, uh, I, I don't know, it's... I guess it's just Great, changed over time. All card games seem to want to cannibalize themselves now because Magic has been in a like a tailspin for five years, from my understanding. I've been out of the Magic the Gathering scene for quite a while now, uh, so I don't know. I think like the last set that I was buying was it was probably the one. I think it was the one after Innistrad when that kind of trio wrapped up. There was another, was, yeah, uh, I got, after, shortly again? after that, I left. Hmm. I, I don't know. A little bit later than that, but yeah, from what I, I kept following the scene for a while, and from what I hear, it's just baffling decision after baffling decision, and the most recent one is a uh, thousand pound randomized proxies for an anniversary collection thing, which made everyone upset. I didn't quit, I don't, I don't think I quit because I stopped enjoying it, I think I stopped enjoying it like it, you just sort of I never stopped having fun for the most part but I think I just I was just I think I just got it way into video games and that kind of took over and you know, I, it's just one of those things you fall out of yeah I have all my cards though so I I mean those I've got my Pokemon cards my Yu-Gi-Oh cards my uh Magic the Gathering cards I got my Duel Masters cards it's all at my uh, folks place in my old room in the closet and uh, I, I got them I got them they're there Duel Masters that, that, was a, that was a fun game that was, a, that was a fun little game in an ideal timeline what are the book adaptations would y'all be interested in seeing also Amazon's Patriot is a pretty good series hmm. um, so what book series would I want to see uh, televised or turned into a, a movie adaptation or a show adaptation essentially sure oh i don't know it's been so long since i've read books um and a lot of them have been turned into series there is a part say, of yeah. me they, they said alternate universes i mean there's a part of me that wants to get a different take on you know maybe lord of the rings or you know something like that but, but good yeah, but good. If it can be good, I, I would be interested to see a good but different version. Um, what about the dictionary? Uh, ooh, yeah, yeah, Di yeah. Characters would be very well spoken. I feel like there's just lots of potential there. Though. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like all the major ones have been given adaptations now, and it's all very sad. Yeah, I'm just not the person to ask that. Uh, maybe hear people maybe Fringy can get a, give you an answer. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't have one off the top of my head, actually. Well, all right. Because um, it's kind of the same as, like you said, a lot of them have already been done. Have there, any, have there been any that have been horrifically butchered that we just need to give a fair chance? Uh, oh, well, I mean, like, any good adaptation of any well-loved book series would probably be everyone was on board. With. Like, A Wheel of Time, right? Is, uh... Oh, right, because nobody's happy with that one, right? Yeah, oh, I heard that's not hate good. hate it. Yeah, I, there, I, there's probably uh, there are probably a bunch of Agatha Christie books that are probably really good that you could make some excellent movies out of. Uh, thoughts on novel AI prompt images as art? I don't think they're art because I don't think that that we kind of talked about this a little bit when uh, on the when Destiny was here and we were covering the um, uh, the weird person's video. I forget the name, but we were talking about AI stuff. It came up briefly. And I think that my position was an AI as we have them now is not advanced enough or complex enough to express itself on a personal level. So it can't, so it, what it makes isn't art, though it can be, it might be considered um, art or appear to be art. 
uh, in much the same way that you could have things that are incidentally, you know, perceived as beautiful. But I don't think we're quite here that uh, quite there yet with AI complexity. As much as I would agree with the idea that it's clearly not the art, the AI expressing itself, um, I'm not sure I agree it's not art because of the nature of uh, when you construct codes to create images that is technically expression by the person who coded it. Um, so it's difficult in terms of category for how I would decide whether or not it counts as art. It's complicated. Because I do agree that we should gatekeep it to some degree. We shouldn't just say everything is a thing. Uh, I just don't know how to categorize it properly. Now, I'm assuming the question is more so just, I don't know, do you have any existential thoughts about it? It's just like, it's a bit worrying because, uh, you know, it's it, just like, where are we going next when this is already yeah, happening? Yeah, you do want to keep certain things, I think, within the purview of, you know, sentient creatures. They, uh, you, you don't want to have everything done by AI so that all the, you know, creative robbed in a way especially and drowned out through sheer volume because i mean an ai especially with the speed that they work it's just we, we have mean, we have a it, overall cooldown on on efap that gets expunged every once in a while of talking about the fundamentals of meaning and art and existence and uh you know still building back up we did it yeah. recently okay <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah you gotta give it more time uh some Pokemon, if you delay evolution, can get moves early slash can't learn the moves at all. Some are really good. Correct. Also, if you move the game to SSD, it runs better. That's what I heard. Um, oh, yeah, I looked Pokemon at there were some examples of the. As far as I know, it runs a whole lot better if you move it to like the internal storage or something like that. But I, I've only heard of it casually. I don't know anything oh, okay. about it. So, it's Switch exclusive, right? So, I don't. I mean, so uh, how does the hard drive work on the Switch? Do you get an SSD and a HDD? I said I, I said I use as if it was an exclusive. I said I think so. Oh, I thought you said so. And I was like, because I don't know how the hard drive works, but because if you move, how do you? Can you choose where to save? Can you can you get expansions uh, of the hard drive I think on you Switch? Put an SD, like an SD card, but that's that's oh, okay. It. Well, that's yeah. That that right. is, I guess. A, I was about to say a workaround, but I mean. I don't know. D does it improve its bugs at that point? Improve its bugs? Well, you, the know, bugs it. you have higher quality bugs? Yeah. You know, the bugs, like, when they ab abruptly destroy your game, they do it in a civil way. They've improved in their candor. The bugs are in your favor, maybe. That's a high quality bug. Um, well, yeah, you know, fair enough. Unrelated, but has Disney made up their purchasing cost for buying Star Wars? I'm really not sure they've made up the $2.4 billion. There was more than that, wasn't it? Well, and, it's like, and surely it's costing them more game. with more time goes on, right? Like overall, it'll. Uh, well, I mean, of course, inflation. Um, An opportunity I don't cost, know, right? And loans they would have had to. Have, yeah, of course, opportunity cost is a big one. What could you have spent that five million dollars on? Would it have been more profitable? Yeah, and if they, and the they, answer is maybe. Put it all into like fucking Apple stock or something. Probably would have been better than buying Star Wars. Presumably at this point, I don't know. Actually, I don't want to be caught on that. Well. I'll give you an answer here. Uh, they did make the they did recoup recoup their four point oh five billion dollar investment back in twenty eighteen. Uh, uh, at, at the time, the four Star Wars feature films Disney has released since twenty fifteen, so between twenty fifteen and twenty eighteen, they have grossed more than four point eight billion at the box office, and they also make money from well, licensing doesn't... agreements and sales of merchandise, apparel, and toys. Making four point eight billion at the box office doesn't mean that they profited four point eight billion. That would just close, that's right? the total. No, no, because theaters get a cut. The cuts vary depending on which countries they're in. You've got the budget and marketing that you have to factor in. Um, the big thing would have been merchandising, probably. That was one of the things that I'm probably relying I on. I thought they were famously the market the, the uh, merchandise was like down at an all time low. Yeah, I'm pr I'm pretty sure. Because it was like really high when it started and when it was coming out, but then later on. You remember you like know? the best selling toy of Star Wars when TFA was being promoted was Captain Phasma. It was like, uh, Captain Phasma. And who's buying a Captain Phasma one now? Does anyone like, even know who that is? Like, yeah, <laughs> of the exactly, general public, do you know who exactly, Captain who fucking knows? Phasma is? Meanwhile, do you know who Darth Vader is? Like, yes. Mm hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of parents assume Stormtrooper is a character. 
It's like Halo. He's Stormtrooper. John yeah. Stormtrooper. John Stormtrooper. Yeah. It's us. Samus is Metroid. <laughs> like Zelda. Yeah, Zelda. Zelda, the, Halo, the Metroid. Ooh. Uh, so this is about the Q and A for Arcane. Apparently, there were hints about the Sil Silco Vanda flashbacks. Oh yes. Uh, apparently, we're not done with Silco. We're not, we haven't seen our last of him. I guess well, we're going to see more of his history. I really like Silco, so that's good. I do really like Silco. Don't ruin it. But I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. don't do it because it's don't fuck it what up. you have is pretty damn good. Um, Theo, thoughts on the new Berserk anime and manga? That's a new anime? I didn't realize they'd made another one. That franchise is anime. fucking cursed in terms of adaptations. Yeah. Uh, the manga, um, well, what with Miura, you know, passing and stuff, it's it's not the same. That's all there is to really say. I always block my Curlia from evolving. Can't have it getting too old now. I don't know. I, well, Curlia during is. the Q, uh, while you were re reading Super Chats, I, w I, I did a quick little Google of, you know, if there's reasons to do it, and there's uh, there, there are reasons to not um, evolve it, but yeah, like they said, the whole so they so that they learn moves that they otherwise would never learn from evolving. Uh, some uh, some Pokemon will lose moves when they evolve, so something, 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 mm -hmm. something, um, something. I mean, for series general parenting through season one, not episode eight. From what I gathered, he was a pretty okay father to Rhaenyra up until. Emma died, then he was distant and difficult, and then uh, he was apparently just not there for, uh, for Aegon and Aemond. Even though his death... Do you remember Aemond's reaction when he seems to d discover that he's dead? I thought that implied maybe that Aemond had a better relationship with, uh, with Viserys, but I don't know. Um, they didn't really show us, and I think all we have left to infer is that he wasn't really around. That's you know a lot of that is going to be due to his health, but at the same time, what's interesting if you remember, he's quite um, low power, so to speak, in episode five, and then at the end of it, he's like falling over and stuff. Ten years on, yes, he's lost the arm, his hair is like all fallen out, his skin is getting all thingy, but he's quite um, engaged, for lack of a better term. He's like, hey, how's everyone doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, look, my kid. Oh, this is great. Like, like he's talking to people and he's walking around. And it's like, oh, so he's still, you know capable of doing stuff so yeah um hey rags oh, hello hi hey i was gonna say very honestly the man was just depressed like yeah if, if ever there was a tell is the giant sculpture of valeria in his room that's uh well he thinks yeah. about it mm -hmm. history um... legacy and his place in it I noticed you mentioned Civ 4 more than the average person, so I assume you play. Can I interest you in a mod called RFC Dawn of Civilization, an expansion on the original Rise and Fall mod? And this is for what game, sorry? I was, Civ 4. Uh, I haven't, listen, I haven't played Civ 4 since, uh, how many years ago was that? I mean... It was the first Civilization game I played, but I, I I don't I don't play Civilization anymore, or at least I currently don't. I'm just into other games, and I haven't played Civ Four in a long time. I do appreciate the recommendations, uh, though, but I'm just I'm not a I am not into Civ Four. However, one of uh, some very fond memories of it, playing with uh, my friend Henry, we would uh, we would do Hot Seat Civ Four. Uh, and we would just while away the afternoons. I'd go to his house and we'd play Civ Four while just watching random internet videos. All the all the the oldies, the you know the Doctor Tran and Legendary Lilypad, all that sort of thing. We but Henry the the Eighth that Theo was talking about. No, oh, he's Henry first of his name. Oh okay. Oh uh yeah so uh, Crazy. But yeah, we had a great we had a, a lot of fond memories of that yeah. Yeah, they had one of those, and I mean this in a good way. They had one of those houses that you could all, you always knew the smell of. Oh, um, oh. You're, <laughs> no, it had, a, it had a good smell. Uh, I shouldn't call it smell. I should call it a like a scent or an aroma. aroma. But but they the, the house. Many of my friends did, I guess. But uh, as you're when you're a kid and you start going to other people's houses and everything, you recognize that a lot of them have their own sort of smell. Some are faint, uh, but 
Like I had some friends, he lived down the street and their dad smoked. And so their, their house smelled faintly of smoke all the time. And so that was, hmm. it was not great. Well, like but, a roadkill mustard sort of smell. Huh? <laughs> I was just seeing how you'd react to that combination. No, no, no roadkill mustard. But <laughs> oh, my, my best friend, gro uh, friend growing up, he, um, his mom was uh, Korean, and we're talking Korean, Korean. Uh, and uh, Imtru was her name, and I assume it still is. But it, it also was too. But it probably still is. Uh, but she would make insanely good food. And whenever I went over to his house and she would cook for all of us when we went over there for like sleepovers and stuff. Oh, that house smelled heavenly. That whole house would just get the that smell of that you know, delicious Korean food. Mm, heavenly. Amazing. Good oh. memories of being yeah, a kid. Right. And that puts us uh, caught up, actually, with, with uh, today's Super Chat. Um, oh, okay. That's awesome. So Sweet. what I'll... Do, I guess is uh well, you know Theo, do you want to advertise your channel? Yeah, uh, you know, stay <laughs> away. I'll make something eventually. I think the first time you ever came on the show, you're probably like, uh, I might make a DMC five video, and that's that's the update, I keep right? Going, <laughs> yeah, I want to, and then I keep going back and forth on how I want to do it. And then, you know, you lose confidence in the project and start something else. And then, you know. Well, being aware of that being the process means you can overcome it, correct? Yeah. I know. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, great. So, we expecting it next week? Is it think next week? Uh, tomorrow, you know, five minutes from now. Well, you know oh, what? Oh, that's awesome. That's but... great timing because we're just about to end. So, they could go over there and watch that now. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. So, I will say for the people who are like, I would like to see a video of Theo talking about video games. Well, Next week, Theo will be talking about God of War. The so only... bring your pitch pitchforks and torches. Yeah. The only thing plenty is, plenty of oil. The plan is to talk pretty much exclusively about the story because I we're going to split it into two EFAP story and mechanics. So you have to wait until the week after before you can get like the, <laughs> that that part. But hey, uh, I got loads of prep to do. I'm planning on this being a little bit more complicated than just a simple we talk about the game. I'm going to be getting some resources together because this is a game that deserves some respect to Roonies and references. Absolutely. Um, I say that as though I didn't do it for House of the Dragon. That was a fun rewatch. Lots of notes taken. I think it. we managed to squeeze it all into five hours. Phenomenal. I like that uh, you can't make memes anymore about us forgetting House of the Dragon. You can continue to do it for uh, Moon Knight. <laughs> He's this little skeleton yeah. in the corner. Like... <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, what else was I going to say? Uh, so the, the, that's the plan. Um, so eagle-eyed viewers will notice I have named this 214, even though we already had EFAP 214. But the thing is, uh, computer troubles, both on my end, Fringy's end, and Rag's end, at different portions of time has made it difficult for us to sync up and be able to uh, record the thing I was going to put on the end of it. So that's still happening, and I'm just going to rename it and put it out at a different time in terms of numbering. Um, but it'll just be... The first half will be old, second half will be new. And, um... Oh, gosh, we are inching very close to Crimbus as well, so... Crimbo! Yeah. Okay, we're still ahead of EFAP episodes from what I understand, so if we did next week an episode, week after an episode... Week after that, I can probably drop the the one we're cooking in terms of the 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 other two fourteen one, and then the week after that, we'll probably drop an offline recorded Christmas one because that'll be Christmas Day where I think all of us will be busy. But if we can get a Christmas one recorded like a week before or a free day, we'll try maybe watch a Christmas movie and talk about it, something like that, so that anybody who's um you know got a bit of a free day for whatever reason on Christmas, you can have some company with the old EFAP lads. So that'll probably be the plan. Online, online, offline, offline uh, for over the next four weeks. And then maybe the week after that. Oh, that's New Year's. Damn, we're going to have to fucking sort some sh some schnizzles out, you know? Mm. We'll figure yeah. it out. Yes, anyway, we will. Work continues on assorted projects. Um, yep. Rags, mm -hmm. Fringy, was there anything you guys wanted to mention? No, I guess, um, yeah, just, uh, like I said, new computer, still kind of putting everything on there, uh, but I'm not in a super rush to do that, uh, just because I haven't had one to really uh, enjoy in a while. In fact, I downloaded uh, a number of stuff uh, during the EFAP that I just needed to put on here. 
but, but, but I don't really have anything uh, that's super planned. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm just kind of I'm getting new assets for things, uh, getting nice looking stuff. I got uh, ideas for what to do for videos and the dog bite stuff. And uh, I guess but I guess nothing super set in stone right now. Uh, but don't expect any more long gaps like we had before. Oh, and yeah, we'll figure out Andor at some point. Maybe we'll make it so that the Christmas episode is talking about Andor or something. Not sure. We'll have to get them in. But that'll be sorted out at some point, gentle sirs and ladies. Yeah. But yes, um, until the next stream of whatever kind that may be, or video, uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for the kind donations and Absolutely, More. we really appreciate that. That's the kind of that's what I mean. Helped me get this computer, so you know we did. You know, thank you very much for that. We'll catch ups on the way as well as more coverage in general. Like I said, next is God of War Ragnarok. Oh, thank you all for keeping us company. You have a good night now. Toodle bit. Yeah, everyone. Toodle -toodle. Toodle. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, we'll bye see bye. you next week. Bye bye. Toodle, -toodle everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>